welcome everybody. It's another edition of the Pulp MX Show. Coming at you. It's a Tuesday edition. Yeah, Tuesday. Why not? Maybe we'll make it our regular uh, show time. I don't know. Who knows? We'll try on Tuesday and uh, see if things go a little better for us. Maybe they do. Thank you for listening slash watching. Good times. Lots to talk about. The motocross season is over. Iron Man MX come and gone with it. Some uh, some interesting news. Uh, SMX coming up. We'll talk about that. Motocross the nations. This thing seems like a mess behind the scenes to find three riders. We'll talk about that and uh, and much more. The vet designations. I was over in England. That was a fun time. RV Osborne Brown Bowers Dubach Keith Johnson Chris Kiefer. It's really fun to be there. Uh, Tommy Searle. Talked to a hell of a lot of guys. If Jenny Bobbershev kicked ass on a CR500. Uh, five Minutes with Fletch, the debut episode tonight on the show. What is Five Minutes with Fletch? You'll find out. Uh, so thank you for uh, listening and watching. Motorsport.com, Fly Race and Decal Works, Race Tech Suspension and Engines, X-Brand Goggles, Renthal, Michelin Motorcycle Tires, the Cherubies, Firepower Batteries and Chains, Maxima, Pro Filter, Renegade Racing Fuels, ORW, also on board with us. OGO Power Sports, FMF, Guts Racing, Atlas Neck Brace, MotorcycleMistryJobs.com, Works Connection, Get Data, WUSA, Wiseco Piston, EVS, Manscaped, and OGO all on board with us tonight. I already said OGO. Uh, use the code on PulpMexShow.com. There's codes to save, whether it's with Wiseco, whether it's with Works Connection, WUSA, Get Data, Atlas Brace, all those companies and more have um, codes to save on PulpMexShow.com. So please support our guys to support us, and then you support us, and they support us, and then we keep doing things, like bringing my co-host into the studio from RaceRex Online slash Start Your Systems, Kellen Brower. What's up, Kellen? How are you, man? I'm good, Steve. Thanks for inviting me up to the surface of the sun up here. It's real nice. Yeah, it, listen, it's starting to cool down now, though. Uh, oh, yeah, this it, is cooling it, down, trust right? Me, trust me, it's starting <laughs> to cool down. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for coming in. You were at Iron Man? I was. So lots yep. to talk about with that. Uh, Vet Designations talk as well. Like I said, we'll talk about that later on. Got uh, Chris Kiefer on the night. He was in England with me. Zach Osborne, he was uh, in England with me. Uh, we'll have those guys on. Adam C. and Cirillo. Um, good weekend for him, I think, Adam. I mean, you know, like not on a podium or anything, but like a good weekend for him. He seemed like he, he was pretty good. Yeah, I'm with you. Like I listened to the review pod, and you had said that you felt that earlier in the year was more of like he would start up there, and if things were going bad, he'd fall back quicker. Uh, yeah. I felt like by the end of the year, there was a, li a lot less of that. It was yeah. a lot more just like hanging on to that group if he did fall back. Yeah, I agree, right? Uh, and then Jared Mees will be on. He is a uh, flat tracker. Uh, two rounds to go in that series coming up this weekend in Springfield. Uh, the mile is this weekend, and uh, he's an Indian rider. We had J.D. Beach on a few weeks back, Yamaha guy. We'll get Mies on as well. He's been on before, so we'll talk to Jared about uh, AFT World. And, of course, of course. Are you kidding me? Phil Nicoletti. I mean, why not? Why not? Why not, right? We love Phil. We can't get enough of him. We can't. Uh, he got beat by Dylan Wright, so he was automatically coming on tonight, no matter what. <laughs> like, a Canadian rider, once again, you know, beats uh, beats him. So, he, yeah, he's going to come on. He so. must have felt like he was just inside of a Canadian national at yeah. one point. He's got Wright catching and passing him. Jess Pettis is right behind him. He's yep. in a, yeah, he I called it a knuckle sandwich. <laughs> he felt like he was back at Santa Lee or something. Uh, what's uh, How's the Honda hat? How's that going? It's it's beautiful, I thought. I mean, look, Honda won everything this year. We can't yeah. praise them a little no, bit. Yeah, you know, yeah, rep listen, their brand they, a little bit. Why not? Uh, they swept it all, man. Swept it all. Although, we have after them at SMX, so... Did they sweep it all? In my still, eyes, they, they did. Have a chance, yeah. Because we don't know how – we've got 50 years of motocross and supercross. We don't really know how long we have for SMX, right? We don't know what this thing's going to be. Right. So to me, when you're just talking all-timers and, and seasons, supercross and motocross, that's where I'm at. Yeah, 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 yeah right. exactly. Uh, but, yeah, Team Honda, Kellen Brower. On the, on the show tonight. <laughs> Why are you throwing me in this realm already? Uh, we just, I mean, we you talked showed about up with a Honda hat. Like, Yeah, I got a Honda hat, so I wore yeah. it. I don't I don't understand. Okay. What's the problem? Uh, they no sponsor problem Racer all. X. They're a proud sponsor on Racer X. No so. problem at all, Mr. Journalist. Mm -hmm. No problem at all. Here yeah. we go. Here yep. we go. I, I own a Honda, so uh, it's okay. Okay, all right. Uh, taking care of the pictures and the video and stuff like that. I don't know what else he does. Travis Marks. What's up, Marks? Nobody knows what I do. That's How are why you? I get to charge the exorbitant fees that I do. Thank so. you for coming in. Thank you for paying my fees. No problem. Uh, we have Luke on one. He has a suggestion for the app. I don't think we're taking any suggestions at this time. <laughs> okay. All right. 
We can uh, hear it. We can hear yeah. it. Oh, he's gone now. He hung up. I think he hung up because you hear you heard you say that. Call back, Luke. Uh, 702-586-PULP. Give us a call. 702-586-7857. Uh, working the phones over there, holding things down, not getting sushi tonight. Talon Taylor, what's up? Very upset about the Ow. sushi. Oh. What's happening, man? How are you? Good? Yeah. Pretty good. Tired. Oh, but not, t- not tired. because I have to be here, just. Baby general, life, baby, baby yeah. life, baby life. Yeah, that happens. Uh, Kellen, you, you have a child, I believe. I do. Yeah. So, yes. yeah. what's that like having a child? It's great. She just started preschool this past week. It was a lot of fun. I was just tired. <laughs> you, uh, you realize you you're gonna be with this kid for the rest of your life. Hey, yeah, it's awesome. Okay. I love being a dad. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. It seems some like people a, don't. I guess I don't it know. It seems but like a lot. It is me, but to me. Yeah. Like, it seems like a whole lot. It's it, worth it, it. It's 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 drain on your money. Strain on your time. It just seems like a lot. Yeah, but when you see them do some things for the first time or accomplish something they're trying to do or whatever, it, it's worth it. Okay. All right. Fair enough. There you go, Talon. There's some words of advice for you. Yeah. Wait till they get to school so you can get a little bit of a break. Yeah, you got a, you got a while, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you got a while. Uh, all right. Looking forward to tonight's show. Should be great. Adam Cien, Cirillo, Zach Osborne, Chris Kiefer, Phil Nicoletti, Jared Meese, all on. Uh, Jason Thomas, too. We're going to squeeze him in later. We've got the Race Tech rant of the night. You have a mini one? Mini rant. I have one that's familiar to past listeners. Much but larger I, rant? Yes, but I will bring it back um, again. Um, uh, X-Brand Goggle Tariffs as well. And uh, the motorsport.com tweet at Talon segment coming in as well. Uh, so, yeah, lots to talk about. Silly season stuff, too. I want to get into it with Kellen a little bit. But Iron Man, okay. Uh, I went to the UK, so I watched the race this morning. I followed it on uh, live timing. Uh, it seemed like a lot like the other races this year. Jet Lawrence sweeps. Hunter Lawrence gets a bad start. Works up, you know, probably would have worked out further had he known he needed to. He didn't really need to do that. And then he clinched the title after Moto 1. Moto 2, he kind of just rode around. Um, But it looked like a lot of the other nationals this year that we had seen. Yeah, I would say so. I think for Hunter's sake, even though he did charge up to fifth in the first moto, it seemed to me he was riding even more conservative than normal. Mm-hmm. And he knew Cooper was down. He saw Cooper go down in front of him and then rode by the pile up. So he knew Cooper was behind him. Yep. He kept saying his mechanic was putting on the board where Cooper was position wise. So he knew he had a gap to him. I think for a while it was like six places consistently, like Hunter would pass someone and Cooper would pass someone. Mm-hmm. So I think he was playing it real safe. Yep. Didn't push too hard. I think he had more speed in him in that first moto, but knew that he didn't need it and just rode home to the title. Would have been great. Well, I mean, not great for the Lawrence's. Or, but it would have been great to see Cooper, who we know is a great starter and is fast as shit, for Cooper to get in the lead, and then Jet have to you know make it happen, right? Uh, that would have been, that would have been or, sorry Hunter to make it happen. That would have been fantastic watching. I mean, I, I have no doubt that Hunter would have, you know, but just to throw some drama in there, that would have been an interesting race. Uh, but yeah, as it was, second corner turn up, second corner pile up, and that was all she wrote. And I guess when I say that it, the race seemed like other races, Chase Sexton. 2-2, got close to Jet, mm-hmm. couldn't get in front of him, couldn't make it happen, just about did, Yeah, but in the end, Jet goes 1-1, so there we go again. Yeah, yeah. the 450 class did feel pretty similar, Yeah, a lot of the same themes that we've seen all year long with Chase chasing the whole time. I, I still am shocked that Chase did not lead a single lap this year. Like, that Unbelievable. blows my mind. Unbelievable. How many second place finishes he had, how yep. many times he was on Jet's you know, rear fender and never Shugo, led a lap. While Shugo first lap, he was ahead of Jet. Bud's Creek first lap, mm-hmm. he was ahead of Jet. I think both motors of Watch Shugo was ahead of Jet. Bud's Creek, he was ahead of Jet. Uh, I think there's one other one. And just Jet would just zoom by him in the first lap, and yep, yeah, that was it. Jet was so good at that. Yeah. A- any situation that he would not get the whole shot, even this weekend, I know Ferrandez crashed in the second yeah. or the third corner in that yep. second moto, but Jet A was already alongside too. of him. Yeah. And into the first corner, he got kind of pinched. Everyone pushed a little wide. Like mm-hmm. he came out alongside Aaron Plessinger, and then he just got up the inside yeah. and passed all of them back in the next corner. Like he was so good and quick to get yeah. around those guys and make sure that he had clean air to move around and find yeah. the lines that he liked. It, it was really remarkable. Yeah, Chase raced what, eight races? Yes, he missed uh, three? three of them. Yeah, yeah. so he raced yeah. eight races and never led a lap. Imagine telling yourself at Paula, hey, he's going to race eight races and never lead a lap. I mean, <laughs> it's like I said, it's confounding to me because, yeah, yeah. like Kenny led uh, laps when he yeah. came in. Dylan led. Uh, Dylan led. Uh, AP led. AP led those three or four at <laughs> Wash yeah. And I remember even asking him, like, hey, you have the third most laps led this year. How does that feel? And he's like, what? I don't, what? <laughs> like, 
third he prob- most because he probably got ten. <laughs> we had three. Yeah. So like that's wait that was it that was the, all he had no AJ I, had he led that. later yeah, in the yeah, year he, he led but twice. after Washugal yeah, yeah. that right. was the first year that or the first round that he had led laps at and he was and third. with those three laps led he moved to third on the list of la- total laps led on the season oh, with wow. that yeah. quick uh, three laps in the lead that he had. Um, I want to see the the laps led for this. Uh, there was a really good uh, Moto reference. Uh, yeah, uh, MX compared, reference. Yeah. yeah, MX reference that compared the perfect seasons. Uh, laps led. Yeah, AP seven. <laughs> second place. Oh, no, sorry, Ken second place sixteen. Yep. So three twenty nine to sixteen to seven, <laughs> and Ferrandis led two. Good God. Yeah. That. Oh, AC three too. Yeah, from yeah. Buds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, anyways, yeah, absolutely unbelievable. Um, so yeah, it didn't seem like I missed much at at, uh, at Ironman, but I will say. And I said this on the review pod that dropped today. The most amazing thing to me, really, is that Joe Shimoda kept Cowie's streak going. I uh, know. They have, they've won a race every year since 1982, <laughs> and they had not won this year. And I did not think Joe Shimoda was going to win mm-hmm. in overall because Hayden's been obviously the fastest dude lately. Cooper's got everything to, to gain for at Ironman. Hunter Lawrence is just fastest in the, overall yeah. in the class. And Kitch has pulled off moto wins. Like, mm-hmm. Joe Shimoda was not my pick. He'd won a moto at Southwick, but to go 1-1, first time he's done that, and to win and to keep Cowie's streak going, maybe that was the most amazing thing from Iron Man? Yeah, it was definitely – I don't know if it was surprising to me. I wouldn't say that that's the right word, but definitely a, a kind of a breakthrough ride that Cowie definitely needed at this stage of the season yeah. with not having those wins. It was, it's so weird because our guy Mitch Kendra at Racer X is doing a story on – uh, Kawasaki and how they've kind of struggled this year and mm-hmm. all weekend long like he's telling me oh I'm going to the truck and we're interviewing Mitch and we're talking about this and all this stuff like that and then he comes up to me at the end of the day and he goes well whole story's changed now I got to rewrite the whole thing because yeah <laughs> Joe rewrote the history yeah. books a little bit with yeah, that, that was, eliminating that I possibility didn't see, I didn't see that happening and, and re-watching the race I mean he was the man he hey, he passed me out Hayden caught him he pulled back away mm-hmm. uh in the second moto uh past Kitch get like he was the guy mm-hmm. he was Clearly the best dude at Ironman. Yeah, the first moto was really impressive to me because uh, the Pro Circuit Cowies all got great starts this weekend, and they all, three, four of them went side-by-side into the first corner. And Joe was up there, but he got kind of shuffled back pretty quick to, I think, like fifth or so. Mm -hmm. And Deegan was coming faster through the field to get to him by the time he got to Vial. And I'm like, oh, Deegan's going to fly right by all these guys. But as soon as Shimoda got in the lead, yeah, he took off. Like That, to me, was really impressive that he upped the pace after he found his way into the lead. It really was. It was impressive. I'm going to ask you about the point standings later on in the show, and we'll kind of go through some riders Mm -hmm. that that open some eyes and maybe maybe let some some of us down. But we're on to SMX now. Uh, I want to take your temperature about that. Motocross the Nations, we are going to – we're going to have it out. For motocross nations later <laughs> in the show, right? Okay, yeah, yeah we, we, we got. We have some difference of opinions, right. I would say. Uh, all right, let's get some phone calls here uh, to get start off. First up, Carson, what's up, man? Uh, yeah, Steve. Uh, so, I was wondering your thought on uh, like Casey Cochran being in the B class and being able to obtain pro points while in the B class. He was. Obtaining his pro points while racing Supercross Futures and then competed in the well, B class at Lorenzo I don't care. <laughs> who, who cares? Like, the B class for years was the best class. Many times riders went right from B class into pro. I can agree with you on that, but do you, do you think they should have to go A if they do, if they're trying to chase well, the pro points? Or? No, I, I, no, I, no, I don't. I don't care. They didn't have enough yeah. when they. Last year in Futures, it was only A riders and selected guys. And Kellen, they didn't really have enough guys, right? No, that was no. the that's, that's why, why they, they opened that's it up. That's why they yeah. opened it up, right? Yeah, yeah. The whole point was I to get more riders on the gate. That. Yeah, I agree. They don't have enough riders if they don't have the B class yeah. like combined. But it's like I I just think in like for some cases it's just not fair to some of the other B riders. But uh, yeah, I don't know, Carson. You're you're barking up the wrong tree with me. Like, yeah, I degaff about it all. Like, I think it's silly. So, all of it. Like, I, I all of it. I think <laughs> all it's all it. silly. Like, like I don't get why, you know, first of all, these supercars tracks do not need more laps on them. But let's let the amateurs go. Uh, go. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, that's – and then, B, let them ride supercars. Let them ride super, they ride supercars. They all ride test tracks. They're all – like, there's supercars tracks everywhere. The guys of, like, yeah. like Barsha and Forkner – and Adam and all these dudes, Dylan Ferrandez came from GPs, looked right at home on a supercross track. 
So I don't really get the whole let's get them on super cost to get. A, I'm not against it, but I don't really get it. Yeah, but there are some of those kids out there that don't, at the moment at least, have the access yeah. to those types of facilities to test and train. Like you can go to uh, like a Fox Raceway and they have a Supercross yeah. track there, but they usually only let pro card riders on it. So it's it's sometimes tough for them to even train. Are you telling things. me that sometimes some of these amateurs, the first time they get a track is the, is the Supercross track? I would say some of them. Really? Some of the like B guys that yeah, aren't yeah, like yeah, the yeah. factory yeah, kids, yeah. like that's their They've first never... real chance of looking at it. Yeah. Jesus. I mean, I'm that's sure that scary. they like they have built things at, yeah. at a house or yeah, a local yeah, yeah, track yeah. that are like, oh, right. I practiced a Supercross trip or hit whoops before, but yeah. okay. not like a full Supercross right. track. Thanks for the call, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, why scale pistons, two stroke, four stroke. They've been manufacturing pistons right in the USA for over 80 years. They're also partners with the Honda HRC guys. So they've had a pretty good fucking year. Why scale? Uh, Pulp 23 is the code to save if you need a piston for your motorcycle. And I can trust me, I've talked to the Honda guys. They work directly with the dudes at Wisco to make pistons for the race bikes. So thank you to those guys. Garage Buddy Engine, Rebuild Kits, Clutch and Valve Training Components, two stroke and four stroke pistons, Racer Elite sign of. A racer elite line of pistons and rods. Pulp 23 is a code to save. You want a piston, you want something about that. Uh, check it out. Uh, thank you to those guys for coming on board. They bring you our first guest of the night. This gentleman was my wingman all weekend in England. Chris Kiefer, what's up, buddy? Hello, Kellen, Steve. How are you guys? Catch the fever, vintage bikes? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I caught something. I'm sick of shit. Are you really? Yeah, you don't <laughs> sound that good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. I'm like, got something on the flight home. Like, when I left you. Um, the motel, I start feeling like crap. So yeah, oh, yeah. I just kind of kicked in. Damn, dude, um, that sucks. Uh, so thanks to Doc Wobbs, Dave King for bringing us over. Yeah. Uh, it was a, the, the key for the vibe was cool. Dude, I've never seen that, and we talked about it when we had the live shows. I've never seen so many good-looking old bikes here in America. We might get you know a few like we do garage builds that look sick, but line you know, bike after bike after a line of just gnarly. Lots of money, great-looking machines that are replicas, that are uh, mm -hmm. originals. Like, uh, me and Dubok were just sitting there watching these things come in, and, like, I couldn't believe how much money was in yeah. that whole paddock. It yeah. was unbelievable. I made the joke, like, I, I build these project bikes, and I can't find any parts, so they're all in fucking England. <laughs> all these parts are in England. Seriously. Um, yeah, you had, right. bike, you had people who made these bikes that look like they rolled on the showroom floor, so all stock, you know, everything stock. Then you had people who made these bikes look like old race bikes. Uh, factory Cowie, Factory Suzuki, Mitch Payton. Yeah. Then you had people who just did their own thing with like yep. all in suspension and whatever. What percentage is it like Doc Wobbs stuff versus just like other people? No, like, it's mostly other people. Oh, it's mostly yeah, yeah. other people. Wobbs, Wobbs has a lot of stuff out there for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I would say mostly other people. Oh, okay. But okay. Wobbs makes clamps and brakes and sprockets and little bits and Got it. pieces. Like the guy that I rode for, Phil Denton, he makes a lot of parts too. So a lot of guys get their stuff yep. for him. Like, a lot of the international team guys had some of his clamps on, you know, leakages. Yep. So they make a lot of stuff for older bikes. There's about 100 1989 CR125s there. <laughs> it was incredible. <laughs> Just <laughs> My 125 race was all Hondas besides, like, three bikes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was fun. Listen, it didn't quite go that well for you, Chris. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it seems like my race hasn't been going quite well no matter yeah. what I do this year. It's a good point. It's, it's a bit a, of a recurring problem. Yeah. Fox Raceway yeah. this year. Loretta's was a hit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We, Chris, uh, Chris won 89, 125. Had a bit of a, an issue with another rider hitting his front brake and then had a bit of a, an ignition problem they sorted out. And then the CR250, his throttle stuck. The slide broke. The carburetor slide Dude. broke, which I've never heard of. And First lap, first, just wide yeah. open off a jump. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it seized. Is this and the then, is this so the one where you said he did the Henry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, here, here's here's what Steve does, like, right? So I, you know, I crash. I come back to the pits. Yeah, dude, I saw you go off that jump. I was wondering what you were doing. You looked so lame. You yeah. looked like you had a boner error. No, know? I was like, gonna make well, so yeah, much fun of you. Stuck. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna make so much fun of you, but then you're like my throttle stuck. I'm like, well, that makes sense. So it was crazy. So it stuck. I landed, and I knew it stuck because I'm looking straight up in the sky, right? And I'm like, well, it's still wide open. I'm like, oh shit, my throttle stuck. And you have to think about these things within one second right so i'm like oh my god i don't know where i'm landing i went to grab the clutch but when i landed you know the suspension's so soft my head hit the handlebars and my left hand slipped off and then it just goes yeah it just keeps going so then i'm trying to hit the rear brake and then they have little berms but the berms are like curbs with grass it launched off that almost hit a flagger and then i'm crawling on the grass and i look over and the thing's just wide open and some guy was going to pick it up and i'm yelling i go hey don't pick it up 
he hit the kill switch, and by that time it seized up. So it just seized. Sheesh. <laughs> so, I mean, also, too, uh, Mike Brown wasn't happy with his bikes, and they called Kiefer, oh and they're like, hey, Kiefer, go ride Brownie's bike. <laughs> and then go ride Searle's bike like to, to, like, calm down Mike Brown. to like Because yeah. you know, Mike was like, my bike's garbage or whatever. And him and Tommy Searle are supposed to have the exact same bike. And Kiefer, uh, yeah. Wrote, yeah, Kiefer wrote them both. It was like, yeah. Was this like 01 kicks? Yeah. 250 something or something? Like that. Yeah. Yeah, so Mike's gone, right? So what's funny about Mike, if it doesn't go real well, like he, he drops the bike off and he's gone. And Andy from FXR is like, oh, he's over there in the truck. I never found him. Like he had, he had a hiding spot or something. Or, and I was like, well, where'd he go? He, I texted him. He was already on the interstate. He was gone. <laughs> so then, so Wobbs was like concerned. He's like, well, I just want to make sure because he you know, thinks Tommy's is better. So, you know, it's 5.30 and I'm out riding these bikes down a freaking grassy uh, water truck road trying to figure it out for, for Brownie. And then, and then you had to text Brownie, hey, your bike's all right. <laughs> Dude, I go, hey, man, you need to boost saw a little bit. And all he puts is, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What? Hey, I, I wish I would have raced. Obviously, I, I got this elbow problem I'm dealing with. Uh, I wish I would have raced. Dude, just you would have had so much fun. Well, the, I was going to ask you. The track looked fun. Like, like, obviously, I'm not doing all those jumps, but I'm doing most of right. them. And right. and it's pretty fun, right? It is fun because it's 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 not dissed up, it's not all deep. Like they had good ruts in the in like in the corners, but it was hard pack. Mm-hmm. It was just something different. And so it, it reminded me of like riding some desert tracks, you know, with a lot of hills. So and those hills on the side were very steep. So you had elevation, you had um a lot of ruts in the corners and you mm-hmm. had some honestly, I felt like it had a lot of big jumps for how old bikes that we had <laughs> yeah some of those things were sent i mean that's rv didn't race this year he raced last year he was like i don't want anything to do with it these guys are way too serious he was just the ambassador this year he was the mascot we asked yeah. bowers we asked bowers steve and i asked bowers like on a scale from one to ten uh ten being the most fun you ever had one being the you know yeah not, not great at all what's your scale he's like one <laughs> <laughs> so it really is that serious like i don't oh, know yeah. i watched Searle's vlog and it just looked like a big hangout sesh i don't know well it was but then on the the, the um the, the, it was, but the guys, the USA, the team guys, like that was all business. Really? Like Searle, Pocock, and uh, Banks Brown. Well, yeah. no, oh, and Bobashev. They all race right now. Like they race the yeah, UK. Yeah, yeah. Se- like Osborne, Brown, and Bowers don't race. Right. I mean, Bowers, uh, right. Osborne races GNCC, but they don't race motocross anymore. You know what I mean? Um, so, like, these guys are serious. Some guy on, yeah. I was talking to some guy on the line on my 125 race, and he was telling me the top. Eight guys that were you know qualified top eight, they all ride together and they ride those bikes all the time. Yeah. Is there no rules about like age limit or anything? It's just no over thirty. Over thirty. That's yeah, it. Yeah, that's it. There was I think there was over fifty. Like the the the, the designations class over only over thirty is the rule. Okay. Other classes there's fifty and yeah. you know stuff like that. Like Dubok was plus fifty. Right. right? You know who? Yeah, was, mine was thirty five and over for one twenty five, and then Dubok had fifty and over. You know who was fast was uh, uh, Coyote. Yeah, I got some Kyoto tweets about was, that. Dude. Yeah, saying like Coyote is is the fastest fifty he, plus rider in the world right now. He's stuff. good. And I'm he like, was ah, on a, he Mike was on, Brown might have something. He was on a 125. He was gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He Looked was, like old hey, Coyote. Yeah, yeah. How, dude? He can shake a hand. He's a firm handshaker. He you, is. You know, when you shake his hand, did you did you feel that? Yeah, I did. They warned me about it, so I knew it was coming. <laughs> they warned you? Oh, yeah, yeah. They warned me. Two yeah, people like warned that. me about it. It was the, the the news of the pits. Like, don't shake his hand. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I was like, hell yeah, I respect that. That's awesome. Uh, Chris Kiefer brought you by Weisco here on the uh, Pulp Mech Show. Um, dude, the, there were so many fans there. Like, the, I heard it was more fans, double the fans that they get for um, uh, a British GP, British MXGP. And I believe it. Yeah. It, was, it was packed. It would remind me of Loretta's a little bit, like how many people are scattered across the hills and the grass, and you and you go in, and luckily Doug Dubok hooked you and I up for a back way to get in because there was – Dude, when we rolled in Thursday, it was a mile and a half back line yeah. of people trying to get in. Yeah, so, is it is it like camping? Everyone was yeah. excited. Dude, everyone was so nice. It's unbelievable how nice they were. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna run five minutes uh, from Fletch later on. Oh, uh, we got Fletch on. We got well. No, he sent a Fletch sent a video recap. Oh hell yeah! When's yeah. that going on? Uh, I don't know. We're gonna squeeze it in later on. So okay. Um, but yeah, Fletch is Fletch is gonna be on here recapping it for us. But um, did you describe Fletch yet? Did, did you describe him yet? No. How old is he? So Fletch, so Fletch is ten years old. He's ten. Okay. He's his his job was to take care of all the USA riders, right? 
So when I got there, little Fletcher was like, hey, Kiefer, and he, he knows everything about me. He knew everything about Tyler. He knew everything. Like, he knows everything about every rider. Like, he did his homework. And then uh, I told him there, I go, hey, man, you just pick out my gear, whatever you want. I want me to wear it. I'm, you're in charge. So he was all excited. And he laid out my gear like it was the fucking Oscars. Like, <laughs> You need to change here. You want to do that. Your goggle goes there. Like, he was on it. He was yeah. a cool kid. Yeah, and, and he has a little show, Five Minutes with Fletch. I, uh, mm. I did an episode. RV did an episode. We all did one. So Future Lewis? Yeah. Future Lewis, yeah. I met Lewis's mom. Someone, did t- t- someone tweeted me that. What's better, Fletch or Lewis? Oh, really? <laughs> oh. Yeah. And? Um, well, Fletch is pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I met Lewis's mom. Mom? Yep. But not Lewis. No, no Lewis. Unbelievable. No, he was in the country, but he couldn't swing by. It's just terrible. No. Nope. And his mum comes. His mum was there. Yeah, very <laughs> nice lady. Some really good stories Ooh. about old Lewis. Um, I didn't see his mom. Yeah. Yeah, she was really nice. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, Brownie was better on Sunday. Brownie was calmer on Sunday. He was. He was calm. He, he rode better. But, I mean, honestly, I thought he'd be better. I thought all of our whole team would be better, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, it, well, I just I just think you know Bowers' bike wasn't exactly ready and set up for him, soft rear suspension, and Brownie was maybe up in his head a little bit about his bike, and Zacho's arms were pumping up like yeah. But and you got I think you just got to give it to Searle, Pocock, and Banks Brown hauled ass. Yeah, they hauled ass. They were ripping, like you know. And it was really cool that you can hear, like I was sitting on top of the hill, and you you knew exactly where those guys were by the crowd just yeah. yelling. So it had like it, it really did have a. De- vibe to it it did and bob Rochev on a yeah. 500 he, he did the pulp show on saturday night with us and said the first time he ever rode a 500 was the practice and practice was <laughs> yeah. like three laps <laughs> and he and he won and the he overall still wax everybody ah uh, not wax them but they were on him but yeah. he still won the overall yeah Rush good rider man yeah 500 500 shined at that track like a lot of <laughs> 500s did good yeah the bikes are unbelievable kellen like i, I know you're i don't think you're like that huge of a fan of that vintage era right you're younger right but dude, these bikes are unbelievable. Yeah. Some of these things, yeah. Pretty much all my vintage stuff that I know about is just anything from my dad just telling me stories. Right. So that's I don't go back and like watch old races that mm-hmm. much, but I do, you know, he was kind of stoked to hear more about this tonight too. We, we do have some calls, Kiefer, for you about this uh vet MXDN. First up, it's uh two is Woodrow. Woodrow, what's up, man? You want to talk to Kiefer? Yeah, I do. I uh was supposed to call in um to harass you about vintage motocross but you didn't race so yeah right yeah uh, yep. you know it's uh, okay well maybe i'll ask Kiefer. Kiefer, you and i have the same kind of goals like how do we get how do we get our guy steve to spend more time on the bike mm-hmm. and you know i see him building these vintage bikes and whatnot and hey maybe mm-hmm. he'll like to go race them but he's like uh, the brakes suck and uh, the power's uneven and, and all that stuff. And I thought, oh, well, maybe you'll embrace the old school and end up liking it. And I was hoping that this race, because he's like, oh, Woodrow, call back after I do this race. But he, he got he got injured. Yeah. I, I wish I would have raced, you know? though. I said I wish I would have raced. It looked like a fun track for just me to putt around. Yeah. With, you know? Yeah. 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 Nothing against you, Steve, on that. You know what I mean? But, like, Kiefer. Woodrow. Woodrow, I think this this uh, whole event might have amped him up a little bit. So I think when this time comes around next year, uh, he might be a little bit more amped up. So I'm going to take his 89 Sierra 125, and I'm going to fucking ride it. Do you think Kiefer so? Dude. I know Kiefer in front of all the English people and in front of Phil Denton guys and Wobbs and Dave King. You're like, I'm coming back. I loved it. I'll come back. I'm sort of calling BS on that. No, no BS. Look it. You, had, you were very rattled a, after your bikes broke. Oh, dude, I was out. <laughs> <laughs> like when my throttle stuck, here's what I envisioned. So this throttle stuck, I did. I'm sitting on the side of the, the track, and I have to mm-hmm. sit there the whole, the whole race because I can't move, right? Yeah, I put a post. Um, I put a picture of you sitting there on your, beside your bike up on Instagram. Yeah. I, the thought set in like two minutes later. is like, what if this would have happened off one of those hills? I would have died. Oh, well, what if? What yeah, if I yeah. would have? What if I when I went to the store today, I would have got hit by a train? I mean, what if? <laughs> no, like, what if? Here's, listen to me. Me and you talked about this. This vintage racing thing, shit happens more than new bikes. <laughs> there was a how fair many amount. Came up, <laughs> how many people came up to us and goes, "Bro, this broke. This broke." <laughs> there was a Dude. fair amount of like, "Hey man, uh, my bars fell down to my lap. Hey man, uh, you know, uh, I just want to get out of here alive." There was a few yeah. of that. And it was and, and here's the thing, it was so common. People didn't freak out. 
Oh yeah, your throttle sucked. Yeah, yeah, I get. It. Oh, your slide broke. That's weird. And they just keep on living their life like they don't care. <laughs> it's, it definitely saw some of that. It was pretty funny. We, were, uh, Billy McKenzie's, no, not Billy McKenzie. Uh, um, uh, Brad Anderson. Brad Anderson. Brad Anderson's yeah. steering stem broke. <laughs> Imagine how hard you got to yeah. push your bike to break your steering stem, and his rear wheel went into the pipe. <laughs> oh my like god! Like just, just. Just oh, that wasn't Bank. I thought it was Banks Brown. Oh, I thought it was Anderson. Maybe it's Banks Brown. Okay, and either way, yeah. yeah, one of them did. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah, you know, I I don't know. It's just so that what set in, Kellen. I was like, dude, I'm out because I was worried. As a test guy, you think about this kind of shit. You come back in and no one believes you, right? Hey, man, my throttle stuck. Sure, it did dude. You just fucked up the jump. You look like a swordfish <laughs> coming out of the ocean. And they and they and they search the bike. And they find nothing, and then they send me back out. I'm like, there's no way. So I'm glad that they actually found yeah. something that was there. You, you were know? rattled. So you think you'll go Dude. back? Yes, and here's the reasons why. The reasons why, the racing, good. I'll give it a five like you, right? I, I, it's fun. Mm -hmm. But the environment, the people, yeah. the whole vibe of the, of the event itself mm -hmm. is so fun. Yeah. Like, it's there great. There it is, Steve. All right, Woodrow. Well, thanks for the call, man. Thank you. Yeah. All right, thanks. All right. Uh, Cam has a question about the Vet Destinations. Cam, what's up? Hey, I was just wondering if you caught the Super Evo 125 class. Uh, there was a dude that uh, said his qualifying time didn't count, so he had to start after the leaders had went around the first corner, and he came back to second. Uh, wonder if did. you caught that. No, I didn't, I didn't know that. But no. I know there was controversy about the qualifying. Mike Brown was pretty much going to leave. He was going to catch a flight back to the USA because they had told him, hey, the, f the first lap doesn't count or does count. And then he sent it and then just went back to the mechanics area. And then he had no time and he was 38th, Kiefer, right? And then they fixed it. Yeah. They got that fixed. But Brownie was – there was a lot of controversy over the qualifying. But uh, I didn't see that what? camp, no. And it's kind yeah, of crappy. Like, a... once you have a – go ahead, sorry. Oh, no, I was just going to say there's a GoPro video of it on YouTube of the okay. dude – all the way to second place. It's pretty wild. Yeah, was he on an 89 Sierra 125? <laughs> uh, no, it was a 96 125 Husky. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, all yeah. right, Cam, I'll check it out. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, also on the phone here, brought to you by folks at Renegade Racing Fuels. Uh, he used Renegade back in his Geico Honda days. Will Hahn won a championship with Geico Honda. Uh, Max Yancey, Dean Wilson now pour it in. Justin Brayton, big Renegade Race Fuels guys. Uh, Renegade is your guide and partner to get the whole shot and be the first one to the checkers. The fuels burn cooler, cleaner, and more consistent than the competition. RenegadeRaceFuel.com. They're looking for dealers and distributors, by the way. Uh, bringing you our next guest here on the phone. Uh, uh, it's Zach Osborne. What's up, Zacho? How are you, man? I'm doing good. Um, just trying to recover a little bit. Zacho, first moto, didn't go Zacho's way. He comes in. I see him. He goes, dude, feel my arm. <laughs> it... It was it was pretty much uh, like concrete and like Popeye. It was as hard as the dirt dude, there, dude. <laughs> it harder, was, it harder. was harder than that. <laughs> it was no joke, Zacho. But you got better, man. Each time you went out, yeah, it got better. Um, just got a little bit more comfortable with the bike and um, actually riding a proper motocross track that isn't really in my current program. So um, just a little little bit of all kinds of factors and uh, got better. Like. Throughout the weekend, I was really bummed after getting a second in that third moto and feeling pretty good on mm -hmm. Sunday morning. Um, I fell in the last moto trying to make a dumb pass, um, just trying to rush it to get to the front. And, uh, yeah, it cost me that last moto. But overall, it was a fun weekend. Um, I, I enjoyed it. Zacho rode a 2002 YZ250. I think he was the only member of Team USA that was sort of satisfied with your bike, Zacho. I was actually really happy with my bike. I just needed some more time on it to to know it a little bit better. We had a little issue with the front wheel on, on Thursday when we went riding, so I didn't get to ride a ton. Um, <laughs> See, there you go. Made the, the difference of us winning or losing, but yeah. um, just maybe a little bit more comfortable, you know, yeah. comfort on my side. Listen, I'm kind of calling out Team UK. It's a little bit of BS here. Uh, like, like I said to Kellen, Zach, you don't race moto anymore. You ride GNCC. Bowers hasn't raced for a couple years. Mike Brown's 52 fucking years old. They got three guys who race the UK championships right now. Like, I'm just yeah. saying, you know. Yeah, well, not only that, but, like, it's, it's now, I mean, 
questionably or arguably aside from the the British GP it's the, the other than the British GP there's no question that it's the biggest event there of the year um and and even you could say it's bigger than the British GP at this point who knows how many people were there on the weekend and what all that looks like but man it's huge and and those three guys Brad um great rider has been a great rider for a long time mm-hmm. uh, a really good British championship rider um has some super sick bikes built by his his guy Steve um Mel Mel just is a weekend warrior like he's that guy who can just show up and, and rip and he his bike's really good he knows it really well and um he showed up to race obviously and oh, actually uh, okay so I'm, I'm I thought it was Banks Brown on UK but yeah Anderson sorry so he doesn't race Full time. Banks Brown was on my team. I screwed him over. <laughs> oh yeah, you and you screwed Spinks and Mike Banks Brown over. Um, yeah. Anyway, so but like I almost think Zacho and look again, you they, they deserve it. They rode great. I'm not. I'm sort of kidding. But I almost think like they need if they're going to do this, they got to have like a 30 guy, a 40 guy, and a 50 guy or something. You yeah, know? 50 guy's going to be tough. I mean, geez, we got the best 50 guy in the world by miles, other than Coyote maybe. Um, yeah. But, but two forty yeah. guys or something. Somebody over forty. I don't know. Maybe they. Yeah, yeah. I mean the the level's just gnarly now, right? It like, is. I yeah. felt it coming last year, and I think that's a lot of why RV chose not to race is probably because he felt the same yeah. <laughs> same feelings last yeah. year. Yeah. Um, and I knew it was going to be gnarly, so I'll be ready next year. Dude, Zacho, England, and Zacho. He was he was <laughs> loving it, dude. Loving it. Oh, right dude. back at home. Right, Kiefer. Just all. Yeah, he, like we, he rolls in the hotel. It's like he's fine. He's at home. Yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. The half shower, the half shower curtains, and the beds that are pushed together, no problem. Yeah, why? Why does only a half a thing on the shower? I don't know, it's, dude. It's a thing. I, I don't know that either. It's it's a strange. Uh, water gets all over the hill. Water gets all everywhere, and then there's a massive step out of the shower. Like it's a huge yeah. step. You're like dropping down into the fucking earth's gra- earth's core. <laughs> I, I don't get it. And then you got to put your you got to put your key card in a slot to get your lights on. Yeah, c- come on, Zacho. What? <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, hey, uh, hold on. I got a question for Zach. Yeah. Is there anyone? And I just noticed this, Zach, over the weekend, and then I confirmed it after I asked a couple people. Is there anyone that has more of a unique style than Brad Anderson? No, but he's always been like that. Like he, we used to call him. Sorry, uh, there's we, we used to call him a hacker. Like that's just like a, I would say like a British term for like a squid, you know. But we yeah. used to say the fastest hacker on the planet. Like he was, he was, he is, and was still so fast with, uh, like you said, a very unique style. Even more he, weird he than the down. Ooh. Yeah, way more weird than the diker. Way like, more. <laughs> He sits down everywhere, and his elbows are down. And then you know that last step up, going up the last hill. You know, yeah. He, he, he. Like you know how to have like a knuckle on it, dude. Sat down off of that, nose picked the little landing. Still was sitting down, never lifted. I was like, <laughs> oh, my God. wide open, elbows tucked yeah. in. Uh, yeah, Zacho, do you think five? Like this kind of was uh, a topic I talked to for a few guys. Is a five hundred better there or? Because there are some tight stuff where I thought Tommy was ga- was gaining on Barbershev. Uh but then obviously huge hills and it's pretty fast. Like, is five hundred the bike to have? Man, I don't know. It's not bad. Like, I would typically say it's not the bike to have, right? But there, with the hills being so big and um, just the setup, I almost think it is. Um, especially if you have a big guy like Bobby who can handle the thing. Um, it, it it it's good. I mean, I didn't really feel like Bobby's was ridiculously fast, but I went up the hill beside Neville Bradshaw one time, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, you know, I'll I'll be level with him when we get to the top. And he was, <laughs> it wasn't even close to being level. He was, okay. he was, yeah, yeah, in front of me. You know what I mean? So, um, I think this year they put in that little chicane thing um, down in the valley, uh-huh. which that helped uh, the 250 cause a little bit. But the 500 is not a bad option if you can hold on to the thing. Uh, okay. Kiefer, what do you think? Yeah, 500s? I think so, just because you have those hills, right? And then when you – and it's hard pack, and if you have a smooth 500, just you're going to yard those guys. Because there's a bit straightaway that goes around the start, right? And then yeah, yeah. That, that I saw Barbashev 
Barbara Shev's scrubbing on that 500 everywhere. Like, he scrubbed so hard one time, he didn't even bring it back. I was like, he's dead. And he saved it. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, but, like, it takes a guy like him or a guy like Bowers that is, like, I'm not going to ride a 500 like that. You know what I mean? I, I can barely touch the ground on the thing on one side. Right. Um, yeah, it's uh, – that Bradshaw dude, I don't – is he South African, I think? I don't know. He races in the U.K. forever. But uh, 125 race, he was impressive on 89. Yeah, he was really, really good. Those two at the front, Brad and him, are both – those bikes are so sick, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Zacho, what a cool event, man. Doc Wobbs, Dave King. What a cool event. I mean, obviously, look, you've, you're, you're no stranger to it, but that's awesome, man. Was it bigger than you thought or not as big? Or? Uh, I knew it would be yeah. big because I saw video from last year. It was still bigger than I thought, you know? Yeah. 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 Like, th- they said to get more people there, way more people there than the British GP, you know? Yeah, I th- that's what I was saying. Like, I think right. at this point – probably overtaken um the gp as the biggest race in england it sounds like they're gonna have big plans too for next year or maybe maybe some news coming right from these guys uh so. it sounds like it it's it's exciting if it goes forward I, I think it would be really really cool are you in then zach like you love it this is this is awesome for you well now i'm committed right like <laughs> i gotta i need a little bit of redemption after this weekend um i feel like i, I left a little bit on the table and I, I love the travel. Um, it gets me across the pond once a year. Mm-hmm. And, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm in for the foreseeable future as long as I have um, permission and, and everything. Kiefer, it was funny because, like, all, uh, all three guys, Americans, are like, yeah, dude, I'm going to buy one of these and ride in America, you know, and bring my <laughs> yeah. motor and suspension over. <laughs> Screw this. <laughs> Screw this. Yeah, they were all saying yeah, they, that. When you, when you get smoked by a dude <laughs> that maybe isn't looking very great on a motorcycle and he yards you, right. it kind of fires you up. So you I, talked to Red yeah. Do- I talked to Red Dog today. He's doing Farley in a couple weeks. He told me last year a guy beat him, and, he was, and this guy was beating Tickle, I guess. He's a 250-pound taxi cab driver on a 500, yeah. and, and Timmy couldn't beat him. And I guess this mm-hmm. guy's banned from racing at certain tracks because he punches a bunch of people out. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. This guy sounds like a beauty. And apparently, <laughs> this guy gave Tickle all he wanted, but Tickle got him and then beat Timmy last year. That's what Dude. He- <laughs> I know of a lot of people in Britain, but I don't know of this guy. I need his name. Okay, I'll send you a photo of him, Zach. Okay. Tim- Timmy sent me a photo and said, told me the story, and I was dying laughing. <laughs> mm. Dude, I need to know. So this many guy. of these guys I just take it so seriously. Like, even just the normal classes, they're like, this is it. I saw guys, I saw guys stretching. <laughs> on the line. <laughs> what about the the show and ten bikes? Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. That that for me, like I've seen two strokes race forever. Uh I've seen racing all over the best of the best. Blah blah blah. To me I was I, I geeked out on these bikes. I just walked yeah. around and look at that one guy has like a chrome split fire bike. I mean it looks just like Peyton's bikes back in the day. Yeah, that'd be that's Chuck Davies. He has some incredible bikes. He's doing a Everett 450 right now. That's going to be super sick. I think. Oh, um, that'd be sick. That the one the one Langston 125 was awesome. Um, just I I just don't know how they get all the actual real correct mm-hmm. stuff. Dude, it's I, just, it's crazy. I, I think some of them are they, they just make them at machine shops. You know, I just texted you a photo, Zacho, of that guy. Um, <laughs> I think I think they make them at machine shops. Yeah. So I. This guy. I worked at 01. I worked at KTM in 01, 00 and 01, Langston's first year. A guy wheels in a 111 KTM 125, and I, and I just had flashbacks, dude. He had – so I was in charge of our number plate venting that year. I had a buddy of mine in Minnesota do it. So I would send him all of our race team plates, and he would vent them, the bottom half. Remember, everybody had vented plates. This guy copied that guy's style for the venting. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he didn't just vent it. He – Looked at the way the guy did it in Minnesota in 2001 and did that. Like photos of it. Yeah. Stuff, yeah. Yeah. Just incredible. I mean, down to the South African, like, logo on the trial, like, everything. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. What, what's the vibe like from these guys that they probably pour a lot of money into these bikes and then they come and, and then they some of them are breaking? Like, are they pissed <laughs> off or are they I like, don't know, man. oh, no, there's so much money? I, I don't think so, Dude. right? Like, I don't, right. I don't get that at all. Okay. I think they're just happy to be there, man. I don't know. <laughs> I'm telling you guys. I'm telling you, it's expected. They're not it's even expected. mad. <laughs> Seriously, I, I mean, at this point, people are just like happy to get an entry into the race. You know, like yeah, there's backups. They don't. You wow. can't just enter. It's full. Like you, you have to. There's a waiting list. Yeah. 
to yeah, get there's in. backup for the backups. Yeah, like Dang. I wonder what? if they're going to start like running qualifiers like Mammoth. You got to run qualifiers <laughs> to get in. It's Steve. I saw that picture, but I, I don't know who that dude is. Well, okay, that dude beat Timmy. <laughs> and he drives a cab. I beat Timmy once too. He drives a cab and he fights people at races. That guy. I love it. So, um, it's next level. Uh, yeah, Zach. It was a really cool event. We met a lot of listeners there too. Like, and the the people around Doc Wobb's tent. Uh, of course, RV was there. He said it was all for him, but. Um, yeah, people were loving you guys there, man. You, you seem like every time Zacho, uh, you signed something, you took photos, like it was a, they loved having you guys there. Yeah, they do. I mean, it's, it's a big deal. Right. And I think that that's going to be kind of the future, the, the deciding factor for the future of the event is just like continuing to pull, you know, big names like RV and, and people to just come over and hang out and see the event and kind of catch the bug. Like we have, I would say, um, I think that that's kind of the next step is drawing some some more big names in. How do we? How do we? And I was talking about this with Wobbles. How do you have like a a team race with like serious guys, and then like a B team race with like less serious guys? So like RV could race or Bradshaw, you know, or like how do we do that? Or no, just everyone's going to be balls out no matter what. I think you start there and then the next year it's just the same as what we've experienced with uh with what it is i think you know dave dave feeney my old mechanic mm-hmm. from husky and i went to the mxdn when it was at farley you know a couple of years ago and mm-hmm. it was it was again same, same event um just a little bit more mellow and you know that was in 2017 we went there before the designations at matterly and yeah here we are five six years on yeah and uh it's it's blown up into this gnarly um, thing that feels feels legit, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not. But to answer your question, I, I don't think there's a way. Sure, you know, okay, we're gonna have a class this year, and it's for the guys who want to hang out and put on a show, but it's not gonna be serious. And then you drop the gate, and mm-hmm. the vibe changes a little bit. I know that's just it, right? Once the gate drops. Well, I almost feel like it's a it's a thing where it's obviously grown. People are really excited about it. If you start changing it too much, like maybe it loses its its luster a little bit. I don't know. Like I know that you want to yeah. make it a little bit more fair for everybody, but well, maybe just have an over forty team race. Okay. Right. I feel like we could do over forty. Yeah, you could do, but I mean, there's still some fast forty year olds. Yeah. I mean, Billy Billy is forty. Brad, well, Billy's almost forty. Brad's mm-hmm. forty one, I think. Um. There's still some fast forty year olds out there. Yeah, true, true. Um Kiefer, I guess he's probably forty, right? Yeah. Oh Kiefer. yeah, I'm well past that. Yeah, Kiefer <laughs> I mean Kiefer had a rough vet MXDN. It happens. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I mean for, and then on top of his rough MXDN, vet MXDN, he had to like be a Mike Brown whisperer because Zach O'Brownie was pissed. I, I had to go mad. to work, Zach. <laughs> Fair enough, though it wasn't it wasn't right what they what they were trying to do um, with the qualifying. You mean? Yeah, yeah, the the way that they had it, and then with that start being the way that it is, it just promotes that inside gate so much. So if you get thirty eighth gate pick, you might as well just yeah, take it onto the house, right? Right. <laughs> right. So actually, it's, it's Keith, so Keith Johnson, hard, like, the, Keith, Keith Johnson just texted me and said one guy does have to be over forty. I didn't know that, huh? Yeah, well, yeah, it's two over thirties okay. and and an over forty. So oh, okay, so Brown, you know, we already yeah. meet those stipulations, and even if you had an over fifty, we already meet those stipulations. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's still a pretty serious group of guys. That's what I don't understand is how you really put a, you know, put a strangle on right, right. the competitiveness. It's well, it's really not it's not going to happen. Because dude, those guys are intense at the front. You know, they yeah, really no are. Doubt. Yeah, it, it it was it was nuts. So. Is there a fairly large discrepancy then between like the top yeah. teams and the back teams? Yeah, there were some guys in the I team mean, race. I think that, that, yeah, go, go there's like twelve guys, right? Like the top twelve is pretty freaking legit. Yeah, Zach. Do you, so yeah, I mean, next year, Zach. Oh, next year, Zach. Oh, you you get a YZ250 and you're you're motoing down. Yeah, I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> uh, I've been scouring eBay. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna buy a frame and do a build or buy a bike and do it that way. I, yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but yeah, I, right. I'm working on it. 
um, obviously, like the, the other thing that you were talking about, if that goes through, I'm going to need to practice a little bit and be prepared. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. I want to thank Dave King and, and Doc Wallace for bringing us over. I, I, yeah, I wasn't cool. looking forward to it. to be. I just wasn't. I was looking forward to it, but I wanted to be teleported there. I didn't want to fly across the ocean. <laughs> hey, so, you know. hey, Zach. Yeah. Yes. Hey, um, you know how horrible your friend is at driving in the U.K.? Fucking math, this sucks, dude. It's so bad. No, it's not. I struggled a bit, though. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. I struggled. Left, dude, left side. I'm on the left. Gotcha. I'm on the left side. I'm on the left side. Right. We are scraping vegetation all the way back to the hotel, dude. <laughs> dude. Some of those roads are pretty narrow. There's trucks coming. You know. Gosh. Yeah. We hit. A, we hit a hole. The hotel road was pretty narrow, right? Like back yeah. to the back to the room. We're on our way back to the hotel on Sunday. We hit a hole, and then I saw it coming. He didn't move. He just stayed right in it, and I thought the whole wheel was going to fall off. <laughs> that, that wasn't my fault. That was the U.K. road system, sir. Oh, my gosh. Um, that was a big hit, though. Hey, uh, before I let you guys go, uh, I do want to uh, – we did have our guy Fletch, and we have five minutes with Fletch. We asked – we have him on the screen here. Uh, these guys can hear, the, hear it on the call, right? Yeah. 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 Let's listen to Fletch's recap of uh, the All right. MXDN. Here we go. Hi. I'm Fletch Neary. We are at VMXD and Fox Hill, and you're watching 5 Minutes with Fletch. Oh. I've just had the best weekend of my life. Wow. Best? It really? all started on Thursday when the riders arrived. I was very excited because there were a lot of new guys coming this year, like Tyler Bowers, Chris Kiefer, Steve Mathis. So I was very excited. I was always, I'm always excited to see the guys coming back, like Ryan, Mike, and Zach. Really excited to see those boys again. Friday, we did a bit of stuff. We were just wandering around, really. Not much happening on Friday. Show and Shine happened in the afternoon. That was amazing. Show and Shine is basically where people build their bikes, and they got to try and build the best-looking bike possible. Then they enter into a competition to try and win. Oops. There was a pulp show Friday and Saturday night. Sorry, Steve and Chris. Forgot oh. to mention that. Unbelievable. <laughs> let's go. Let's put that trophy up. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Ryan, how many races started Saturday? It was amazing watching oh. the Pulp Show live and seeing them interview loads of riders from all over the globe. Picked up a lot of tips from them. The VMXDN team race is <laughs> pretty much the designations, but it's in England every year. It's where teams of three riders from all over the globe, like Latvia, South Africa, and of course, USA, come in with three riders. They do four races. In total, they have 12 scores. You only get to drop one race, and that's the worst race that gets dropped. So basically, you have 11 races all added up, and whoever scores the least amount of points wins. He's got footage. Wow. Yeah, he's got actual video footage. It's incredible. <laughs> engineering race is where British riders can form into a team of three riders and then there's four races over the whole weekend there's a couple of foreign guys in it but it's mainly British people and the JMR 101 foundation won it they won it by quite a bit I believe so yeah highlights Young Lewis. So it's not just about the team races. There is seven other, let's say, like, support races. The Zeb, they're still very popular. The main ones are the one to, Evo Open 1 to 5 over 35. That's always a good one. The over 50s was amazing this year. And Coyote went 1-1-1. One, one, one. He won all four of his races by a margin. He Massive was good. Margin. Coyote. So there was no doubt after the first day that he was winning the overall. The one two five Poor race Doug. after the <laughs> over fifties. That was really good. Very tight racing. It was the young guns, so really nice to see that. And then yeah. The young guns there's plus a fifty lot of races not other than the team races. <laughs> Look how soft the suspension looks. <laughs> yeah. 
Look how soft it looks when they land. <laughs> and then going into the Sunday, the whole thing was relying on this team race because USA were still in with a chance. Oh. Northern Ireland were, but England had it easy, easy. So they, England basically just had to be close so they could win it. They ended up winning. USA came third, Northern Ireland came second. Yeah, and hope we can come back here next year. So my favourite bit of the weekend was getting to hang out with the American guys. Oh. Most of them had retired before I was even born. So it was really, really cool. I'm just hanging out, hanging with these legends. And I basically got to be one of them for the whole weekend. So overall, that was probably my best moment. That's my roundup of DMX the end Fox Hill 2023, and you've been watching Five Minutes with Fletch. Five Minutes with Fletch. Right on. Uh, yeah. Uh, Wait. Mal went in for went into the doctor's <coughs> yesterday. Turns out he's broken his tibia and like bone separated in his ankle or something. Dude, Pocock. So he's really? going for yeah. surgery, and he's having metal work done. Have a speedy recovery, Mal. Watch wow. out for five minutes of Fletch YouTube channel coming to a screen near you. Wow. And he had an right. FSR hat on too, Kiefer. Well so, done, yeah, Fletch. You really, you... Dude, he's legit. Like, he, he's persistent. He's confident. Like, yeah. it's pretty crazy to see. He was there last year, and I did an interview with him. And, you know, it's we all kind of just thought, oh, this kid's doing interviews, whatever, you know. But, like, this year, he had some shirts made, and he was a little bit better, and he was a little bit more legit. and. He um, better than Lewis, cool. right? Better than Lewis? Do we all oh, agree? Easy, yeah. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> easy, yeah. I wish we watched that before the show started. I learned so much just from watching that yeah, segment. He, he put his own highlights in there. I that know. It's pretty good. Really good. Uh, Kiefer, yeah, you, you have him with the FXR hat, so good job on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hit it off with him really, really quick because uh, he's just he has a lot of personality. He gave me crap. I was like, dude, I like this kid, so we gotta, we got to keep him around. Was he, so he told me he couldn't find Mike Brown. I've been looking for Mike Brown. I can't find him. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, good luck. <laughs> Shocking. Yeah. Uh, Zacho, they just showed you on the line. That, By the way, who, your helmet was sick. That old school USA really? yeah. MXDN. Yeah. yeah. I, I, uh, I had, I, I don't know. I, a lot of people said that. I wanted a little bit more out of that blue bit on top because it was just like so much blue. But mm -hmm. um, thank you. I appreciate it. I thought the whole setup was pretty cool with the mm -hmm. red boots and the some sweet yep. fly gear and uh yeah nice painted helmet doesn't get much better so zacko back to gncc soon yeah actually yeah, i flew um home got home last night at like seven um did a little hurricane prep and then i flew this morning to boston and did some uh enduro riding today here in new hampshire mm. and um yeah just cruising along all right zach osborne everybody hitting Busy the gnccs i mean let's Good God, Zacho! Can we get some results? Can we? Can we yeah, I, I mean, yeah, yeah, we can. We're okay, I hope so. I mean, I'm I'm your number one fan. I just I know, yeah. I know. You know? Why don't you go and help I'm him trying. out? What's wrong? Oh, yeah, dude, I'm busy. <laughs> I'll just cheer. Him. Sounds yeah. like Zach's busy too. I'll cheer him from afar. Wow. Uh, also, too, Kiefer Kiefer, Kiefer didn't know UK no tear offs. Oh. Not allowed to use tariffs. Yeah, terrible. It's <laughs> it's the worst thing they have going on in Britain right now. It's, <laughs> it's, it's farce. No one wants to wear roll offs willingly. Did you wear that lens thing that that guy had, like a little piece of clear tape that goes over your lens? No, I wore it last year, but I didn't have any this year. Um, but I think that thing's pretty legit, especially in in that situation. Yeah. Um, or like an enduro situation or something like that. But yep. Um, I the Scott roll offs are about as awesome as they come out of the box. But I'm still just a tear-off guy. Yeah, same. Uh, Renegade Race Fuel is bringing you Zach Osborne here on the show tonight. RenegadeRaceFuel.com. A Weisco Piston. Bringing you Chris Kiefer. Kiefer needs a Weisco Piston for that 01 CR250 in England. You know, Brad Anderson was on an 01 CR250, Kiefer. I don't know what, what, what your problem was, but Brad <laughs> seemed to do fine. I don't know, man. Talk to that slide. And that's all I know. Talk to the slide. <laughs> <laughs> Kiefer got three out of his eight motos done, Zacho. <laughs> Pretty sick, hey, dude. I'm, you know, Sunday morning, you know, they have a parade lap for each class. Yeah. I go out for my parade lap. Bop, it, bop, it, bop, it, bop, it, bop. <laughs> I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I, I pull in, you know, I pull into the pits. Steve's like, how'd you do? I'm like, I didn't even fucking race. 
<laughs> oh man, poor Kiefer. He's got to go back. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta get some redemption. Yeah, for sure. Have a, a better experience. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, boys. Uh, thank you for your time tonight on the show, both of you. Vet, really fun hanging out with both of you guys this weekend. And shout out to Dubok. Kiefer and I were probably had the most to do with Dubok all weekend. Great guy, obviously. The doctor. Yeah, yeah a lot of good stories from Dubs. He's yep. he's a legend. Uh, Keith Johnson too. Awesome to hang out with KJ. Um, at one point we said, what? I said, Hey, did you not race your last moto? Like what happened? He's like, dude, I just want to kind of survive. <laughs> that, yeah, I'm living. I'm good. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah. So that was fun. It was fun to hang out with everybody uh, and all that. So Zacho, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, good luck at the GNCC series whenever you get back. And, uh, yeah, man, thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. See you, man. See you, Zach. And, you, uh, boy. Kiefer as well. Let's, uh, you know, can only get better, buddy. It can only yeah, get we'll get feel better backwards. first. He needs to feel better first. Yeah, get better, and then you know, get better, better at vintage stuff. Yeah, we're we're gonna go back. You're gonna race next year. See yeah, I, I no, I will. Yeah, I will. I, I think uh, I'd like to. So let's hope I can do it. All right, buddy. Thank All you. Right. Have a good show. Thanks, Thank man. Kiefer. Appreciate it. Uh, that's Chris Kiefer and Zach Osborne, everybody here on the Pulp and Mech Show, presented by Motorsport.com, Decal Works, and Fly Racing guys. Uh, coming up with Phil Nicoletti right now on the show. Uh, Phil uh, Callum Brower brought to you by Decal Works. <laughs> decalmx.com promo code pulpmx23 to get 20% off your custom graphics decal works number one for many reasons their mission is to cater to those who love to ride upholding the true definition of quality service and knowledge decal works have you used them you on your project bikes or on the racer x bikes uh yeah yeah we definitely have for sure on uh videos that keepers done on those project bikes yeah great guys sean and the boys down there will dial you in and uh and help you out uh phil nicoletti brought to you by offroadwarehouse.com get your bike to the track with style and performance on offroad warehouse Step in to check out the latest in truck, Jeep, Overland, UTV, and racing products from the industry's leading brands. They install everything they sell from suspension kits, tires, and wheels to steps, bed accessories, and more. Stores throughout America, uh, all the way from coast to coast. Code PulpMX to save. Uh, ORWs on the uh, ass of Phil Nicoletti, Garrett Marchbanks, Lopes, J-Mart, and all of that. Uh, let's get to our next guest, our usual guest. We love the guy. Philip, how are you? Filthy. Hey, hey what's up? Steven, Kellen, how are you? We're good, man. Thanks for coming on tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, uh, thanks for having me on. How is, uh, how is it over in England? Good? Uh, it was good, dude. You're signing up. I met some mega fans of you over there. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm interested. I'm down for it as long as uh, you're my wrench and make sure my bikes hold up on dial. <laughs> yeah, that's dude, what I, we're talking I'm about. I'm being serious. I met, a, I, I met one guy. I mean, he was your biggest fan, and another guy was like, Phil has to come. He has to be here. We need Phil over. I mean, dude, yeah, you, your UK reach is impressive. Uh, sorry, at least I got to reach somewhere because it ain't here in the states, hardly. So I take <laughs> it over there. Uh, <laughs> I'm on the wrong. I'm on the wrong side of the fucking pond. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Phil needs to relocate, like Zacho. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, that I, I would actually be. I, I'd be down. I'd like to. Uh, maybe in 2025, 20, we'll line it up. Yeah, we got to get you some start money, right? Uh, yeah, it's always about the star money. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> I did. Free. I did take a little satisfaction in the UK when I looked at the overall results, and Dylan Wright finished right ahead of you. <laughs> That's because I sucked balls the first moto. You know, I, I gave I gave up too many points the first moto, but second moto was a lot better. So, um, and was Pettis but, Pettis on you in moto? Did he get by you in moto one, or did you yeah, see Pettis, him? Yeah, Pettis passed me in moto one. Bam passed me in moto one. I gave up four good positions because I was riding like a doinker. So, okay. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, I struggled on the track super fast. So, um, made the setting changes for second moto, and I actually rode um, pretty decent. So, um, I wasn't too far off of AC. Meanwhile, he's probably just cruising anyway. But. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was good, and uh, Garrett was coming from a pretty far ways behind, so uh, I was lucky enough to hold off the little punk till yeah, the yeah. finish line. So, right, right. Um, he wasn't too happy, but I mean, I raced him fourteen motos, so at least I got him one, you know. <laughs> uh, and it was it was his birthday too, so it's good to give him a nice little birthday present. You uh, you're four points behind Cooper Webb in the final series, <laughs> and I raced twelve more motos. Uh, eight, I think, yeah. Eight, eight more motors, whatever. Yeah. Uh, well, typical. Coop always edging me out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You um, almost did it there. Uh, Phil Nicoletti on the show brought to you by ORW, offroadwarehouse.com. Code PulpMX to save ORW. Uh, that's um, stores coast-to-coast -coast truck truck parts 
and uh, they install everything they sell as well. So big Club MX guys as well. Uh, all right, so we have a call on line two. Huh. Let's see. Is this really Jet Lawrence? Steve, what the heck? I've been waiting in the damn lobby for like at least 45 minutes. <laughs> what? <laughs> Jet Lawrence, everybody. <laughs> call it in. I mean, so like, oh, so I, what I a surprise. Now to get on your show, I don't get any more invites or nothing. I have to wait. Uh, I, 45 minutes just to get this to say something on the pulp <laughs> like, what is this i like, thought there was a pulp band I, I thought there, i thought i read on vital there was a pulp <laughs> band so yeah. i don't i don't know I, I mean i was until i had to wait 45 minutes i've been on the pulp <laughs> for that day. Oh, I mean, are you kidding me um uh, that's that's nice. Jets calling in to thank me for my seventh place finish. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for for Phil. I mean, the first one was a bit of a bummer because I could I actually found him at the end of the moto. Yeah, but the yeah. second one, we, we didn't see him. The second one, we didn't see him, and that, that's a good day for Phil. <laughs> oh, I hate when he comes around and I get the blue flags. I'm like. Are you Fucking kidding me? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I always make an effort of yelling at him when I go past him. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, Phil said at some point in practice this year you were saying get out of the way on a on practice or something. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, I, I was yelling at him to get in B class. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, well, he is a Jetson Donut athlete, so I mean, right? Like you're checking on your athletes. Yeah, yeah, it's it's good to see the to see like the uh, progress live. You kind of know, like you get you don't really get to see uh, your athlete on TV. I get to see him when like in practice and stuff. So I'm like, I'm coming around to be like, come on, Phil, <laughs> <laughs> lap, drop the, come on, drop the seconds, mate. Like, are you kidding me? Like, and every time we come, we come back in the truck, and he he comes in with his head down. So it's, it's not good. It's all bummed, and he's drinking some sparkling water. We're not like, and then Hunt and I have to pick him off the ground again. So I mean, there's ups and downs to sponsor and fill, but yeah. Well, so. yeah. Uh, for, Kellen, I don't like. We've watched Jet all summer. I don't understand. It looks easy, like Phil. Like just do what Jet does. Yeah, come on, Phil, pick it I'm up. Sorry, we watched Jet all summer. Like just do what Jet does. Phil? If I have to hear if I have to hear that reference one more fucking time from somebody, <laughs> do what Jet does. I'm gonna headbutt him. I'm, so, I'm fucking sick. And, okay, how about we put somebody that's like within a four second range? You know, like the variance, not eight seconds, because every week it's been eight. It's been seven to eight seconds. I qualify behind Jet or even Chase, and I'm like, dude, where? I don't even understand. You know, <laughs> and then, then Wait, I you should have seen him photo. at like dinner the other night. We're watching the race again, and he's watching Chase out of his double. And every time, I it's like he throws his hands and he looks at me. I'm like, dude, I'm about to get a headbutt soon. <laughs> he's getting mad watching me do this double that I've already did, but he's looking at me right now, trying to look like he's about to punch me. Oh, uh, you know what? This is actually a really, really special uh, evening here on the show. We have the other Lawrence brother, I believe, <laughs> what? on four. What's up, Hunter? Oh. Am I on? You're on. Oh, my goodness. About time, mate. Oh, Jeez. here we go. Here we go. No. Yeah, he's been on hold longer. <laughs> I didn't realize this many people freaking called in. So now it's my fault. It's my fault. It's, well, mate, I had to cancel dinner reservations. We had reservations at, at eight. But I've been on the on the caller wait line since six thirty Florida time. So like you guys are just not even dark yet. The Aussie brothers, big pranksters, Phil. Both of these yeah. guys. Yeah. 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 Listen. Yeah, well it was more to just to, to, to say good day to Phil. Big congrats on the seventh. <laughs> I hope that bonus came through. Uh, I was checking Monday morning for mine. I hadn't got here yet. Um, but Phil, I hope yours had. And uh was just, yeah, Steve, don't forget to jump on the Hunter Co. It's live. Make mm -hmm. sure you get some. The we drop make, has happened. Yeah. Triple XL, mate. It, it, it's good <laughs> wow. stuff. Wow. Uh, um, I'm actually I'm in an XL, but I'll, that's fine. I'll take it either way. Um, hey, Jetson, has Phil done enough? <laughs> has Phil done enough for a 24 sponsorship? Like, crash out of Supercross. He did lead laps with a light on. Uh, there was that. Uh, has he done enough for next year? 
Um, you better watch what I you mean, say, boy. We gotta. We're going for. Uh, hey, what are you gonna do? You gonna gonna hang up on me through here, Phil? <laughs> No, nah, he's gonna say, sign with me because I'm do? about to offer him some. So you better give him a pay rise because I'm about to I'm about to offer him and sign him. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, gonna be as sponsor. far as I'm Hunter. concerned, Hunter. Phil has overperformed your deal. You've given oh. him oh. on every level. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm looking to sign him unless you give him a raise. Uh, we overperform. Go. Yeah, we, we're gonna we're gonna give him a raise. So if we, we he's gonna get some boosters in these things. So if he can for next year in Supercross. I'm oh, no, sorry, in outdoors, if Phil can at least finish in seven, uh, seven seconds to and under and qualifying, <laughs> we get a bit of a booster in there. Each, well, I'm, each, each, yeah, section, I'm each second is a, is a grand, we can say. Yeah. Phil, Dude, that's, I was that's... about to offer him 10 for each second off. Ooh. Because, yeah, I mean, because you know, yeah, you know look, it's he's, impossible. He's just getting older, so it's not going to be getting any easier. And. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, well, he was one of one well, of we, the best marketing yeah, tools. I, this Steve, year. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you we, something. We, Sam Hunter Cole uh, ain't paying that. Yeah, yeah no. Go, go ahead, Phil. Oh, no. I walked into the Honda rig and I was like, dude, Brian, my practice this weekend was absolutely terrible. I'm like, normally I go over there and it's just like, oh, yeah, qualified 14th and this and that. And I, like, I had my head down in between, you know, like tail tucked between my legs and this and that. And they're like, oh, you know, Hunter's getting ready for his moto, you know. They're mm-hmm. all bullshitting. And like, oh, how'd you do in practice? And I'm like, I don't even want to say how I did because I'm just going to get fucking ripped apart in here. And like <laughs> Lars and Lucas and all the boys are in there. And then they're like, oh, what'd you get? I'm like, 24th and they just <laughs> fucking walked it you know and i'm like it, it's just embar- it's embarrassing but here we are where would we go 10 7 for 9 that's right boys we did it <laughs> my guy's not a qualifier you <laughs> no. don't get paid to qualify steve no he he's too old the blood is still thick in the morning you know like <laughs> it needs to thin yeah. out for him before he can mm-hmm. really get get loose you know uh Honestly, it's embarrassing, honestly. but yeah, on average, it's been eight, seven, eight seconds every single round, all 11 rounds in each practice from Jet, you know? Yeah. And actually, if you looked at it, it's probably seven to eight seconds from Hunter, and he's on a 2 2 f 2 Fuck. <laughs> Listen, Phil, I, Phil, I rode, Phil, I rode their bikes. Like, you know, I mean, it ain't the bike. Like, it's good. Their bikes are great. But let me tell you, they're not, you know, they're not holding, like, some sort of nitrous or, or you know some sort of secret sauce in there i just maybe mm-hmm. think they're better riders than you well, hey phil do we need to get some uh do we need to get like contacts or something is that eyesight going down a bit do we need to get <laughs> i know my guys some spare contacts in a uh, toiletry bag do we need to get some contacts out so we can see the ruts better uh yeah i think i'm a bit uh what is it nearsighted farsighted yeah it might be might be time might so, need some reading glasses <laughs> so i like how Jeff- i think you're great phil I think you're Thank great you, too, Philip. Right. Yeah, I think you're great Thank too, you. Philip. It's more, it's more the personality. Of, I just, the guy is a battler, you know, yeah. just a battler. Uh, but Steve, you you did get to test ride our bikes, but I got a bit of a bone to pick. Or oh, not a bit of a bone. Yeah. I was just kind of like, I guess I was more let down than anything, mate. You didn't jump any of the jumps at Washu. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I did some, but yeah, not many. You, you doubled <laughs> the triple in the middle of the track. I can. I can attest, I almost went live because I was like, this guy is a phony. Like, <laughs> I, this guy is a poser. I thought you would at least jump the little tabletop before the pit lane straight. Uh, I did do that one. Not every lap, though. Yeah, no, Bro, not that come one. come on. Come <laughs> on. Um, yeah, you I, at least, I jumped the tabletop the before the, the sand section. I jumped the double before the sand section. I did the one by the mechanics area, but I scared the shit out of myself and, and only did it once. Steven. Yeah. Steven, yep. you're, stop lying. Stop lying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm super Steven, lying. You owe yeah. your viewers and listeners better. You're a better person than this. Thank we you. all like you. Thank we you. like you. Don't, yep. You don't have to push it across. We like you, Steven. Don't push yeah. it across the line. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, I was, uh, oh, man. Listen, I, I I ride a blue crew. You know, I guess maybe I wasn't used to the Hondas. I, I don't know. I, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> it's, a, it's okay, Steve. You can just oh say you don't like God. jumping. I don't either. I don't Watch like jumping either. Crawl. No, jumping's scary. <laughs> uh, yeah. Listen, uh, first I'll start with you, Hunter. Uh, how were the nerves at Ironman? Like, how was it? Like, you, you were, were you good? Like, listen, you've raced a ton. You've won a bunch. But, like, when you're actually sitting there and you have a chance to clinch a national championship, I got to feel like you, you didn't quite ride like yourself. 
Yeah, no, nerves were okay. Like, myself, I felt fine. Like, I'm just, you know, having a good time and stuff. The one thing which I don't think it was any different to any other race day because it was more like I didn't eat between motos and didn't really want to be out there. The second one, Mm -hmm. um, as you could probably tell, um, it's kind of weird when you wrap it up with a moto to go and then you kind of like, I don't know, I think I was like six in the first moto. I was just kind of racing to where Jay Coop was. Um, Obviously seen him go down the first turn and I knew that was the only kind of guy I really had to worry about. So just kind of bring it home at that point. But Dude, it's so... I don't think enough drivers talk about how freaking difficult it is to eat on race day. Right. Like, it just seems like you're going to throw up. And it's not... wasn't just Iron Man. It's every race day. Like, hmm. <laughs> in the outdoors, it's so hot. You're running the body hard. And it's... That's kind of probably the... The only thing you struggle with on race day, or I struggle with, you know, on race day, is just eating. Right, right. Uh, Phil, you have a pretty strict eating thing on race day, don't you? You told me one yeah. time about it. Like, yeah, yeah. beers and hot dogs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wish. I'd be mean, loosen up a little bit, you know? Now, I eat, I eat pretty strict, but then I go, in, like I said, I go into the Honda rig, and nine, ten different people have to tell Jet or Hunter to make sure they eat their sandwich. I mean, seriously, one person walks in, Jet, eat your sandwich. They walk out. 30 seconds later, another person walks in, Jet, eat your sandwich. Another person walks out. I'm like, dude, how many fucking people need to tell you to eat your damn sandwich, dude? Just fucking eat it. You know? Dude, I'm, a, I'm a slow eater. He I'm a slow eater, eater okay? Sandwich every 30 seconds. Dude. Like, uh, I, yeah, right, Hunter? I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> no, he, that, is that, he, is, that is true. Is he talking or what's he doing? Like, what's what's stopping him? Is he not focused or what, what's going on? He's not uh, eating. Just, just like... All, all the above. Think of like a dog looking out the window and sees like 15 squirrels. And okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then someone comes in through the front door. And then the gardener's in the yeah, backyard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mom's in the kitchen cooking. But then there's another squirrel and it's a different colored squirrel. You know, so, just, Yes, got like it. That. Got it. Jet, true? True story? Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> uh, Kellen, do you have any questions for the Lawrence brothers? Like, are we going to are we going to be like serious interview? Oh, I, oh I, we don't I have to. A, I got a question for Kellen. I got a question. Okay, for okay. Kellen. All right, what's up? So, Kellen knows I'm I'm buddies with Kate. Yeah, Madly. Is it really true that it goes off motor wins? Because everyone that I've asked in my team that stuff always sort of goes off overall wins. Yeah, it is true, unfortunately, and I I blew it. I called him as the champion when he crossed the line because I thought it was overalls as well. But no, we went into the rule book and it is off moto wins and, and he only had six versus seven. So yeah. Is this start your system? Whoa, 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 whoa. We talking? What the fuck I think are you that's talking that, about? I think that's yeah. BS. You think it's BS? Yeah, well Stop, Oh yeah, I think my Stop guy won off. for sure. But Phil, you can't talk because you don't know what a video game is. You had <laughs> the big boxes and brick telephones back in the day. Hunter, you just yeah. work on cards. <laughs> so this is Kel and I talking to you. You guys stay uh, aside. But I'm, I'm just you, trying to figure out things. here, but if that's true, then that sucks. Yeah, it was tough. I mean, he 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 did a really good job of even coming back in the first place, and um, yeah, I was pretty bummed for him. And we interviewed him after. <laughs> oh, he, I mean, coming back in the first place. Stop! I can't listen to you <laughs> talk about it like it was. Yeah. A <laughs> stop I, it! This is disrespectful. Come on. <laughs> no, I'm trying to figure Talking out. Talking about, oh, he, 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 he you can go away and wait the whole thing. He's strong and face adversity. Yeah, he face adversity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah his thumb hurt. It face adversity. And, oh, yeah, geez. Yeah. Give me a break. Um, I don't he, know what you guys did. He had a better comeback than you did, Hunter, on the first <laughs> motor. Jesus. Let alone the second one. Not possible. So, can we, uh, can we ask a serious question, Jet, about this, or do you just want to bag on right. Phil some more? <laughs> uh, yeah, we can. I don't know. I, I, that was my question. Okay. I was. I didn't have any questions. Okay. My that. my question. Now that it's over and you went undefeated, pretty good year. Not too bad. Um, you badly wanted to be undefeated, didn't you? You were telling everybody you didn't care, but you badly wanted to go undefeated. About probably Moto Six on. Um. I would. Yeah. I mean, it's. <laughs> it's I would say so. Yeah. Because right. mentally, yes. I. I wanted. That was the goal. But if I lost it, it, it was just kind of the situation I'm in. If I'm in a good situation, yeah, I'm trying to go for a perfect season. Sure. But as sure. soon as it got to the point where I have to ride over my head or anything crazy where it's just like that if the track's not really suitable for my speed, where it mm-hmm. doesn't hold my speed, and so then it's just more of a, 
okay, yeah, we'll just, we'll just pack it up for whatever position I'm in. I mean, I'm in second or third or whatever that yeah. uh, position is. I'll, I'll be fine with that. But if, we, if we're all good, we're trying to go for it. And thankfully enough, I was always in a pretty decent position. I was able to capitalize on any mistakes other riders made or, or this or whatever situation I was in. I was always able to come out top, which is pretty good. But yeah. obviously in your head as a rider, you've got to be confident in yourself. And obviously that's a, that was the high goal I set after the first, like, six months in, I would say, after the kind of staying undefeated for the first four rounds, I, would go, I was kind of like, all right, let's just, yeah. I mean, let's just go for it. I think if we get it, that's sick. I get to have my name up there with James and, and Ricky Carmichael, which is a, a, an honor. But if not, I mean, hey, I, I still feel like it's a positive thing. I did. I, I led, I went undefeated for that many rounds. So I think it was a positive, positive, no matter what happened. I mean, if I would have lost at the last round, I would have, I would probably would have stung a bit more than losing it with mm-hmm. only eleven round, uh, eleven races in race wins or something like that. But um, yeah, no, I was definitely set. <laughs> and then my my serious question for Hunter, and then we'll, we can, we can bag on Phil after. Actually, I have an idea for Phil. Uh, my serious question for Hunter is: I heard about halfway through the year, you weren't really practicing much. You had the rib injury. You re-injured it again. Uh, you weren't practicing much. How hard was that? And how true, I guess. How true was it that you weren't really practicing much because of being banged up? Yeah, I mean it was it was tough. I mean everyone in my in my corner can attest for it being true. You know, Doctor G is probably the best guy to ask. Um, but yeah, the first four rounds when we were based out in California, I think I probably rode for a total lapse time fifteen minutes maybe at Lake Elsinore, mm-hmm. and just did starts while I was in California for those first four rounds. Then when we come back the week, we had the two weeks before Red Bud, which we actually got to ride and train. And then after Red Bud, yeah, for the next three, it was the same thing, ride one day during the week. And it was made, it was start practice and, and a few laps, try not to agitate it and, and sure. make it worse because obviously it hurt a lot. Um, and then obviously the... Two weeks after Washu was really good. It, it was really good to get them going. But funnily enough, no one really knows. Uh, we were testing during that two weekend break, and we had an engine failure on the lip of a tabletop, and oh. trying, you know, doing engine testing stuff. And I went flying through the air on one of our biggest tabletops, and thankfully, miraculously, rolled out of it, Jeez. and just with a sore back. Um, so that was kind of a bit of a scare in that in that time and, and thankfully on that crash i didn't re-injure my ribs somehow so that was kind of like a miracle and then obviously was able to do what i needed to do the last three rounds yeah okay wow some adversity definitely more than more than what we know um so yeah. okay uh but steve before we go okay. before we go steve yep. ask uh ask jet who who ruined his undefeated streak on sunday just recently oh on golf or what are we talking jet what are we talking? Just ask Jet. Yeah. He's still oh, yeah, go go but you know, oh, you know, oh. you know how that is, Phil, uh, and and Steve. It literally, when you go to a public, ah, uh, we're already starting with the excuses. Just tell us why you lost and who beat you. <laughs> well, I'm telling you why I lost. Because my my cart was garbage. <laughs> I think I cycled around the thing faster. I mean, mm. I ran around <laughs> faster uh, than cars. my go kart. <laughs> That is the problem with go-karts so, is sometimes you get a shitty one. See? You know? So it is yeah. a problem. Yeah, exactly. It and is. I mean, and I was start, I had my first, very first one was the best. It was at least fast enough, but we just didn't have any brakes, but we don't use them anyways. And then every round after that, I just had terrible ones. So I end up, I end up lining up in the race seventh. And then mm-hmm. Hunter had a bad one also on the main, but he, he started P1 because he had a good time. Because he had good cars in the other ones that kept him up there. So he could obviously ride defensive and not get past, blah, blah, blah. I'm back there. And I just end up this kind of, I just went, screw this. So I'm just, we'll start a pile up here. Maybe. <laughs> oh, you're that guy. <laughs> pile up you're... there. Yeah, I, was, I ended up you're... being that guy. I already accepted the feet as the line. I was like, before yeah. the flag even went, to be honest, I'm like, I felt as soon as we left the line, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm done. Oh, shit. So, yeah, well. You know what, Jet? Yeah, I mean, look, you can't win all the time, I guess. Exactly. I mean, yeah. for HJ for going for going five ten or five twelve, whatever he did on the weekend. I mean, you have to take the small things in life and small wins. So, I mean, that's good for his confidence. 
Uh, <laughs> Phil, so oh, actually Hunter, uh, so next year, our buddy Phil here, he's old as shit. He's like, you know, riding 250 Supercross again. Phil, how's those contract talks going to the club? Are we signed up or what's the update lately? No, not signed up yet. I don't know. We're uh, we're waiting to see. I don't I don't know. I thought I did a good enough job at Iron Man, but uh, no, nope, still waiting in the wing. Everybody okay, else so is good to go except for me, Hunter. Can we get Phil at the compound and like up his Supercross game? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Right, yeah, let's, can. let's go to the compound and be four seconds a lap, lap off in Supercross. Sick. Dazzy can help you. Dazzy well, will work with yeah, you. We'll get you. We'll get you dialed in, mate. Hi. Yeah, uh, maybe. They can't teach old dogs new tricks. Shut up, Jed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, I'm ready. That's super weird that you talk to your sponsor like that, Phil. You're like it's super yeah. weird. I just think every time he comes comes around the lab me, I get the blue flag, and he's just like, "Yeah, that was money wasted." Yeah, that's my it's investment right sad. there. <laughs> Listen, he can he needs the write offs, Phil. Like he needs yeah, the write offs. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But hey, I look at, I look at the small things, like the small positive things. Like, okay, it only took me like thirteen laps to get him, but then some motors, I don't even get him. I don't see Phil or Moto. He's up there battling, so. Then I'm even mm-hmm. happier because my guy did good, so my investment does good. Yeah, but then right. When, but then when we see the camera stuff, we're like, okay, we're going to get some brand in here. But then we just get car sickness down to the handlebars. So. <laughs> <laughs> and Hunter, it wasn't so good. I, I didn't know I had to put Justin Donuts on his crotch at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the camera. I made a joke that if you ever want to know what it was like to 69, number 69, that's what it would have been like. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Hey. I, that POV. that uh, that uh, that marketing spot in the crotch area is open up, open for sponsorship. I'm yeah. gonna sell that. You know, Hunter so. Co. Yeah, um, yeah, that's right, Hunter Co. Yep, I'm in. And Hunter, uh, how how happy are you that you don't have to deal with Phil in the SMX races? I mean, he's he's 450 guy now for the SMX LCQs. You know, what do you mean? I don't, I don't have to deal with him. Well, because he's 450 now, not 250. Yeah, I don't I don't race Hunter. I know. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he was two. He was two fifty in Supercross. Time. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. you know, he's now away from you, which I'm sure you know gives you a little bit of relief. Ah, uh, you know, I don't. I don't ever really look at it like I have to deal with Phil. It's more like I get to hang with Phil. You know, that's it's more of like a positive thing. So yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I miss him. That's why Hunter and I click, and I don't like Jet. You know, <laughs> <laughs> right? It's just like the sidekick. That's the nuisance. You know, yeah. Yeah, I mean, no, me Hunter Phil, vibe, you never liked like me from the get show just because I'm younger. Yeah, you yeah. literally, this is that's the only reason why you don't like me is because how young I am, and you just anything I do or, frustrates or, you. Or I'm just in there breathing and it frustrates you. Not how young you are, dumb, yes, young, no, you know, <laughs> there's a big difference, <laughs> you know. But it's all right, but send over the you know, we need to work on our 24 contract, you know, mm-hmm. and I can do the um. Hunter's deal with Hunter Co. on my crotch area, and we'll go from there. But I am bummed that we ran a backwards camera on my fender, and we didn't get Jet behind me. For <laughs> once in the whole entire season, not one time did we get a camera behind me. Good yeah. point. Yeah, it's a great point. That's a good point. I actually, Buds, I was behind you. but Yeah, you were. Really, That's I mean, right. That was yeah. a first. <laughs> that was yeah. a first. Shut up, dude. Uh, uh, hey, I got this. I got to see the the helmet branding as I went by, so I was happy. I'm like, yeah. I was yeah. going, come on, Phil. Like, let's let's hook on here. Like, let's come on, Phil. Rope. Throw out the tow rope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, buddy. Let's 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 get going here. And I look back and oh, where'd he go? <laughs> we, we did we did have one issue that was kind of serious. I actually was a little skeptical of in Southwick when my foot did get stuck in your wheel. I was a bit freaked out about that because then you're out riding after that. And I'm like, fuck man, my, my boot was literally just lodged in his chain in his sprocket. And I mean, now he's out there shredding oh, on. Yeah. Southwick. On, the, yeah. on the stop. I remember that. That was a whole mess. Up that one. Yeah. Imagine if imagine if your sponsored rider is responsible for ruining the perfect season. Right? <laughs> Jesus, <Phil. laughs> yeah, unbelievable. That would have been that would have been deadly. Uh, hey, bo- been hey been boys, dead. we got we got to run. Uh, but Phil, thanks for getting these guys in to call in. I think it's going to be a weekly spot, is what you said, Phil. Every week. 
Uh, yeah, we can work that into the Jets and Donuts uh, contract okay. as well. Yeah, both Lawrence yeah. brothers calling in every single Monday sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah what do you think, uh, boys? Be- well, I mean, if we're talking that now, I mean, I know uh, we waited like Hunter was waiting since six thirty, then he was complaining and told me. So then I was waiting for forty five minutes. I mean, <laughs> oh Jesus, we, yeah. I mean, we'll have to we we'll have to w- work out a bit of a cut here because that's taking us out of some of our uh, personal what, time. You what, know, what do Even you guys have fun, to do? You guys have nothing going on. <laughs> Yeah, Jets gaming. He's playing Candy Crush right now. Anyway, he's fucking doing nothing. <laughs> I am. I am so. I am so doing something. I'm either cycling, or yeah, cycling. I, I do other stuff. <laughs> Hunter, big cycle guy there. Your brother, Dude, yeah. 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 Turn into a butt dot enthusiast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I bet. Just at the gym all the time. I get it. I understand. I can feel this. I can feel your pain. I'm there too with you. So, um, uh, but yeah, really cool. You guys to call in. That's awesome. That's great. I, I appreciate it. I'm, I'm stoked. You no guys worries, came Steven. on the show. You know. Um, mm. And then uh, yeah, good luck uh, at SMX. Uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Are we excited for SMX? Like, what's the what's the temperature like? I mean, there's a lot of money up for grabs. Are we are we excited? <laughs> I mean, holiday holiday would be nice. Right. But, no. I mean, <laughs> but but a million dollars sounds nice too. <laughs> we can. It, it does sound very nice, and I know Phil wants me to do that because if we have a good chance of winning that, that does go towards his his bonuses and yeah, and Jets and Donuts. So now, said, sadly, I don't I don't want Phil jet to win us, so I have to train and race that. If if yeah. Phil, if Jet keeps winning, does it count as undefeated? Still, do we keep adding it up? I don't think we do, but. Maybe a case could be made like he, he went, you know, 20. Say he wins both motos and then it's 24 and 0, then 26 and 0, 28. Nah, and 0. you, nah, you got to keep it like, ask, you know, that's got to be an asterisk for SMX, you know, it's kind of like it's just strictly undefeated in outdoors and then mm-hmm. you go back to outdoors and then that continues. You okay. know, it's like right. SMX is a clean slate, you know what I mean? So I don't, uh, yeah, I, yeah, you can't do it like that. I don't think anyway. Yeah. But, I, I think, yeah, I think he's right about that. We keep it like this. Right, we keep it going. And, and Hunter, um, SMX, no? SMX, no. Excited? No, it, it'll be good, mate. It'll be good. Okay. It's kind of like, I'm interested to see. I think everyone's just, just more interested to see what it's going to be like, right? Yeah. It's such an unknown, obviously. The other series has kind of fizzled out by the looks of it, and it's kind of like, oh, it's not looking like what it was planned out to be so i think everyone's kind of now all eyes on this to see how this pans out you know Mm -hmm. yeah i think so i think it'd be interesting two 20 minute motos no whoops hybrid track i'm a little skeptical on the hybrid track stuff but we'll see see how it goes i don't know yeah phil is phil's happy yeah i'm fucking good with whoops i don't like three ins (laughs) we got we got a we got a big stadium so you can get a run up for you yeah, <laughs> we'll have, we'll have sure. a fill line instead of a joker lane it's like a fill line fill line yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, i was already i was already looking at the finish line today on soupy i'm like fuck <laughs> <laughs> stressed about the finish line <laughs> yeah, oh my god me, oh that's yeah. great yeah. um all right, no, Phil, Phil stay it. on the line. We're going to do the X-Brown Goggle Tear-Offs with you. This is what we originally had planned before we knew the Lawrence brothers were calling in. Uh, and before we go, Hunter, can you break news on the show here and tell us who the third member of Aussie Des Nations is? I can't. I think I don't know if it's been announced yet. And they said it's confidential in the email. Yeah, it hasn't been announced yet. Can you just say it, though, on the show? No one <laughs> listens. Oh, you, you want me to say it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Is it? I don't know. Hold on, Hunter's texting somebody right on now me. to get a Don't approval. put this on me. It's Monday. <laughs> Is it Brett Metcalf? I'm not trying to <laughs> cause any cause okay. any more chaos. It's, right. it's not even Byrne. Monday. It's it's Michael Byrne. Oh wow. Michael Byrne filling in. We still got five weeks. It's Michael Byrne. He's training. He was riding today. <laughs> that was great. Michael Byrne making a comeback. He was off comeback. the couch. Off right. the couch for for. Six months. He did three thirties today. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> good, good to hear. Uh, Hunter Jet, thank you, boys. I appreciate the time tonight. Uh, nice to nice to hear your voices on the show again. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, yeah, we will see you guys in Charlotte, man. Thanks, boys. Thank you, boys. Have a uh, good one. We'll see you soon. Fun, uh, All yeah, right, see you. Finally, let us come Fuck on now. So, uh, All right. <laughs> we'll see you guys later. Thanks, Bill, Jet. Train your ass Bye. off, okay? Gosh. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Thank you, Jet. See ya. See ya. Uh, that's Jet and Hunter Lawrence. Look at that.
Oh. Good job, Philip, getting him a Good call surprise. In. Yeah. Uh, uh, yep, you're welcome. It was a little prying and a little shoving, but, uh, yeah, we uh, yeah. Yeah, made it work. It worked out okay, huh? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad, having the yeah, Lawrence geez. brothers on. I mean, all that for just from a vital, you know, this, looking at vital and getting the media ban, you know? Yeah, no, I, I read that. I read that. It's crazy. Yeah. That Michael Lindsay and Lewis and Dark Side. They're nothing but problems. <laughs> Uh, all right, Phil, before we let you go, we had planned this before the, the brothers called in. X Brown Goggle mm-hmm. Tear Off segment. Let's do it. It's the X Brand Tear Off segment. 15 second rapid fire QA. Rapid fire. X Brand Goggles, the choice of champions everywhere. Look at Hunter's uh, Alpine Star Goggle. Looks a lot like an X Brand. Phil Nicoletti's goggle also looking like an X Brand. Uh, EKSBrand.com. Uh, Pulp MX. 2023 is the code to save with X brand goggles. Uh, great guys, great goggles. Uh, GNCC legends also X brand goggles. These questions are submitted by Corey Moser. Are you familiar with him? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you are? Yeah. Okay. I am actually. All right. 30 seconds on the clock, Marks. All right, Steve. Um, amateur racing or get racing, which is more relevant and why? Get uh, I'm, racing? I'm assuming that means vet. Oh, vet. Not, <laughs> not a big proofreader, this uh, Moser guy. <laughs> uh, I was like, what we'll, we'll the go fuck is Get? No, I'll go vintage vet racing. That's where it's at. Yep. <laughs> Loved it. <laughs> Absolutely. Jeez. Dude, do you know some of the stories that you hear from vin- amateur dads? Do you know what I mean? Like, Phil, you know, like some of the stuff where you're like, hey, this guy said this, this guy said, like, you're just like, are these fucking people crazy? I thought you I, would you would have loved I, Steve the fact that there was a literal fifty cc parents revolt at Loretta's this year. There was, yeah. Why? Because they because of all the rain delays. Yeah. They initially announced that the final uh, oh, micro heard, yeah. motos yeah. would be uh, canceled, so yeah. they'd only do two. Yeah. And then they the parents literally planned like a let's all meet at eleven at the MX Sports office, and we're we just see them oh all gather around. <laughs> I would have just said, you, 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 here's your money. Get out of the ranch. <laughs> it, it was close to that, I right. think. I saw a photo, a video of them carrying the bikes. Carrying their bikes. Yeah, yeah. Didn't want to get Whatever. caked mud on you, the rear tire, man. Fuck, dude. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> like, all right. Kellen, what is the most noticeable online race that you've announced and live race you've announed? Uh, Noticeable? Notable. Notable. No, notable. It's, oh, it's, it's, sorry, <laughs> that one was mine. I said noticeable. It does say notable. Oh, okay. okay. My notable. Right. My okay. bad. Um, I mean, I got to announce the ESX stuff for Feld, which was a big deal to me, so I, I like that. Um, Hunter was not having the video game time. No, no, definitely not. <laughs> um, the fact that Jet knew about it is just mind-blowing. Oh, he, that he's, doesn't surprise me. Well, he's buddies with the guy that almost won the title this year. Uh, in terms of... Uh, real life racing. I mean, I've only called Loretta's, so it has to be Loretta's. All right. I was up calling the uh, Vet MXDN. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was right in the mix. All right. Good stuff. Good. Good talk. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, <laughs> Phil Carnow started a weekend hangout experience similar to the Rent a Debo. If Moser and his buddies wanted to rent you for a weekend, what would it cost? Hmm. Uh, so like, so I go to Moser's and hang out. No, I think they come to, like, say you're racing West coast. So then on an East coast round, you just hang out with those guys all weekend long. Oh, dude. I don't know if I could deal with Moser for a whole weekend. Uh, no, I could never charge Moser. I'd just be for shits and giggles. Let's go. All right. 21.6. Yeah. He's going to hear that. You're screwed. <laughs> Doesn't mean I'm gonna. Mm-hmm. Steve. How do you keep the water on in a European shower? I, I, I don't how know. Do you, how do you? I'm sorry, I can't read today. How do you keep the water in? <laughs> oh, in a European Fuck. shower. Yeah, I, I can't even blame these on motors. Stay tuned me. for my race tech rant because oh I don't know what the fuck Europe's got going on. Oh I, boy. And I know UK is not in Europe. It doesn't matter. You're all the same. I'll talk about it. In my race tech rant. Is this about the plugs? Just we'll get to it. Okay. Yeah, the beds and showers in Europe suck. Yeah. I'm going to try to read this one without mistakes. Okay. Kellen, now that you have traveled a fair amount to the races, what's been your favorite event list far? Nailed it. <laughs> That's what it says. Favorite L- event less far. L- less far. He would have meant less L- far. I, I read it perfectly. Okay. okay. That's all I know. Um, I, probably Donations last year was my favorite. Redbud 2022. All right. Phil, 
Do you think Team Canada has a shot at winning the B main this summer? No, they'll not even be in the B main this summer. Yeah, dude, we're good. Yeah, yeah, you guys got a good team this year. You'll be solid. Yeah, two guys that just beat Phil, and then our two-time. I relax with just beat Phil. You know. (laughs) Steve, who did or said the most inappropriate thing at the Vet Nationals? RV or Kiefer? Hmm. Billy McKenzie. Yeah, Billy McKenzie on our live show. <laughs> Billy McKenzie got in our live show on Pulp MX, and he he was very loose. And he brought a trophy from the 1950s, and he just grabbed the mic and was going with it. Billy Mack. I don't really know the dude. He is something else, though. But, like, what? What was he saying? Was he oh, doing? just like, you know, I'm a fucking legend. Here we come. Scotland. Uh, okay. You know, like, yeah. just. <laughs> you got to meet Bill. He's a fucking piece of work, man. Yeah. Yeah, he really is. It was something else. Uh, he was the star of our Saturday Night Pulp and Mech show. Um, uh, at some point, Kiefer overheard a conversation of a chick talking to a dude, I think a racer, maybe Dubok or somebody. I don't know. He overheard a lady talking about sex to a guy, and he interrupted her and said, I want to shake your hand, man. That's really cool what you guys are talking about. <laughs> like, just <laughs> fucking weird, man. <laughs> Just weird. I'm going to say something super weird. Yeah. What? Yeah, I don't. He just told me the story secondhand, so I wasn't there, but it was something like that. Is Dubok married? Yeah. He's Maybe it wasn't Dubok. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't. Let's kibosh that name right now. Oh, no, but it, yeah, it wasn't Dubok. You're right. You know what? It no, honestly, it wasn't Dubok. I swear to God yeah. now. I, now I look like I'm covering for him, but it, it, was just, it was just an American. It was somebody... That we know. And it wasn't like a big deal, but Kiefer was like, yeah, I went over there. And I said, excuse me, I don't know who you are, but this is a really cool conversation. And he shook her hand. It's like his radar, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just like, wait, wait someone's yeah. talking about it? Very fucking random. So. <laughs> uh, Kellen, has Weege helped mentor you in any way with your announcing, and did he try to charge you for it? <laughs> uh, honestly, no. Um, he's announced some races with me, and, and like I was the lead announcer for it, and I would throw to him and it was pretty good and i he hasn't told me anything that i'm doing wrong or anything like that so no not really (laughs) phil last one tell us something about jet that most people don't know a peek behind the donuts Mm. appropriate for tonight moser real timely (laughs) i don't uh, yeah i don't know um it's pretty fucking remarkable the kid went 22 and 0 like fuck me yeah, he's just. I, I, yeah, he's just a generally. Listen, I I don't like kids. I hate punks. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, we know. Yeah. Yeah, like I, and Jed, and not only that, but Hunter, they're just like they're actually good, genuine kids. You know what I mean? Like, I can't even, I can't even knock them for anything. You know, so that's really. There's just yeah, like I said, I go over there to laugh and have a good time in between, you know, qualifying him first moto and whatnot and. Uh, yeah, there's there's nothing really to be said other than, yeah, both of them are great kids. That's it. All right. Next round goggles. Choice of champions everywhere. Check out the Lucid goggle. Fantastic uh, to have those guys on board our show. Thanks to Moser for those questions. They're actually not bad. Mark's great job reading those. <laughs> <laughs> Good questions, bad reading. We'll get, we'll get them next week. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Phil, be- before we let you go, uh, it's 10 cycles Friday night before Charlotte. Live show. Are you going to be there, Kellen, at Charlotte? Are you going? No, I, I got to go to a wedding. Okay. So. Uh, Friday night, 10 cycles, live free show with me, Daniel Blair, Phil, JB, Flying Taco, maybe, Phil? Yeah, he's going to come on a Harley and do uh, some stunts. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> We're going to have Flying Taco there. Uh, yeah. But come and check us out, everybody. It should be fun. Uh, so yeah. it'll be free at 10 cycles, and Phil will probably complain about not getting paid. But he's going to do it yeah, anyways. Taco, Taco will want to show up money for his stunts, but that's okay. We can work that out. We got Taco two free sets of gear last week. Yeah, yeah he's, he had Mark Shear emailed him. He was so pumped. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, we, we don't qualify for Arena Cross Mains and stuff, but we're an influencer and we get free shit now. So there we go. This is the same guy you wanted in your, your pulp race, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think he would have been great, right, Phil? <laughs> oh, yeah. Would have been all time. Yeah, would have yeah. been great. Uh, yeah. Well, Philip, I, I mean, thanks for calling in, but thanks for getting the Aussies, you know, to call in too. I guess, yeah. I yeah, it was a work in progress, but glad we were able to pull it off. <laughs> this was a twelve-round or eleven-round uh, <laughs> work in progress for you. 
I uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a little tough, but trying to herd those two and get uh, get old Myrtle all in line is like herding cattle. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Right, um, right. But uh, yeah, sometimes you know, it gets a little hard. He sometimes struggles to walk and chew gum at the same time. But we right. got it. We got it figured out. No, they were know? good. Yeah, that was good to hear from them both after two yeah. championship seasons. Good God, uh, it was all Lawrence this year. All of it. Everything. Yeah. It was just everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it's shocking that Lars Lindstrom got team manager of the year. Also, oh, shocking, yeah. Had no idea. Uh, yeah, exactly, right? Uh, red, yeah. Ride red for sure. Uh, all right, Philip. Yeah. thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. We'll see you at Charlotte, man. Thank you. Sounds good. See you, Callan. See you, Stephen. See you, right. Phil. See you. That's Philip Nicoletti, everybody. Brought to you by ORW. Philip, Pulp of Mexico to save at offroadwarehouse.com. Wow, that was quite a – Callan, did, you, did they say they were like Jet Lawrence? Like – or did you have to pl- well, pry it out of them? You or? ruined it. Jet called and was like, hey, it's Jet. And okay. it took me a second to like realize it was actually him. Yeah. And then Hunter called in and he said he was big, big something. Big <laughs> and I, he just kept talking. I, if he would have just said, hey, it's big whatever, Yeah. he could have got away with it. But, but the more he out. talked, yeah, I was yeah. like, this is Hunter. Right. But he was trying to get on to say, like, why don't you have the Lawrence bros on or whatever and talk shit. And then right. you got Jet in and he heard it and he's like, oh, fuck, Steve just ruined it. Okay, yeah, well, my bad. Should have let Hunter on first. Should have. Uh, oh no, Jet called first. So. Oh, Jet. Did uh, okay. Yeah, good. No, good, no, they said times. Hunter called, and then Jet had to call because Hunter was on hold for so long. No, not true. Jet was first mm. on the line. Jet was first. So they lied. I think so. Uh, all right, uh, we still got uh, Jared Meese coming up from Flat Tracking. Adam seen Cirillo as well. MXDN talk, SMX talk, silly season talk. We'll recap Iron Man a little bit, but I feel like, eh. It is what it is. But we got <laughs> maybe start your systems talk. Yeah, maybe well, you and Jet get Jet back on. Yeah, that, yeah. I don't know where he was going with this. I'm like, what the fuck is he talking about? At some point, I'm like, oh wait, video games. Yeah, yeah. I can explain it later. Yeah. Uh, all right, everybody. Uh, we'll be right back after this commercial break. Pop up show presented by Motorsport.com. Decal Works. Fly racing. See you in a bit. Yeah. Fuck Steve Mathis. At Motorsport.com, our ride started in 1999 with a commitment to making your next ride your best ride. We take pride in having a huge selection of gear, accessories, and OEM parts for moto, street, off-road, ATV, and UTV. Riding is what connects us and makes us a family. From the track to the trail, tarmac to open roads, we're all connected because we ride. And that's what Motorsport.com is all about. We've got your back. Our unrivaled and dedicated team of gearheads are willing to go that extra mile. No gimmicks, just high quality parts, the best customer service in the industry, and free shipping on all orders over $79. Our passion at motorsport.com is to ensure your next ride is your best ride. This is our invitation to you from riders for riders. Visit us at motorsport.com. You likely know Racetech as the suspension and engine tuner of choice for the world's fastest privateers. But what you may not know is behind the scenes, Racetech is the trusted source for many OEMs and factory teams throughout the motorcycle industry. For nearly 40 years, Racetech has been producing high performance suspension and engine components and services right here in the USA. Racetech doesn't just specialize in motocross, in fact, they have many off road, hill climb, flat track, road racing, and supermoto championships on the mantle as well. Not a racer but want to smooth out the ride on the street or add some performance to your Harley? Racetech offers a full line of suspension solutions including industry leading, built to order, G3S custom shocks. All Racetech products are 100% guaranteed to exceed your highest expectations. Don't wait. Experience the gold valve advantage today by logging on to Racetech.com. Don't forget to mention Pulp MX when ordering for a discount. Love the guys at Works Connection. They continue as a 10-year sponsor of this show because, yeah, just like you, they're committed to the sport for 33 years. They've been designing and distributing leading-edge performance products like the Elite Axle Blocks, Elite Clutch Perch Pro Launch Start Device for performance, radiator braces and skid plates for protection, along with a shock pump, a tack, hour meter, and more for maintenance. 
Works Connection, great guys up there in NorCal, and super cool company. I'm more stoked to be uh, associated with them. When you take a look around the AMA pitch, you'll see Works Connection proving ground for products under the canopies of Team Honda, HRC, Star Racing, and other top teams. And they, the best part of this whole deal is if you use a code PULPAMX20, you get 20% off your order. Visit your local dealer, check out motorsport.com, and uh, ask them to see the Works Connection product line for 2022. Great company, great products. Check it out. Thanks to Works Connection for coming on the show. Pulp MX20, the code to save. With over 80 years experience manufacturing power sports pistons right here in the USA, WiseCo has evolved into a full range of performance components for dirt bikes and other power sports machines. Whether you ride a two-stroke or a four-stroke, WiseCo has a variety of pistons from reliable forged replacements to the performance-focused Racer Elite Series. WiseCo offers race-proven components for the rest of your engine, too. From garage buddy engine rebuild kits, clutch and valve train components, USA-made Racer Elite connecting rods, and their CB4 thermal protection line. WiseCo is proud to be a technical partner with Factory Honda HRC for the 2023 Supercross and Motocross. Driving professional level product development that gets passed down to you. Visit your favorite online or local dealer or WiseCo.com to find products for your machine. Maxima Racing Oils was created for world-class racers who challenge the limits of possibility. Their demands on equipment drive us to look beyond conventional ideas and to exceed industry standards. It's in our DNA to identify problems, formulate solutions, and execute at the highest levels of competition. Case in point, the championship-winning Factory Kawasaki Race Team, longtime Maxima partners who extensively use Maxima throughout the bike. Maxima's USA-made products exceed JSO requirements and can be used in all motorcycle brands. Kawasaki, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna, and more. Maxima Racing Oils. Experience the difference. Visit MaximaUSA.com for more information. I'm Cooper Webb, and I choose OGO. I'm Christian Craig. I'm Dean Wilson. I'm Aaron Plessinger. I'm Jerry Martin. I'm Nate Thrasher. I'm Shane McElrath. I'm Hunter Lawrence. My name's Jet Lawrence. I'm Jordan Smith. I'm Tal Hawkins. Target Hampshire. I'm Hayden Deegan. I'm Cole Nichols, and I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. I'm Tom Diallo, I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. I'm Jiren Ferrandi, and I choose OGO. In 1990, my dad, Jamie Gregg, started GUTS Racing. GUTS stands for Gregg's Ultra Trick Seats, because I was just a little kid that wanted a trick seat. And if you're out there looking for a trick seat, go to GUTSRacing.com, your local dealer, or Motosport, and place your order. Support the people that support Pulp MX. You can use Pulp 2022 for 20% off at GUTSRacing.com. FMF Racing is proud to celebrate over 45 years of fun, building every FMF exhaust right here in the USA. Owner and founder Don Emler may have started FMF Racing in his garage 45 years ago, but Don is still hands-on in our 100,000 square foot state-of-the-art manufacturing facility in Southern California. FMF's goal? Design and manufacture the world's best performance exhausts, 100% in the USA under one roof. FMF is a proud sponsor of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship for over 25 years. Hi, it's Tomax Superfan Dylan here. The only thing I love more than seeing Eli win... Whoa, wait, Dylan. Sorry to cut you off like Steve does his callers and guests, but a lot has changed. Similar to your favorite rider being on a new team, the new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range provides significantly improved performance and durability. Designed to win. The new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range offers up to 16% more traction when new and up to 19% more traction when worn in comparison to the previous generation. This means consumers will not only benefit from improved performance on their first few rides, but that this performance increase will continue throughout the extended life of the tire. 
Michelin is a legendary innovator in motorcycle tire technology, and thanks to Michelin Silica technology, the Michelin Starcross 6 tire range provides up to 11% more durability than the previous generation. This means consumers will enjoy the significantly improved performance throughout the increased life of the tire. Take it from me as I too have to buy my own tires, this added value is great news. The new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range is available in six versions, specifically sand, mud, medium soft, medium hard, and hard versions, with the naming designation corresponding to the type of terrains and conditions where the tires were designed to win. Another innovation is the Michelin adaptive design, with specific positioning of the tread blocks in three zones, central, intermediate, and lateral zones, with the single goal to offer exceptional grip for the front tire and exceptional grip, traction, and longevity for the rear. To learn more about the new Michelin Starcross 6 tire line and all the quality products that Michelin offers for motorcycle segments that Steve cares nothing about, visit michelinman.com slash motorcycle. And then visit your local dealer or online retailer to choose Michelin product to maximize your riding experiences. Also, too, make sure to follow at Michelin Motorcycle on Instagram and Facebook. Attention riders, welcome aboard the all-new Atlas Vision. We hope you enjoy the added mobility, quicker flight time, and additional views. Please follow along as we outline the safety features of this revolutionary device. The first thing you will notice is the added headroom. The fore and aft positions no longer come with annoying restrictions, so feel free to move about the cabin. Quicker flight times can be achieved by unmatched comforts and unencumbered movements. Yes, we're built for speed and comfort. And now available to all customers is a 360 panoramic view. Go ahead and look around the cabin. These new angles are available at no additional charge. Located on the underside of the frame is the gold standard of impact absorption, D3O. In the event we accidentally take a trip to Indonesia, we suggest that you remain with your neck in the underextended position and allow this proven material to do its job by reducing the forces over 50% better than ever before. Although the Atlas Vision will not be noticeable, it will be there when you need it. If you are riding with a child or someone who requires assistance, secure your vision first and then assist the other person with a prodigy, tyke, or brawl. We ask that you keep your brace on until your moto is finished. We remind you that Atlas makes flexible neck protection. Tampering with, disabling, or destroying the product is prohibited by the limited lifetime warranty. You will find this and all other safety information in the user manual located online at atlasbrace.com. At this time, we ask that you remain standing with throttles in the wide open position with your elbows up and hips fully unlocked. Whatever that means. On behalf of the captain and entire crew, thank you for flying Atlas Vision. Enjoy the views. From beginners to seasoned vets, race teams, project builds, and magazine tests, Decal Works' mission is to cater to those who love to ride, upholding the true definition of quality, service, and knowledge. Visit decalmx.com and use promo code PULPMX23 to get 20% off your custom graphics. Decal Works, number one for many reasons. At motorsport.com, our ride started in 1999 with a commitment to making your next ride your best ride. We take pride in having a huge selection of gear, accessories, and OEM parts for moto, street, off-road, ATV, and UTV. Riding is what connects us and makes us a family. From the track to the trail, tarmac to open roads, we're all connected because we ride. And that's what motorsport.com is all about. We've got your back. Our unrivaled and dedicated team of gearheads are willing to go that extra mile. No gimmicks, just high quality parts, the best customer service in the industry, and free shipping on all orders over $79. Our passion at motorsport.com is to ensure your next ride is your best ride. This is our invitation to you, from riders for riders. Visit us at motorsport.com. Maxima Racing Oils was created for world-class racers who challenge the limits of possibility. Their demands on equipment drive us to look beyond conventional ideas and to exceed industry standards. 
It's in our DNA to identify problems, formulate solutions, and execute at the highest levels of competition. Case in point, the championship winning factory Kawasaki race team, longtime Maxima partners who extensively use Maxima throughout the bike. Maxima's USA made products exceed JSO requirements and can be used in all motorcycle brands. Kawasaki, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna, and more. Maxima Racing Oils. Experience the difference. Visit MaximaUSA.com for more information. Hi, it's Tomax Superfan Dylan here. The only thing I love more than seeing Eli win... Whoa, wait, Dylan. Sorry to cut you off like Steve does his callers and guests, but a lot has changed. Similar to your favorite rider being on a new team, the new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range provides significantly improved performance and durability. Designed to win. The new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range offers up to 16% more traction when new and up to 19% more traction when worn in comparison to the previous generation. This means consumers will not only benefit from improved performance on their first few rides, but that this performance increase will continue throughout the extended life of the tire. Michelin is a legendary innovator in motorcycle tire technology, and thanks to Michelin Silica technology, the Michelin Starcross 6 tire range provides up to 11% more durability than the previous generation. This means consumers will enjoy the significantly improved performance throughout the increased life of the tire. Take it from me as I too have to buy my own tires, this added value is great news. The new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range is available in six versions, specifically sand, mud, medium soft, medium hard, and hard versions, with the naming designation corresponding to the type of terrains and conditions where the tires were designed to win. Another innovation is the Michelin adaptive design, with specific positioning of the tread blocks in three zones, central, intermediate, and lateral zones, with the single goal to offer exceptional grip for the front tire and exceptional grip, traction, and longevity for the rear. To learn more about the new Michelin Starcross 6 tire line, and all the quality products that Michelin offers for motorcycle segments that Steve cares nothing about, visit michelinman.com slash motorcycle. And then visit your local dealer or online retailer to choose Michelin product to maximize your riding experiences. Also, too, make sure to follow at Michelin Motorcycle on Instagram and Facebook. Love the guys at Works Connection. They continue as a 10-year sponsor of this show because, yeah, just like you, they're committed to the sport for 33 years. They've been designing and distributing leading-edge performance products like the Elite Axle Blocks, Elite Clutch Perch, Pro Launch Start Device for performance, radiator braces and skid plates for protection, along with a shock pump, attack, hour meter, and more for maintenance. Works Connection, great guys up there in NorCal, and super cool company. I'm more stoked to be uh, associated with them. When you take a look around the AMA pitch, you'll see Works Connection proving ground for products under the canopies of Team Honda, HRC, Star Racing, and other top teams. And they, the best part of this whole deal is if you use a code PULPAMX20, you get 20% off your order. Visit your local dealer, check out motorsport.com, and uh, ask them to see the Works Connection product line for 2022. Great company, great products. Check it out. Thanks to Works Connection for coming on the show. PULPAMX20, the code to save. FMF Racing is proud to celebrate over 45 years of fun, building every FMF exhaust right here in the USA. Owner and founder Don Emler may have started FMF Racing in his garage 45 years ago, but Don is still hands-on in our 100,000 square foot state-of-the-art manufacturing facility in Southern California. FMF's goal? Design and manufacture the world's best performance exhausts, 100% in the USA under one roof. FMF is a proud sponsor of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship for over 25 years. I'm Cooper Webb, and I choose OGF. I'm Christian Craig. I'm Dean Wilson. I'm Aaron Plessinger. I'm Jerry Martin. I'm Nate Thrasher. I'm Shane McElrath. I'm Hunter Lawrence. My name's Jet Lawrence. I'm Jordan Smith. I'm Talon Hawkins. Stargate Hampshire. I'm Hayden Deegan. I'm Colt Nichols. And I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. I'm Tom Dial, I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. I'm Jiren Ferrangi. And I choose OGO.
you likely know Racetech as the suspension and engine tuner of choice for the world's fastest privateers. But what you may not know is behind the scenes, Racetech is the trusted source for many OEMs and factory teams throughout the motorcycle industry. For nearly 40 years, Racetech has been producing high performance suspension and engine components and services right here in the USA. Racetech doesn't just specialize in motocross, in fact, they have many off road, hill climb, flat track, road racing, and supermoto championships on the mantle as well. Not a racer, but want to smooth out the ride on the street or add some performance to your Harley? Racetech offers a full line of suspension solutions, including industry leading, built to order, G3S custom shocks. All Racetech products are 100% guaranteed to exceed your highest expectations. Don't wait. Experience the gold valve advantage today by logging on to Racetech.com. Don't forget to mention Pulp MX when ordering for a discount. With over 80 years experience manufacturing power sports pistons right here in the USA, WiseCo has evolved into a full range of performance components for dirt bikes and other power sports machines. Whether you ride a two-stroke or a four-stroke, WiseCo has a variety of pistons from reliable forged replacements to the performance-focused Racer Elite Series. WiseCo offers race-proven components for the rest of your engine, too. From garage buddy engine rebuild kits, clutch and valve train components, USA-made Racer Elite connecting rods, and their CB4 thermal protection line. WiseCo is proud to be a technical partner with Factory Honda HRC for the 2023 Supercross and Motocross. Driving professional level product development that gets passed down to you. Visit your favorite online or local dealer or WiseCo.com to find products for your machine. From beginners to seasoned vets, race teams, project builds, and magazine tests, Decal Works' mission is to cater to those who love to ride, upholding the true definition of quality, service, and knowledge. Visit decalmx.com and use promo code PULPMX23 to get 20% off your custom graphics. Decal Works, number one for many reasons. In 1990, my dad, Jamie Gregg, started Guts Racing. Guts stands for Gregg's Ultra Trick Seats, because I was just a little kid that wanted a trick seat. And if you're out there looking for a trick seat, go to GutsRacing.com, your local dealer, or Motosport, and place your order. Support the people that support Pulp MX. You can use Pulp 2022 for 20% off at GutsRacing.com. Attention riders, welcome aboard the all-new Atlas Vision. We hope you enjoy the added mobility, quicker flight time, and additional views. Please follow along as we outline the safety features of this revolutionary device. The first thing you will notice is the added headroom. The fore and aft positions no longer come with annoying restrictions, so feel free to move about the cabin. Quicker flight times can be achieved by unmatched comforts and unencumbered movements. Yes, we're built for speed and comfort. And now available to all customers is a 360 panoramic view. Go ahead and look around the cabin. These new angles are available at no additional charge. Located on the underside of the frame is the gold standard of impact absorption, D3O. In the event we accidentally take a trip to Indonesia, we suggest that you remain with your neck in the underextended position and allow this proven material to do its job by reducing the forces over 50% better than ever before. Although the Atlas Vision will not be noticeable, it will be there when you need it. If you are riding with a child or someone who requires assistance, secure your vision first and then assist the other person with a prodigy, tyke, or brawl. We ask that you keep your brace on until your moto is finished. We remind you that Atlas makes flexible neck protection. Tampering with, disabling, or destroying the product is prohibited by the limited lifetime warranty. You will find this and all other safety information in the user manual located online at atlasbrace.com. At this time, we ask that you remain standing with throttles in the wide open position with your elbows up and hips fully unlocked. Whatever that means. On behalf of the captain and entire crew, thank you for flying Atlas Vision. Enjoy the views. Welcome back, everybody. Pulp Mech Show presented by Motorsport.com. Fly Racing, Decal Works. Fly Racing, man. Charging into 2024 Fly Racing. Uh, check them out, please, uh, at Fly Racing USA. 
And uh, yeah, Kellen Brower in studio. What's up, Kellen? How's it, how's it going so far? It's going pretty good. It was uh, cool to see the Lawrence brothers call in or uh, yeah. wait to get on the phone, no, I guess. No, no. That, they're, they're, they were just saying that. Always good to see um, Filthy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Marks, any word at all from the Mandarin? Oh, boy. I haven't actually heard. Um, okay. I, I need to open up my Tor browser and <laughs> Tor. Uh, turn my VPN on, though, because I mm-hmm. bet that's why I'm not getting those okay. messages. All right. What did you so. think of the Mandarin? Pretty pretty hard-hitting stuff, huh, Kellen? It's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. he's got some takes yeah. for yeah. sure. He, yeah. Yeah. he does. Yeah, he does. <laughs> some take. Those were, those were some of the takes of all time. Yeah, definitely sure. some of the takes <laughs> of all time. Uh, Max Nancy, Dean Wilson, firepowerparts.com uh, on Instagram as well, Facebook. All of that, batteries uh, and uh, and chains made in Japan, featherweight lithium batteries, firepowerparts.com, over 50 years of experience in the industry. Firepower commits to quality, value, and service for your machine. Firepower Honda, Max Anstey, and uh, Dean Wilson will be back next year with those guys. So, yeah. Uh, well, I think they're going to be back next week with those guys. True. Yeah, good point. <laughs> yeah, they'll be back from yeah, they'll be back for next week, but uh fire I mean like for silly season yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Same team next year. Firepowerparts.com, motorcyclejobs.com, job of the week. Uh district manager for Kawasaki in Montana. Whoa. Full-time job. Territories include Montana, Dakotas, and Alaska. <laughs> Whoa. I guess you're flying to that one. No kidding. Uh, this is a, a district manager for Kawasaki. This position develops and maintains a dealer network to sell Kawasaki's line of vehicles by assuring fair and complete Kawasaki product um, representation in assigned area of responsibility. Wow, that's good. Good job. It is a district uh, district manager for Kawasaki. Motorcycleindustryjobs.com to read more about that. If you're looking, if you're a company out there looking to find someone, Put, post your job at motorcycleindustryjobs.com. Contact them, work with them, post your job up, and uh, and yeah, you should be uh, uh, well dialed into the industry to all the people. Uh, uh, we do have uh, Jared Meese coming up, but Kellen first. Anthony has a start your systems question. Oh yeah, go ahead, Anthony. All right. Hey guys, uh, big fan of both of your channels actually. Um, but I was wondering, Kellen, what is the like what is the business like nowadays with that where there's not really like a good game like i see you make the videos on legends and stuff but these new games just aren't like the old ones were and i don't know why they can't seem to replicate what they had going on before yeah it's tough i mean <clears throat> there are a few people out there that like the new games and i'm not really one of them i think there's a long way to go with them but what I hear is is there was just a lot more money in making those games back then, so you had more of a development team and more of a development cycle to kind of build it out and really test things and try new things and stuff like that. And I guess it's just not really the case anymore where they can make like a full-scale AAA title game, and so they obviously go on a little bit more of a budget, and because of that, maybe some things don't come through that probably or really should. But, I mean, they're trying. I feel like Legends from day one to now has improved a decent bit, and they're, they're continuing to work, and hopefully they're starting to build a better base so that they can, you know, kind of maybe work towards some of that stuff that we used to see. Okay, let me ask you this, Kellen. Uh, I've talked to you about the video game stuff before on this show, so I don't want to get too far into it, but if ATV Fury and the one uh, uh, MX versus ATV at the Stew Compound alive, if those were a ten, in, in everybody's kind of opinions, okay. right? Like we, you know, you'll never satisfy yeah. everybody. Those were a ten. The yeah. two compound was a ten. Right. If those were a ten, what are the, what's the current games at? Fun playability. Four and a half. Oh <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, I mean it's different for everybody. For me, I, I I try to take the good more so than the bad. So I'd put the current ones more at like a six. Okay. Um, and I I think that there are that ways to play them. Pretty good. Yeah, I think there there's ways to yeah. find fun in them basically, you know, like if you only look at the bad it'll be tough to really get past it, but yep. if you just play it for like oh, it's an arcade game and it there's dirt bikes in it. Yeah. yeah. There's ways to have fun, I right. feel like. Cool. Thanks for the caller, man. Yeah, Thanks. It's yeah. Good day. Thanks for the call. Thank you. Appreciate have it. Have a good night. All right. Arno is on one. He's got a fill story. What's up, Arno? What's the fill story? Good evening, still, uh, Stephen Kellen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was more of uh, about his reputation. Uh, mm-hmm. At Ironman, after the race, I uh, was hanging out with the Frenchies, Romain Pap and Rubini and yep. the Le Big squad. Mm-hmm. And they're talking about bench racing, and Nicolet's name came up. He's like, oh, Nicoletti. I said, what about him? He's like, oh, this guy, I, he's always mad. 
He always makes hand gestures. Mm -hmm. He's always yelling at everybody. And they, they did not understand at all what Phil is all about. And from the outside, that yeah. definitely makes sense. They were at Club MX uh, racing and said, this guy's crazy. I don't get it. He's <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's that sounds <laughs> sounds great. Like, yeah, it's, it sounds like perfectly for Phil, right? Right? Like, yeah, they they were baffled by by his behavior. I'm like, no, it's normal. It's his thing. They're like, no, we yeah. don't get it. <laughs> the French are confused. <laughs> yeah, no, Phil yeah. is uh, he's a national treasure, and uh, that's what happens. Yeah, so um, yeah, it's very interesting. I think that's I think that's really funny. Yeah, those guys are probably like, what is up with him? I had, I don't know who it was, like a really good rider was like, I don't know about that guy. I think he hates me. <laughs> I'm like, no, he doesn't hate you. It's just the way he is. Like, like, like you know, like some some national, like some dude. Yeah. Like, I don't know who it was. Can I can't he? remember now. He's just like, I think he hates me. And I'm like, no, 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 no. He just, yeah, he just acts like that. Huh. So, um, yeah, good stuff. Thanks, Arno. Thanks for the call, man. Uh, have a good night. Thank you. Appreciate it. 7 o'clock hour brought to you by Acherby's, at Acherby's uh, USA on social media. And uh, chain blocks, slider kits, frame guards, discards, hand guards, complete replica Plastic kits, whether it's Anderson, Barsha, AC, Cooper Webb, any of those guys. They take the input from current riders and teams, and they build the le highest level of performance and protection in the industry. Bring your bike back to life at a Cherubis. Uh Remember, all the codes to save, a lot of the codes to save, publicmextro.com. Uh, please check that out if you can and uh, and save with uh, those guys. Appreciate it. Um, all right, Jared Mies is coming up here, flat track guy, AFT dude. And then some guy named Adam Cien Cirillo. So looking forward to that. Callum Brower in studio. Um yeah, I figured we covered Iron Man, but um, what anything else catch your eye that you want to talk about Iron Man wise? Um, I mean, I feel like what everybody talked about on the weekend was Deegan's big send lines that he had. And yeah, it was, it was honestly like kind of gnarly to stand next to it and see it because suddenly it's just whoa, he's way up there, and then you hear the thud on the ground. Like he he was up there pretty far. It was kind of cool to see. Yeah, th that was impressive. Uh, I didn't see the one in the back, uh, but that the one by the finish line. Obviously, I've been there a bunch. I never. Th thought hey let's string those <laughs> together do you know what i mean yeah i mean it i i felt like it was maybe a possibility because i've seen it done in a video game and, okay. and see, like <laughs> like you you know that like that's unrealistic it's a video game yeah but you can see how like they would get there a yeah. little bit yeah yeah and i always thought that there wasn't enough of a speed off the double to do it right not that it wasn't possible to get that gap it yeah. was just that you come out of a pretty sharp corner you have to like kind of really huck that double on yeah and uh, I guess he would just go a little bit wider in that corner and get over the double clean so he could downside it and really carry his momentum. Yeah. But he was off the back of the bike every single time that he'd do it. Like the so he did it in the stretch. race, they said, on the podcast? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he actually did it uh, behind Vial when he okay. was trying to catch and pass Vial at one point. And, like, there's a few times. It wasn't, like, that close, but, like, Vial was coming through, and then you just see – now, it didn't top. look that much faster. What did you no, think? No, I don't think so. I think maybe a couple tenths yeah. at most or yeah. so. Yeah. Um, but what it did is it got you close enough that you could set something up into the next, the next corner. next turn, right. sure. Yeah. yeah, so like you get a nose in there right. basically and suddenly you you have the whole bike alongside. Yeah, I think when you look at Hayden <laughs> and the speed he was carrying, uh, charging up and that jumps that he was doing, uh, you, you maybe get more impressed with Joe and able to, to regroup. Yeah pull himself together and kind of pull back out. Yeah, you know? I don't I don't know that in the first moto Deegan was doing that line. I I'd, I'd have okay. to go back and and see if anybody else caught it cuz he did a lot in practice. Yep. And then I, I don't know if the line cleared up a little bit better in the second moto. But yeah, I mean Joe to like I said in that first moto Deegan was coming like fast closing up to that whole battle that was going on for the lead and it wasn't like Joe was really slicing through those mm -hmm. guys. Yep. And then they they both got VL within like a lap of each other. And then Joe just yeah. slowly walked slowly away. Like that away. was really impressive. At some point, I would have said, "Oh, Deegan's winning this." Yeah, Do you know exactly. what I mean. Like I just no, one hundred percent winning this. Uh, yeah, impressive, impressive by by yeah. Hayden. This the kids, kids on fire, man. It's, I mean, uh, some of the four fifty guys were like, "I want no part of that. Like, right. I don't want to. Uh, there's no need to jump it. I'm good. Yeah. Like yeah. he he can do it." Yeah, we'll that's just... <laughs> the shit. That's, that's the shit that people say with Stu. You know yeah. what I mean? Like and that's the kind of company that Hayden's putting himself into, where he's doing things where top four fifty riders are like, "Yeah, no." Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. You know, so impressive. No, it, I mean, it just takes like a lot of, um, like it obviously it takes a lot of the, the balls or whatever people say to, to huck that, but it also takes a lot of like trust in yourself mm -hmm. that, you know, you can go to a certain spot because if he over jumps that a little bit yeah. or comes up um, short a little bit, yeah. you're blowing tires out. Like things are not yeah. good. No, it's and not so good to know that like, uh, this is the amount of speed I need to get to that location. Lap after lap is and, impressive. And to even no one else is doing it. Right. So 
all to of that. Think of it in yeah, the first to place. Think of it and then be like, yeah, I can perfectly downside that. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, it's it's nuts. Mm -hmm. And then so. to do it in the race too, like especially yep. after 15, 20 minutes, you're a little bit more tired. You maybe don't have the same level of precision yep. and still bust it out was yeah, yeah. pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, it's 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 impressive for sure. Um all right. Um, he won four fifty or uh, two fifty rookie of the year too. Shocking. And uh, it's kind of funny. I was reading through the comments of uh, a post we did of him winning rookie mm -hmm. of the year, and the amount like the Jet was so good this year that people in the comments were literally like, "Who won four fifty rookie of the year? Had to be Masterpool, right?" Like just really completely whoosh, <laughs> like the fact that Jet Lawrence was still a rookie in the class. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Right. Um, it is interesting because, like, I mean. Just as a um, fan of the sport and a little bit of historian of the sport, what Jet's going to do here is he's going to jump into 450 Supercross, and he's going to be a rookie in that. But the rookie factor will be that he raced everybody all year except for Tomac. He raced them in the outdoors. It will make it easier on him. Yeah. So whatever Jet does next year is his rookie year. I'm not saying that, but it's a little bit of an asterisk from other rookies like McGrath or Carmichael or whatever yeah. who just came into Anaheim literally first time in the premier class. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. I, I, there's no – it's his rookie year. I'm not trying to say it's not, but he definitely has a leg up for Supercross. You know? Yeah. Well, we yeah. saw Chase do the same thing, right? Yep. 450 outdoors first and yep. then was leading the second main event on a 450 ever had until he, he crashed really hard. So, yep. like you said, I think it yep. gave him – like. At least the confidence to know that these guys, I can't, I shouldn't be scared of these guys. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. I have them covered outdoors. I know how to beat them. I know yeah. how to race them. Yeah, I think that's a huge thing mentally yeah. when you line up at Anaheim 1. Exactly. You yeah. Um, so. For you, though, does it, I mean, is he immediately like the number one? Or do you say, uh, we got to see first before? I think he is, man, because I got questions about Tomac and the injury mm -hmm. and the age. I got questions about the bike with Sexton. Yep. Anderson, yeah, you know, like whatever. Coop switching uh, teams. Coop switching, yeah. yeah like I, I think he's the guy. I think he's – you have to be like – I think he's – if this is Vegas and we're in Vegas now, he's a slight betting odds to win the 4th Supercross title. Yeah. Not a lot, not an overwhelmingly favor like that, but just looking at it. Yeah. Just, if you were just the odds maker looking at all the guys with problems or issues or question marks – and then which guy doesn't have a question mark? Well, the guy that went 22-0. Yeah, I guess the only question I'd have with that is we've seen over the last handful of years Tomac winning the championship last year's side. You know, Dylan wins Sexton outdoors. Title. No, I'm saying uh, oh, last oh, year outdoor, in outdoors, outdoors Tomac won the title. Sorry. Dylan wins the championship in 2021. Yeah. It doesn't carry over to Supercross. Zacho wins the championship in 2020. Yeah, it does. You know what I mean? Yeah, like no. That's the only thing I'm saying is, like, is it is it immediately going to carry over or does he have a learning curve there? Yeah, I think you're right in the case of Ferrandis and Osborne are great riders, but not special uh, yeah, I get undefeated that. riders. I'm right? just saying, is it a little bit different because no. there's going to be a bit of a steeper learning curve in Supercross, sure, I feel like. Sure, but not as much of a difference as a new bike for, for yeah. Sexton and an injury for Tomac True. and Kenny being, you know, all the things. And like, SMX has to help, right? Like yeah. racing kind of indoors on Supercross-y type tracks yeah. already. Yeah, I think so. I think that will help. Uh, so, yeah, I think there's – I mean, we'll – we have a lot of time to talk about Supercross 2024, and we certainly will do that. So, but yeah, I, I just got, I mean, I got to think, yeah. Show one? Show one. Of preview shows? Does Jet make it? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You have to ask why again. You have to ask why again. Yeah, <laughs> he it's a, sets, the, it's a great he sets question. the terms. It's a great question. <laughs> uh, we got a question for you, speaking of that. All Jay's uh, Jay's on the lines talking to uh, Kellen Brown. Go ahead, Jay. Hey, Kellen. Uh, I kind of came across some of your old racer uh, examination videos from like 2009. Another one was from uh, 2017. And they were really good breakdowns, good time length, uh, you know, short content, like four to 15 minutes. And I just noticed you haven't done one uh, in a while. I was just wondering if that was a project that you had any interest in getting back to. The race examination videos on Racer X or the ones that I do on my channel, you mean? The ones on Racer X from uh, like two to four years ago, maybe. Huh? No, I mean, I did a we did race examination last week um, on Bud's Creek, and it was kind of the same thing, like six, seven minutes. I'll be doing one on Ironman. I, I don't know. I do them every week. Maybe it just you didn't see them. No, no, no. So uh, yeah, no. Which ones you're talking about? Those are great. Uh, but if you look up, one second, little brother. If you look up on uh, 
Racer X from it'd be from like four years ago, but you looked back at them uh, from years past. So like, you oh pick, uh, yes, an old race. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I know what you mean. Old now. race. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got the, you, the, those were really interesting to watch because uh, you had really good highlight reels of it while you were talking through what is happening. Similar to what you're uh, referencing more currently, right? Is you would you know highlight those lines and stuff. And the re-raceables that Steve does is great. It's just uh, you know being YouTube, you know, video, you know, visual display and stuff. There's, there's just good breakdowns. I was wondering if you're going to get back to that project in the foreseeable future i would like to um the reason why we did those at that specific time was because there was no racing it was during covid um so oh. we, we kind of used that time frame to be like hey let's go back and talk about some old races and fill time a little bit and we're always going to get back to like covering the races that were going on but um yeah i mean maybe it's something that we could entertain doing some ones during the off season a little bit going back and talking about some old races it, it might be fun yeah last thing i'm gonna say just throwing it out there is if anyone looks it up the night in Vegas that you did for the 2017 Supercross Championship. Yeah. It's two, it's a two part series, man. You only put out part I one. Know. So you got part two waiting to be done. So, anyways, appreciate it. Have cool. a good night, guys. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. That's a Kellen Army. Yeah. Right there. I will say for that thing that you said at the end, I have a part two in the works. The reason I paused it is because uh, I was going to have Dunge and Tomac both talk about it at some mm. point. Um, but I wanted to have Tomac's career kind of probably end first before we get to doing that. Wow. So, wow. exciting stuff. Yeah. Uh, Maxima USA, Pulp 20 is the code to save with Maxima. 927, still the number one selling performance two-stroke oil in most markets around the world. And, of course, their uh, four-stroke oil that Maxima Racing uh, sponsors with uh, Pro Circuit and Monster Energy Kawasaki with. Uh, it's got the new Peak system in it as well, unique and exclusive to Yamaha. Uh, SC1, fantastic. FFT, fantastic. MPPL, contact cleaner, all of it. Uh, SC1, of course. I had a Maxima air freshener a little while ago. What happened? SC1. I don't know. I, I need to get more. Yeah. They make air fresheners. Is it SC1? SC1 yeah. Uh, yeah. It's fantastic. It's great. Nice. I need to get some more. Pulp 20 is the code to save with ProFilter.com as well. Pulp 20 at checkout at ProFilter.com and Maxima USA. Uh, what they have is uh, oil and air filters for dirt bikes, street bikes, side-by-sides, and everything in between. So do guys like Motorsport uh, or your dealer. You can pick up a pre-oiled, ready-to-use premium air filter, oil filter for your next service. Thanks to ProFilter. Thank you, Maxima, for coming on board and use the code and save. Uh, Jared Meese coming up here right away. Uh, I don't have enough time for my Race Tech rant, but that's coming up. But you have a mini one. We got enough time to squeeze it in. Do you want me to squeeze them in? Racetech.com. Uh, Pulp 23 is the code to save. Here's Kellen Brower's <laughs> Race Tech mini rant. Yeah, it's it's fairly short. And okay. really, it boils down to I don't really read too much into like YouTube comments, Instagram, whatever. But I did have people like start tweeting at me and then I did a recap this morning of kind of Jet's Perfect Season on my channel and people were responding to me about this as well. And it's really that, yes, Jet's Perfect Season is incredible. But the fact that so many people are like crapping on Chase for not breaking it up mm -hmm. and they say he crashes all the time and loses the front and we're just waiting for it to happen. And it's like... I feel like it's a little unwarranted. Uh, you know, Chase, mm -hmm. I, in my opinion, made this series more interesting than it could have been. Jet was, I feel like, leaps above a lot of people, and Chase kept him honest more often than not. Yes, he didn't beat him, but he was close. Yep. He charged hard. He made it interesting when he, he didn't really have to as well. He worked well. his balls off. Yeah. yeah, especially after you miss the second, third, fourth round of the series with injury. You come back, you know, you could easily see why he wouldn't push it to the limit and mm -hmm. break his back trying to, uh, you know, win the race and, yeah. and destroy himself over it. And then, yeah, he did have some crashes, but I feel like he has those crashes because of how hard he was pushing to make it closer racing for us. And I, I just feel like it's it sucks that so many people have to be like, oh, why does he crash all the time? If he wants to be an elite, he's got to figure it out. And it's like, I, I think he's kind of an elite, man. He, yeah, yeah. Supercross yeah. title, yeah, he's winning races a champion, lot. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, okay. All right. I would suggest you to not read those comments on social media. But, Again, it's, um, yeah, it's just that I get people coming at me. Think if Jet so. wasn't, think if Chase wasn't there, uh, he was beating Ferrandez and AP by minutes. That's what I'm saying. Minute, by a minute. You like know? this weekend like, at Ironman, second moto, they're 50 seconds ahead of everybody else. Like yeah. Chase Sexton is 50 seconds ahead of those guys too. Like you take Jet out of it yeah. and what Chase is doing, I thought was pretty impressive, yeah. but it's just that someone's a fraction of a second better than him, yeah. you know? Yeah, it, it absolutely. Right. Like I feel like, uh. I mean, look, uh, you can definitely come down on Chase for mistakes that are seemingly repetitive. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying that, like, yeah. he doesn't deserve the criticism for his mistakes and crashing. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that there's, you know, like, we post up a video on RacerX of Jet f 
crashing in qualifying because mm -hmm. he had a little tip over. Mm -hmm. And there's just like loads of comments of like, wow, why do they put the, yeah. you know, Sexton's uh, bike on, you know, why are the 18 stickers on Sexton's bike and yeah. stuff like that? And it's like, does it have to be like that? Do yeah. you really have to go there? Yeah, no, I get it. Uh, especially like, well, like, let's face it, uh, Stu's made some few more. I don't know what's going on with Stu and Chase. It's obvious that Stu isn't a fan of Chase. They worked together for a while. From what I understand, it wasn't a bad breakup. They just either, I think Chase said, hey, I'm going a different way. And Stu was like, okay. Yeah. But it's obvious that Stu has something against Chase. He doesn't spare. He takes digs at him when he can, you know, more so than he does any other racer to me. He makes jokes about the front end and all. Like, you get me? You feel yeah, me? And yeah. And what I, like, th I thought what was weird, too, this year is if you go back to last year, when Chase and Eli are battling each other, all the talk was, look at how smooth Chase is. Like, look at how well yeah. he hops the bumps and stuff yeah. like that. And then Eli bulldogs his way right. through because that's what he's always done. Yeah. This year, it's the opposite. Look at how smooth Jet is, and then Chase. Well, I think is because like, Jet, <laughs> you know Jet does I mean? take like, it to another level, and then Chase is better than Eli, and then you know, so Chase yeah, is in the middle between Jet. I felt and Eli. like yeah. Chase was getting like so much of the criticism that he's not smooth, and he's you know making fundamental yeah. errors and stuff like that. And it's like I think he's still doing a lot of the yeah, same things he was doing guy, last right. year. I know, you know. So like, I think when Stu talks about that on the broadcast, and Stu's done a great job, but it's obvious to me, in my opinion, yeah, he doesn't like Chase Sexton or. Whatever. Yeah. Maybe doesn't like is too strong of a word, but it's not sh it's not shy to maybe not be cheering for Chase Sexton, and so then the public is going to run with that. Probably. You know? yeah, yeah. There's probably a little there's, bit there's of that. There's some of that. Sure. I, I really believe that. Uh, all right, we got a phone call on one from Jake. Jake, what's up, man? You went to Iron Man? No, I didn't go, but I. Okay. You were saying it was kind of a so-so race. I wanted to ask you because you rode Jets Jets bike. Well, it wasn't. Did so, I didn't say so so race. It just sort of played out like other races this summer is what I meant. Right, right. Yeah. There wasn't a big excitement. Right. But um, did you see the start on the second moto? You know, because se the second moto is one I didn't watch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you got to see the start because Jet flinches, and when he takes off, he's like a bike length behind. Mm -hmm. And I'm going like I'm watching on TV. I go, oh shit, here we go. Yeah. And you know, I'm watching this bike just rocket to the front from like a full length bike behind and that doesn't happen too often i'm sitting there going hmm. wait a minute mathis and keeper rode that bike and he said it's not a rocket ship but no, it sure acts like a rocket ship yeah it's really not but i think their electronics is really something special you know what i mean yeah they must have something you know, on the start mode or something yeah because that bike just i mean he was literally he was at least three quarters of a bike length did behind you notice this? yeah i did yeah. and i forget um, someone said it this weekend one of the racers said that jet has like a start technique where he uses um, like the back of his boot really well to get off a shift um, like faster, I guess, or quicker than everybody else. So I think that transition period from, I'm assuming they're starting in second, going into third before the first corner, he does that more efficiently based on the information that I heard. I didn't look at, at it, review it yet or whatever, but um, I, that might be why, like he gets just, a, you know, extra 10 feet on those guys sometimes when it looks like. But Kellen, you saw, you saw where like him and Anderson flinched. Yeah, yeah, no question. Right. And Anderson right. hit the and gate, then, and yeah, they were well back. Yeah, and I mean, he was—I was like literally going, "Oh, well, maybe he's not undefeated." Yeah, you know, right. And then all of a sudden, he was in like second in the in the turn, and I'm going for a bike that's not a rocket ship. There's something going on there. I it's think like he's also had to be. he's also really good at late on the brakes and kind of squeezing into those areas too. Um, probably, right. Probably a little like underrated in that that he's like a really good late breaker. Uh, even coming down hills or into corners, like he's really efficient. Yeah, so I think that probably helps. Rolls through the turns, man. Yeah, just really. Yeah, because I noticed, like you said earlier, it's like he's he's really really aggressive those first couple corners, mm -hmm. right? So he goes in really hard, but you still got to have the power to you know to to get ahead of those other bikes. It was just you know I'm just sitting there. I replayed mm -hmm. it like three times. Going, you gotta be <laughs> I'll tell you what, How his bike his bike is vet friendly, man. <laughs> really is. It's, really? Uh, it is. It's it's powerful, but comes on smooth. Doesn't pull your arms out. I mean, I rode factory bikes before that are just super hard hitting and they're pulling your arms out, and they're no fun. And Jet's bike is right. is the opposite of that. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm sitting there. I'm like a mental pretzel because I'm going yeah, in. Yeah. And Mathis and Kiefer said this bike's mellow. Yeah. And here it is making up like a full bike length on everybody on this. It wasn't a real long start at Ironman either, is mm. it? All right, I'll I'll, uh, I'll take a look at that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm keen to look too. Yeah, thanks for the call, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, guys, have a good one. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. OGO Power Sports, Kellen. Are you, are you traveling with an OGO these days? 
Uh, yeah, I have a 9800, but I don't, I don't travel with it much. But you're not pulling a Kiefer. I'm not pulling a Kiefer. No, checking the bag. But right I might it. have to take it to the to Europe with me. So we'll see. Okay. Uh, uh Europe. Where are you going? Destinations? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's I'm part of the Airbnb clan that oh, you are? Weege was talking about that we're all staying in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, OGO Power Sports, please use the code PULP15 when you check out to save at OGO Power Sports. Whether it's a carry-on bag, whether it's a layover bag, whether it's a 9800, the rig bag, they'll help you out. The, black, the backpack, the traveling backpacks are fantastic, laptop sleeves, and everything else uh, to carry all of your junk. And I just came back from England and uh, used my OGO uh, there and back. Even had to check a bag as well. So please check out OGO Power Sports. Use the code PULP15. We know traveling sucks, but at least OGO makes it a little easier. Uh, before we get to our next guest, September 2nd and 3rd this weekend, the Double Down Grand National uh, Flat Track Race season finale is at the legendary Springfield Mile uh, in Springfield, Illinois. Coming down to uh, one point between Jared Mees and Dallas Daniels. Jared's on the on the Indian. Dallas is a Yamaha rider. Mees is going for his ninth GNC title uh, to tie Scotty Parker for all time. And, uh, yeah, come witness the most iconic, biggest flat track race in the world. Get your tickets at springfield-mile.com. Save 10 bucks by uh, buying your tickets in advance. So really cool event. This is a legendary one with the big mile. And, uh, man, we have the, uh, the series points leader around by one point. On the line, brought to you by Ogio, Jared Mees. What's up, man? How are you? What's happening? I'm doing well. How are you? We're good. Thank you for uh, the time tonight. Appreciate it. So, um, yeah, one point, dude. One point. <laughs> I know. It's tight, ain't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, are you – okay, so, again, I'm not an AFT expert, so maybe anybody's going to yell at me. I'm gonna, I, might, I might ask you some dumb questions here, Mees, just like I did with Beach, you know, a while back and all that. But are you good at the miles? Like, are you? how do you feel at the miles? I feel good. Uh, the miles have been um, kind of more for my forte the last, uh, I don't know, five or six years of my career. Mm-hmm. So, um, no, I, actually, you know, if there's a if there's a racetrack that I had to, like, handpick. Um, oh, really? Which one okay. I, I would, I'd want to come into. <laughs> Springfield would be for sure towards the top. Might yeah, not be yeah. number one, but, right. man, really close <laughs> to the top, you know? Yeah. Uh, double header, though, too, though. That probably takes a lot out of you. I don't know. How, how's it two, two in a row? different days uh, it's not it's not too bad the miles actually are um <clears throat> like more mental mental strenuous than they are physically for the most part sure. so yeah physically wise two-day races um it's the ones that are uh like a saturday night race saturday, saturday night race and then the sunday morning races they're a, lo- they're a little bit tougher you know less sleep and stuff but right. all in all it'll be that physically wise it'd be no big deal how fast are you getting up to on the miles we average probably 120, 110, Jeez. and uh, and uh, top top speeds 130, 140. Damn! So you feel good though. You're up one by one. So um, yeah. So uh, Dallas Daniels Yamaha rider. You of course have been on the Indian. Um, yeah. How, how's the defi- How's the the you know a big thing with flat track? And we talked to you last time you were on. You were telling us how that some of the Yamahas have gained a little bit. Now I understand some rules have changed a little bit. Uh, Jim Hawley was talking about how the Indians have a little bit more than the other brands. Like, where are we at with manufacturers right now and motor packages and all that? Oh, man, you really want to get into it? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, yeah, uh, I don't want to cause any problems with the AFT guys, but, you know. Yeah, so a couple years ago, uh, last year they restricted the Indian. When I say restricted, they put like a, a a square washer, you know, square edge washer, I should say, in the intake manifold, taking them from like a 38 down to a 34. Mm-hmm. And then we have a cap on, on RPMs. And we have a cap on uh, on our rear wheel weight, which I know sounds like it's crazy, but in flat track, having a heavy rear wheel with like more rotating mass of inertia is uh, pretty critical in flat track, or it could be a pretty big advantage in some areas. Mm-hmm. So they did that because the Indian was a purpose-built motorcycle for flat track or yeah. like say like the Yamaha and the KTM and some of the other brands are, are an engine that is taken out of a street bike. So yeah. they wanted to try to balance the street bike engines and long story short, like it's, it's a little crazy and it's hard for people to like comprehend, like, you know, probably like yourself, like, man, okay. And, Yep. The Indians, the Indian has to stop at a 750 cc, where the production engines are allowed to go all the way up to a 900 cc's. So it's a little bit crazy, but anyway, um, the Indian's still restricted, and um, but we we found some stuff through the off season, and then uh, start of the season they gave us back one millimeter 
larger of a restrictor. So we were at a 34 last okay. year on the miles, and now we're at a 35. Not really a big gain, to be honest with you. But right. um, it was something, you know, we were we were definitely complaining about it because last year we were uh, we were down a lot compared to uh, some of the others for sure. Do you have a lot of miles tracks on the schedule? I don't even know. Like, there's obviously there's yeah. like Sacramento, I think, so, right, is one. But yeah. yeah, yep, yep, yep. We had three so far this year. Okay. How'd you do with them? Won them all. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. Well, we got this thing on lock then. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no way, no way. Yeah, no, I'm not saying that. But, yeah, but you are, yeah, you're good at the miles. That's cool. Hey, yeah, so you're, yeah. you're actually, again, springfield-mile.com. Save 10 bucks by buying your ticket in advance. Do double header, uh, one point up. Now you're actually you uh, you promote this event, right? Or you're co promoter of this event? Yeah, I'm the sole promoter. My wife and I we took yeah. it over last year was our first one, and unfortunately last year we um, we got one in, and then the the second day got rained out. So as a promoter, that's like the worst thing you want to see, right? Is the yeah, rain? But yeah, no, absolutely. We promote uh, we promote the Springfield Mile, and we also promote one uh, the last Saturday in June, which is another pretty big legendary event, the Lima Half Mile. Okay. Um, but Springfield's like the mecca, man. It's like Springfield's like our Daytona 500. It's like right. I don't. I've asked this before, but I was always like, man, if you're a Supercross guy, like, what is the number one race you want to win? And yeah, and seems like half of the, yeah. Every, uh, yeah, but half of them always said Daytona. Like, I remember asking Zach Osborne and a few of the guys at the Baker's Factory one time, and they're like, oh yeah, Daytona, Daytona, Daytona. Nah, we were we were right around Daytona, but they yeah, were like, yeah. oh, if I could win one, it'd be Daytona, it'd be Daytona. I was thinking A1 too, but right. anyway, so so Springfield Mile is like our A1, say, even though it's the end of the year, or whatever. But it's like you know, yeah, it's the mecca. So. As a promoter, like, uh, do you, I mean, obviously your wife and you have good people working with you, but you you got to focus on this championship. Is that a lot, or like, how how does that go for you? Or do you tell people, leave me alone? I don't care about passes. I don't care about parking. I got a race to win. Yeah, I mean, uh, I never promoted the last race of the year going for the championship. <laughs> um, you know, in years past or whatever, I've been really good at uh, you know. Wearing, wearing the promoter hat all the way up until the morning of the race and then taking it off. And I got a good, fr- I got a couple good friends of mine, some ex racers and stuff. Okay. Um, that's, uh, that, that takes like, you know, my job. And then my, my wife, Nicole was like a rock. She really does awesome with like a lot of the ticketing and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So I got a lot of really good people, close friends, some relatives that come in and stuff and, you know, really, uh, really do a good job and helping me with it. Without them, it would be really yeah. tough and stressful, but I just kind of try to put the racer hat back on to come race day and do my job and, yeah, I peek up in the stands and see if there's some people up in there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> House ticket sales, oh, that's good. Yeah. Um, well, like David Bailey back in the day promoted a national uh, accident. Him and his dad did, his stepdad, and he won. And then, of course, everyone's like, wow, it's his home track. He rides it all the time. <laughs> it was a real no-win no thing for David Bailey back in the day. Like, and, and so I can imagine, obviously, you're not like you're riding the Springfield Mile, but – yeah, you're the promoter, man. Like people are gonna be like, ah, me's, you know. So yeah, there's lots, lots going on for you. Yeah, for sure. No, it's uh, it's way more stressful. I will say, as being like a racer versus a promoter. Yeah. Ten times more stressful being the promoter than it is the racer. I get, I promise you. Like, there's just so much going on to be a promoter versus the racer. Racer's easy. It's just like you just show up and yeah, you know, put the work in and you race. But being a promoter, it's a lot, of, a lot of things run through the mind. That's for sure. How important is the heat races and stuff like that? Like, like obviously, look, you, you start staggered, so you want to, you know, be in the in the in the running, uh, right? You do, right? I believe. The heat no, race. we don't oh. start. We don't start staggered, but we only have four on, uh, on each yeah, line. Yeah, I guess that's what I meant, right? You you, you got to get you got to get in the top four in the heat. Uh, how many people land on the box or win from outside the top row? Again, uh, maybe a, a dumb bit. question. Okay, so yeah, not a dumb question. Yeah, quite a question. bit, actually. Yeah, no, not a, not, a, not a dumb question. Quite a bit, actually. Um, you know, there's only four per row, so, mm-hmm. you, you know, obviously if you get, I, I'm going to say, like, the better start off the, the second row, you're going to go in fifth place at least, you know, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then sometimes you could pick one more guy off. So, And then actually on the miles, out of all the places that you, like, don't need a good start, it's the miles. The, mile, the miles sure. are all about drafting, especially Springfield, because, like, the corners are so big and wide that mm-hmm. you could roll through there from, you know, you could enter the turn one and seventh and come out in the lead if you roll it good, good enough, you know what I mean? Like, it's the draft's a big effect, so sure. it's not, uh, the TTs are the biggest key of getting a good start. 
Right. Like you, you, you got to be on the front row on a TT. Got to do it right. That that that's what I do like about the flat track stuff. Is you guys have you know you have one track with a little jump in it. You got the short tracks. You got the miles. It's like Kellen. Like if motocross series had like, hey, uh, uh, well, we, I mean, deep sand. And then another track that was like super short with yeah. like wooden jumps, you know, like you know <laughs> what I mean, jump. like just so, so, just so different variations yeah. than moto, you yeah. know. Like, yeah. I like that, yeah. So yeah, our uh, our surfaces are a lot different from one of the other two, like sure, uh, like yeah. Lima, like I was talking about. That's like a horse track, mm-hmm. literally loamy sand. We call it cushion, and then um, like Springfield. Even though Springfield is considered a hard track, uh, or, or, sorry, a um, uh, horse track. It's more of a clay base, so more like a sprint car style. Like it lays usually a pretty good black groove on it. So um, we race on a lot of different surfaces too that really change up. You know, flat track from one race to the other. I mean, Moto does too, right? But yeah. you know, flat track's pretty good about it too. Is it similar then? I guess in flat track, like like to Moto, where we say, oh, certain riders are really good on sand and certain riders are really good on hard pack. Like flat track is the same thing. Like you guys almost know, oh, that guy's gonna be really good on this track this weekend. Yeah, hundred percent. More or less back and like further back in the day, but yeah, there's definitely you know back in the day it was like oh you know the Canadians were really really good at cushions like the horse tracks mm-hmm. because it was just like leave your brains in the toolbox, grab a handful of the throttle and go right. And yeah. uh, the clay tracks were more like finesse, keep the wheels in line, like be smooth and keep you know what I mean, like mm-hmm. get your get your corners right. And like I said, like cushion was just wide open pin it to go right interesting again springfield-mile.com save money get your tickets uh by the way uh jared we had jd on a little while ago and he sent me some mission tortilla so no pressure but he sent me some, he sent me a mission care uh, package okay so just, I, man i do owe you one from a year ago you're right you, i just i just kind of saying like i'm my buddy my buddy brought that up and goes man he's gonna bust on you about your mission not, not yeah i'm gonna hook you up I'm all right yeah, how, many bags did, how many bags did he give you two bags Nah, man, I'm going to give you three, man. And, oh. and tortillas and salsa, sir, Ooh. so keep it going. Um, All right. No, it's a great sponsor, Mission Guys. I mean, they just <laughs> – I love it. We can't get our, we can't get shit in our, in our motor world outside of, like, industry stuff and energy drinks. Like, having yeah. Mission Tortillas is great, you know? Yeah, they came on big. They're, they're just a huge race fan. They, they sponsor IndyCar stuff. They sponsor yeah. road racing. Um, actually, we have – Every one of our races has what they call the Mission Suit Dash for Cash. Yeah. And it's a four lap, four or five laps. Heck, I feel bad not even knowing. Four or five laps, $5,000 winner take all. Mm-hmm. So nice. every race. Yeah, that's, so that's awesome. pretty cool. Yeah, oh. it's really awesome. Helps us out. I mean, it's, you, it's a good one. You, uh, you got along with this Daniels guy, this kid? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's, man, he's, uh, he's a great, great rider, great kid. Um, Obviously, I want to beat him, and yeah. you know, there's the there's the winner's animosity. But no, he's uh, he's yeah. the future of the sport, man. Like, there's can't really say too much good about him, other than <laughs> I'm coming to kick your ass this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't I don't want to put any pressure on you, Mies, either. But like, so this is this is a, to tie Scotty Parker, and like again, I'm not like a huge flat track guy, like I you know I'm not. But Scott Parker is a legend. You know what I mean? I mean, everybody knows Scott Parker. Dude, you're gonna tie him. I didn't even know that till till I was doing my research on this thing. I'm like, holy shit! Like I knew you had won a bunch and you were the guy. I get it, but I didn't know you were going to tie Scott Parker, man. Yeah, man. That's. Uh, I mean, you know, as a kid, and you you, you know, everybody yeah. dreams, right? Everybody dreams like they want to be the best in the sport. They want to be. They want to be. You know, Jeremy McGrath or Ricky Carmichael, right? And for us as a flat track guy, it was you know I want to be Scotty Parker. And yeah. It's uh, it's really awesome to be able to be in the position to to you know do something that he did and yeah. you know like I said he's he's the guy he's the great you know greatest of all time and it's so, uh, like I said there's nothing really I can I can say any more about it you know it's a great position to be in. So do you want to keep going and break them? Like do you have any retirement plans or are you are you going? Are you? <laughs> I'm going. I'm okay. going. Yeah, yeah. So who knows? right now, right now I'm going. But you know what, dude? I you never know. I could I could stand up there on Sunday holding the ninth plate and say I'm done. I don't know. You never know. You know? <laughs> uh, I don't, let me dig your into your history a little bit of flat track and may and I should have maybe t- texted you and told you this, but maybe because maybe you don't know. But uh, also fl- following flat track back in the day with Scott Parker and uh, and Springsteen and uh, Bubba Schobert and all these guys, Ricky Graham. Uh, he's passed away a number of years ago now, but like he was would would Ricky Graham be the equivalent of like. Um, 
I almost want to say like Ron Lachine and Moto. Maybe that's even dating you a little bit, Jared. But like a guy that was uber talented, could win any time, and probably didn't win as much as his talent would indicate. Is Ricky Graham that guy in flat track? Mm, I mean, Ricky Graham. Who, I mean, I, I mean, in your guys' opinion, who, who's the most talented motocross, supercross guy that ever came down the pipeline? Wow, that's a great question. I guess James Stewart. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Okay, then yeah. then that's Ricky Graham. Okay. Wow. All right. Maybe doesn't have doesn't have the all time best right. records. You know what I mean? Like yeah, Scotty yeah. Parker. Right. But I think in everybody's prime, you know what I mean? Fastest lap, best year ever, everybody's prime. I mean, it's pretty hard not to argue that Ricky I mean, Ricky won twelve races that year six in a row like mm-hmm. that record still holds and uh i mean you know yeah you know scotty did it nine times which is you know like like carmichael he was able to repeat it he's the greatest yeah, yeah. all time don't get yeah. me wrong but like you know ricky was you know ricky put it together and you know there was no one else that came close that year so hard to it's hard to argue that you know ricky's not the james stewart Right, and, uh, That's and right. I agree with you on the James Stewart thing. I think James is, you know, most talented guy ever for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hey, we just had uh, Jet Lawrence call in uh, the show. Hunter Lawrence as well. Uh, um, a surprise call in there. Uh, what'd you make of Jet going undefeated, dude? Wow, <sighs> man, very impressive. I mean, I think every. I, I don't know. I kind of, I kind of felt like he was going to do it from the start of the year, especially after like the Nations and stuff last yeah, year. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, would it be a surprise if he doesn't Supercross? I mean, if yeah, it I think Supercross, so. it would be a surprise. <laughs> but man, it's definitely being talked about, or at least being thought yeah. about, right? Well, Wygant likes to say he's just on face for infinity. Yeah, I'm not a win because it just yeah, he's never lost yet, you know. So yeah, yeah, no, very impressive, especially to do it as rookie year. You know, that's right. That's that's crazy. That's uh, good. So we had Beach on JD on a little while ago, and he motos on a YZ450. Uh, if you follow him on social media, you can see that. Do you get out on moto at all? Yeah, yeah, a lot. I ride a 450 Honda. Yeah, okay, all yeah. right. And, uh, yeah, well, how do you feel on the moto track? Good. Yeah, yeah, I get around all right. I mean, have you seen us flat track guys go around motocross? You'd be like, yeah, all right. I mean, we go all right. <laughs> but, like, I mean, I don't know. I mean, people say we go good, but then when I show up and I'm, I'm around, like, uh, uh, a few moto guys, you know what I mean, that actually, you yeah. know, line up for gates and maybe not even make the gate, you know, like um, – we we don't even come close. Like I'm uh I'm good buddies with Tony Larusso. I know I brought okay. him up before. Like yeah. me and him are pretty tight, and I train with him in the uh, the winter times. We get we link up and do a lot of riding. Uh-huh. So I'm a little bit off his pace, but I'm like in a moto that's maybe a minute and ten second lap. I might be three seconds off. Okay, that's good. Two, two, three seconds oh, that's off. good. Larusso still four, hauls ass. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I go all right. I mean, but Tony Tony goes good. Yeah, he does, dude. He's an he's a he's a hammerhead for sure. No, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so okay, uh, like in America, and again, maybe a dumb question. So let me let I'm going to preface that. Uh, like in America, the American Road Race Series is good, and those guys are great. But they would love to get to MotoGP in Europe and dominate there. And there's more money there, more prestige, all of that. Is it the same thing? Like you know, obviously the in Poland and England, there's the massive flat track world championships. Uh, is that a goal? Like, or do those guys make more money? Uh, would you go there? Is there any kind of goal to go there? I don't even know. Again, maybe the series sucks, but I always thought that the World Speedway stuff is is where you want to go. Now, World Speedway and flat track, two totally different animals. Like, okay, I would I would feel more comfortable riding a motocross bike, really, than I than I would trying to race a speedway bike. Oh, how come? Why? Man, it's just they have no brakes at all. Right. <laughs> the way the bike, like, like you look at us flat trackers, you're like, yeah, you're sliding sideways, whatever. But them guys, like, we slide sideways. But to be very, very honest with you, you really don't want to be sideways. You want to try to keep the wheels aligned as best as you can. Obviously, mm-hmm. you slide, you kick it out a little bit to turn yeah. and, yeah. you know, whatever. But Speedway guys, they, like, flick it sideways on purpose. Like, they're trying to go sideways. Okay. Um, the whole feel of it's different. Like the way you let off the gas and then grab the handful of gas to get it to turn. It's just like, I mean, it's, it's kind of a bad example, but it's almost like 
riding a jet ski and the only way to get a jet ski to turn is by nailing the throttle. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of the same way in okay. Speedway, like, if, if that makes any sense. Sure, yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah. but anyway, to answer your question, though, like, American Flat Track, where we're at, mm-hmm. everybody that has anything to do with Flat Track wants to be where we're at. Like, the Twins Racing Series is the cream of the crop, the highest. Yep. yep profile flat track there is no there is no like uh you know world flat track or nothing like right. this is, this is it they do have some flat track championships kind of popping up here and there but they're mainly on like the 450s that are just lowered down putting 19 inch wheels on them but now american flat do, tracks the the the, the, the do greatest the, do the speedway the guys market. make more money than you guys because it's that's big but i don't know do you don't do you even know uh i don't I don't. I maybe. I mean, there's some flat track guys that do pretty good. I don't really know exactly what okay. they make. I mean, yeah. I, I think I was good buddies with Jason Crump, um, and I want to say, you know, I asked him before, and I want to say that they make like what, four or five hundred euro. Okay, does that sound about right? I don't, I don't even. I have no I, idea. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't even. Know. You know what? You know what? I would bet that they probably do. There's probably more. Speedway guys making a better living than there is overall flat track guys. Sure, yeah. Um, yeah. But they race, man. They race like the Poland series, and then they got the German series, and they're racing <laughs> like Wednesday, then Friday, then Sunday. Like it's a little bit uh, chaotic. I think their series. I mean, they race probably triple the amount of times that we do. Yeah. So if you, I'm sure you add up all the purse monies and the bonuses and stuff. I'm sure they do better than most of the flat track guys. Yeah. Jared Meese on the Pulp Mech Show brought to you by OGO Power Sports. Again, springfield-mile.com. Save 10 bucks by uh, getting your tickets in advance. One point. Jared's up on uh, on Dallas Daniels and Springfield Mile. Double header this weekend. How is advanced ticket sales, by the way, Meese? How are we looking? Do you know? I mean, yeah, good, good. good. Uh, this week's always um, this week's always picks up good, especially when that weather starts to look good. And right. so far, we are looking good for weather-wise, so the phone's been ringing, ringing nice. pretty set, pretty steady. So good for us. Yeah, that's real good. Uh, <laughs> I what's couldn't your... paint a better picture for sure. You know, yeah. tight, tight points battle, good, good, uh, good weather. So last race of the year. Yeah, so that's uh, great. Fails, then I don't know what else to do. <laughs> so looking at the point standings, it's been basically you and Dallas Daniels, our guy JD Beach, third, but he's you know some eighty points back. And as when he was on the show a few weeks back, he kind of said he was out of it. You know what I mean? Um, you guys have really, really dominated this year. So, like, even if you win this weekend, uh, Dallas Daniels sounds like he's going to be right there. So, oh yeah, I yeah. mean, it's been like that all year, really. Right. I mean, he uh, Dallas started off strong in uh, Daytona and uh, carried it through the year. I mean, he would have basically been on the podium every race this year so far. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was one mishap. There was, <laughs> it's not funny, but there was this huge rock boulder that like rolled out on the racetrack and he hit it with like two laps to go and fell down running second um and then they relined us back up and he got back up to fifth so honestly man he probably should have been on the podium um but he fell and that allowed yeah. me to get on the podium but hey you know he he podiumed every race but one so far this year and i podiumed every race but three so it's been tight yeah what, uh, ha- what, ha- what happened to you at uh at uh arizona that fell oh Sixth. Yep, fell. Yep, fell down. Fell down now uh, with a lap to go. Two oh, lap, wow. One lap to go. Lost, yeah, front, uh, front break went out. Lost it. Sixth place. Yeah. Me, Mies and so. Daniels, Kellen, is like Sexton Lawrence. <laughs> like it's kind of the same thing. Just going at it. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, actually looking at these results, though, um, you know, like you said, you're really good on the miles, uh, but it looks like he was pretty good on some of the short tracks is that more like rider preference at those tracks or is that even more like the motorcycles are even better at those tracks one versus the other uh, yeah dallas is pretty good overall I, you know i think the tt's i think that the tt's the uh the yamaha is stronger than the indian um for a few reasons and then i think the half miles i still think the indian is stronger than the the, the yamaha on the half miles, so I guess it plays both ways. There's more, there's more half miles on the on the circuit than there is TT. So, I guess if you have to pick your poison, I I would, you know, be strong, want to be strong on the half miles. So, half miles have been good this year to me. Um, you know, in the miles, so you know, between winning uh, a good share of the half miles this year and all the miles, I think we got eight wins. So it's it's been good. Bike's been good to me. Okay, so I just kind of went back a little bit, Kellen. I did I did my research okay. here. This is Daniel's kid. 
2021, he wins the singles class. Okay. Then, so that's his, that's his like up and coming. Then 2022, like Jarrett said, Jarrett wins again. Daniels gets third in the points. And now here we are, 2023. So like Dallas Daniels is Chase Sexton <laughs> and Mies is Tomac. Okay. Mies is trying to hang yeah. on, yeah. you know, get it done with veteran savvy. And <laughs> Daniels is the kid coming up. It, it's very true because he's also like, I might retire or I might have another deal. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Did we just capture this series right, Jared? Did we just capture Yeah, yeah, you, you nailed it. Yeah, he actually – uh, Dallas, actually, Dallas actually won, yeah, 2020 – I think 2020 and 2021 on the singles. Okay. And then last year was his rookie year. He had a, he had a great rookie year. He won a couple couple races. Yeah. Uh, he did really well. And then this year, I mean, I, mean, I knew he was going to be mm-hmm. – you know the guy, you know one of the guys, I should say. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> so far, uh, he has been. He, I mean, so far, not so far. I mean, whether he chokes I mean, this weekend or wins it, he he was the guy this year. You know, the beat. Yeah, I mean, da- I mean, he is Blue Crew, Mies. You know, <laughs> I mean, he is Blue Crew. You know. So, um, hey, uh, by the way, uh, when I should know this, uh, Jared, is this? I'm trying to do my. Is this Friday, Saturday, or Saturday, Sunday? Saturday, Sunday. Okay, all right. I couldn't do the dates real quick in my head. <laughs> I was trying to think of how many days there were in August. Oh, okay. And I was like, okay. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were looking at the calendar and you couldn't figure it out. I don't know. I, that's what I'm asking you, but you know it's Saturday, Sunday, so that's good enough. <laughs> that, that's fine. Yeah, that yeah. Uh, Springfield mile.com for tickets. Save 10 bucks. It'll be good. I had some, uh, when I put this on my social, uh, talking about this, I had some people being like, it's the, what's one of the best races of the year, Mathis? I'll see you there. <laughs> and I was like, uh, I'm not going, but but yeah, people were stoked. Like I got some DMs about people that were stoked about this race. They said it's awesome. Cool. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. And they're right. I mean, this is definitely the race that you want to come watch. It's a cool race to watch. Yep. Um, well, cool, man. Thanks for uh thanks for the time. Thanks for the update. Uh you know, we had J D on a little while ago. We just had you I mean, maybe we'll have to start doing a little more flat track stuff. Seriously. I like it. I watch it, especially when Weege was calling the action. My buddy Weech, right? He was the voice for a couple of years there. He was the man. Yeah, we, we miss him. He was awesome. Yeah, I, I always used to tune in because then I would watch the race and then pick apart his things he says. <laughs> and, then, and then I would ask him. And there not there like um, a husband-wife team, right, that race? Uh, yeah, Briar, Briar and Shana. Yep. yep, yep. So then I was getting into that and like, oh, that's you know that's unique and that's cool. And Weege was my, uh, my guru for the AFT series. So I need to start watching it again a little more and then get more of you guys on. So that would be yeah, cool. That'd be cool, man. I appreciate it. You guys are gnarly. Like it's it's. I <laughs> yeah. talked I talked about it with when JD was on. It's uh it's nuts, man. You guys have some serious cojones, and it takes a lot of skill to do that. So, um yeah. Good luck this weekend. No pressure, but you're trying to tie the all time great. So no pressure. Yep. Yeah. Well, hey, thanks a lot, man. I really appreciate the time, and uh, see you at Springfield. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good, Jared. See you, man. See ya. All right, see ya. That's Jared Mees, everybody. Get some tickets while you can. Renthal.com, bringing you our next guest from Monster Energy Kawasaki, Adam Scene Cirillo. Uh, AFT, it's cool stuff. Yeah. It is cool. Yeah, like I said uh, to you, I think, before the show, I've only ever been to one flat track race, and it is nuts how fast they go in person. Like, yeah. you know, he says yeah. 130, 140, and you're like, yeah, I could see. That's pretty fast. And then you, you go there and you see yeah. them going into these corners at that speed, and you're like, Holy smokes, they're going fast. Yeah. No, I went to Daytona uh, years ago. Um, oh, by the way, we met. Uh, I met a, a woman in England. Shoots photos. She said that, that oh, the Vietnam Vic story, she's played it to just strangers who know nothing about motocross. She's just like, you got to watch this YouTube clip. Like, you got to watch this. <laughs> nothing to do with motocross, but like she said, it's great. Yeah. So then I introduced her to Kiefer, and then Kiefer did that voice. And she about died. <laughs> yeah, she was getting like her her favorite story ever. The guy was in front of her. So, oh man, yeah, it's great. You guys are like a traveling boy band or something. <laughs> yeah, man. It's yeah, like yeah. people are so excited. Uh, Renthal, a fraction of a second, a few grams, a couple of millimeters. It all counts. Welcome to the winning world of Renthal. Renthal Works Fit Tool on board with us. Renthal's all new inventory locator on for the USA only. And whether it's sprockets, bars, chains, grips, whatever it is, Renthal has you covered. Uh, chances are, if you've race, raced or ridden. Uh, on motorcycle, you've used something from Renthal because they've been around forever and they make great stuff. Bringing you our next guest, friend of the show, Adam Cine Cirillo. What's up, AC? Fat bar, baby. That's yeah, all I have to fat, say. Your fat bar life Shot. again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of flex. Uh, a lot of flex. <laughs> we need that for our poor little arms. We need it. 
Um, <laughs> oh, whoa. whoa. Jesus, come on, what? Steve. I'm, just, I'm, I'm coming out Steve. of the gate hot. I mean, <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> listen, dude, I'm listen. hanging up. Yeah. Timmy's, Timmy's wrist was bothering him one time. The fucking guy made me put on like 14 pairs of pro tapers to try to hurt, help this wrist out. And I'm like, dude, I don't think it's oh. the bar, man. So I've tried, I've tried every different <laughs> bar and every different grip you could possibly imagine. I, I, I finally settled on full waffle. Yeah, you got to do full waffle for the alpine absorption, for sure. Uh, by the way, speaking of Renthal, I'll ask Kellen this. So this year is the third time Renthal has swept every championship in the U.S. Yeah. What are the other years? Well, I I, I kind of can cheat because I listen to the review show. Ah, oh, shit, yeah. Do you want me to answer anyway? Or? Do you think Adam knows? You could try. He's no, a student of the sport. I don't know. What? I don't know. No, I'm not. I'm not that. You I'm are a student, it. but yeah, I'm but not. Yeah, it. right, right. 1993 with McGrath, Bashan, Gaddis, Larocco, Kudrowski, Henry, and 1991 with Bale, Kudrowski, uh, McGrath, and Swink. They swept, and then of course this year Lawrence Brothers. Mm-hmm. They swept every single title and Sexton too uh, this year. Yeah. So yeah, Renthal's done it three times. They swept every every single title. Uh, uh, I'm just stoked that I'm just stoked that Joe uh, saved the Cowie streak, dude. That was, that was a big one. <laughs> I I said that on our review pod. I said that was the biggest thing from the weekend, and Weege and JT were not really happy with me. I'm like, because I did not think I thought that streak was going to end. You know what I mean? Joe's a great rider, but. You look at the guys that had motivation to win. Hunter's been the best guy all year. Cooper's on it. Deegan's been the fastest shit. Like, just I didn't see Joe doing it, but good job, Joe. Yeah. He's got the speed, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's- yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's really good. The few times I – well, we rode together. We actually stayed in an Airbnb, yeah, Airbnb Michigan? together when we were in Michigan yeah. there for a few weeks. Yeah, and it was, uh, you know, it's kind of a smaller – Nick's track is kind of a turn track, mm-hmm. so maybe a little bit more suited to 250 in, in certain sections. But some days, like even if he would not have a great weekend, he'd come out there on a Tuesday, and I saw – like you just know – you know the pace, and, you know, I know when I'm going fast, and there was a couple times where – I was really having a tough time staying on his wheel, so I, I I know he's got a lot in the tank when he's comfortable. Yeah, obviously, no. uh, it seems like too he's getting more comfy in his skin and the English language and everything, right? Yeah, man, it's got. I had a lot of respect for that, man. People, I don't think, especially us Americans, you know, we think the world revolves around us all the time, but um, yeah, man, that's hard to come over here and learn a new culture, a new language, and. Yeah, he seems like he's. Uh, yeah. I think he's going to do some good things. Listen, I was just in the UK. I I, I do adapt too. You know, it was tough <laughs> driving on the wrong side how of the road. Was, and stuff. How was that, dude? It's good. I can see a future for you there. You <laughs> I know? talked to I talked to RV today. He said he had a great time. Oh, he dude. He was the he was the ambassador of the event. Like he obviously didn't race this year. He called me today too. And obviously I didn't pick up. I was like, I don't have time for this. Cause he's just going to tell me how great he, he was and the event was, but, um, he was signing everything, taking photos, laughing, slapping guys on the back. Dude. He was all time this weekend. He was like the ultimate, like happy RV ambassador RV. And then at one point he walked up to the promoters and he started talking about how we are going to make more money at this. <laughs> he was already the promoter, AC. <laughs> no way. Yeah. yeah, I mean, when he when he told me about it today, he was like beaming ear to ear. Yes, so yeah. I, I yes. figured, I figured he was on rare form. He brought he brought uh, uh, jerseys, uh, his own race jerseys over, signed them, and he brought and he he got to sell them at the and everybody who bought one got a signature from him. So like you know he was just Rish. yeah he was just making money. Signing babies, he said, you know all of it. He said he said four to five beers a night. Is that low? No, I think that's about right. He yeah. he um he was carrying around like a solo cup at one point during the day, which could mean anything. Uh, but I did hang with him in the beer tent on Saturday night for a little bit. Yeah, he dude, he was. He was unbelievably happy all weekend. He loves the UK vintage racing. <laughs> oh shit, asshole! 
Uh, RV's got that personality too. Is like when when he's happy, you can't help but be happy. No, he's just one yeah. of those guys. Yeah, he's, we we made a plan there too. We're going to start a political podcast, him and I. Oh boy! Oh, yeah, that's yeah. perfect. <laughs> oh, that's great. I'm sure you guys. I'm sure you guys see eye to eye there. Yeah, for oh, sure. uh, like like right at lockstep, him and I, lockstep <laughs> together. Yeah, absolutely. Good job. I would subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> he. Uh, yeah, he didn't want to race because he he's just like those guys take it too seriously. And dude, they do. I don't know if you watched Searle's videos or anything on, on dude. They're sending it on thirty year old two strokes. Like it's a little much. So yeah, he when I asked him because I assumed he went over there to race. And I asked him and he was like, "Yeah, dude. Like these guys were on the bike like three months before. It's just it's just not worth it for me. I'm just, <laughs> no way. <laughs> no, I don't. Bl- I don't blame him because." There were a lot of bike failures too, like Kiefer's throttle stuck. One guy's steering stem broke. Oh no! Yeah, like I, I just love that RV is going across the country just to hang out. Like yeah, that is yeah. awesome, right? I, yeah. I would have told you, I would have bet so much money that when he hung it up, he was going to be the richest redneck in Washington State, and we'd never see him again. You know, like, yeah. but nope, yeah. nope. He's a man of the I people. I know. Sometimes now. I see him. Sometimes I see him out at the track. You know, it'd be like a random Thursday. It's like four o'clock, and he's just standing on a dusty track at Glen Helen. And I'm like, this guy could be anywhere in the world <laughs> right now. Yeah. Doing anything he wanted. And he's right back to the same. You know. Yeah. So we all have in our blood. We had a live Papa Beck show on Saturday night, and so Kiefer and I are up there on a stage, maybe in front of three, four, five hundred people. And uh, we're talking about the race. We call RV up, you know, we talk to him, you know, he, he, he's his usual self. And then I'm like, okay, man, thanks for coming up. And he goes, oh, that's it. <laughs> and I go, yeah, I mean, I just want to keep him for 10 minutes, 20 minutes or whatever. And he goes, no, I'm staying. And I'm like, all right, man. <laughs> no way. Yeah. So he just, the three of us just co-hosted the rest of the show. That was great. It was fantastic. So. Oh man. Yeah. If you would have told me this in like 2012, 2013. Yeah. Yeah, I would no have slapped, slapped the shit out of you. <laughs> uh, how's the podcast going? Yeah, good. Shit. Well, my co-host, Shane, who yep. also his company, Converge Media, runs my social media uh-huh. now. So he's kind of the brains behind the operation. He just had a baby this summer, so okay. we went on a little bit of a hiatus. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I have been working a little bit here, so I um, haven't had the time. But I did, we did just do another one, just a short one after Iron Man. Like, I oh, okay. I just stopped at his hotel and we, we did it. It wasn't, we normally put him up on YouTube and film, kind of how, how you do. But yep. this operation that we, we had was very low budget. And, and so we just kept it, we just kept it on the, uh, the streaming platforms. I was going to say, I thought I saw one from you. That's why I asked because it came to mind, but that was the Iron Man update. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't listen to it? Weech told me he liked it, which always makes me stoked. He's oh, awesome. that's nice. Yeah, I, I did not listen to it. I try not to listen to too many moto podcasts just because I'm doing my thing, right? And I, don't, I get it. I, I get don't want to take other ideas or whatever from people or, or subconsciously take other ideas. You can ideas. take mine. You can take mine. <laughs> I mean, honestly, out of anybody, I probably would take yours. Um because I do text you every now and then with like some theories or questions. Like you're a guy that I can yeah. like, I can be like, hey man, I was thinking this rider was thinking that or doing this, and you're like, no. And I'm like, okay, no, nope. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not, right? Yeah, I always like when you text me too because I can feel like a media guy for like 15 minutes. I can put myself in that. I, I like trying to be as objective as I can mm-hmm. with, with information within the sport. It's kind of fun for me. Right. Put on a different hat. Yeah, Adam, I listened to uh, your the plugged in podcast that you did for Iron Man, and you were talking in that oh, one. You did listen? I did. Yeah. Fuck, Kellen. And then you were talking in that about how uh, I think as you said when you got knocked out of Geneva, and how when you first came into the sport, you oh, you were trying like really hard, like you put a lot of pressure on yourself, and you felt like maybe looking back, you like were r- trying too hard, I guess. And I'm curious yeah. your take on this because we see this kind of like revolving door of like more or less highly touted amateurs fizzling out as they get to pros now. And they're trying to solve it yeah. with like combines and, you know, supercross futures and help bridge right. that gap. But I'm, I'm, you said as well that like lately you've, you've kind of taken like a different mental page out of yourself to, you know, try to enjoy more things and almost reset a little bit. And looking right. back on that time, do you think it would benefit some of these 250 teams to almost like have a mental coach or something like that as part of their programs to help these 
amateur kids when they they turn pro that like not everything needs to be as as high stress as you were well i think it, it's all about it's all about how you're raised right and um you know i i think for me i just didn't have I didn't have a lot of, I guess, emotional tools to work with. You know, I kind of lived and I, and for the most part, like I was about it, you know, I, I went all in really, really, really young. And, you know, it, it seemed like a job to me at like 10, even though I still liked it, you know, I, I wanted to be the best. So I was down for it. It wasn't necessarily the work that got to me. It was kind of, I guess, um, I guess the environment and, you know, when you're in that environment, kind of a hostile environment as a kid, you can start to, you know, obviously you've heard the stories with, you know, it's, it's not just motocross. It's just, um, you know, burnout is prevalent in every sport and, and there's a reason why. And it's just a lack of balance. You know, I just didn't really have any balance in my life. And, I put everything on racing like that was who I was and I didn't really have anybody else to tell me otherwise. So that's the kind of thing that kind of trans, you know, as you get older and you, you those things are kind of adopted into how you are. It's not like they just go away as you get older and smarter. It's, um, you know, it requires work to kind of reverse some of the ways of, of thinking and be like, you know, I, I can, you know, I can, I can fail at this or, you know, I can get fifth place or, you know, not reach my goals. And like, I'm still an okay dude. Like I'm, I still, uh, you know, have like, I still have value. Like I'm still a decent person. It's not, you know, it's not an attack on who I am. And, you know, when you're going to the gate every weekend, you know, feeling like I said in the podcast, like you have a gun in your head, like this is everything. Yeah. It, you know, it, you start to hate it. And like, I always, I always, you know, I always tell people like, I should have been a burnout. Like I should have quit. Like there was a, there was a lot of times, you know, 13, 14, 15 years old where I was like, I don't think I can do another day. This Like I really don't, but I wanted, I wanted to be a pro and I wanted it. I had, you know, I was a determined guy, stubborn guy. And I wanted it so bad that I, that I pushed through that stuff. And you know, basically, you know, kind of where I'm at now is a lot of the, you know, a lot of that stuff from childhood has affected my, my racing, but also just my quality of life. So that's kind of these last couple of years for me is just really getting to the bottom of that, really just rewiring my brain. And, um, I guess going back to your original point, I think it's just all about, you know, kids having balance. Like it's not necessarily the work, it's the relationship with the work in their minds. Mm -hmm. But you don't think that, like, even having, you know, someone to springboard ideas off of more so, and you don't feel like you have to go to the team for it, it's more just they're there for you as, hey, like, this is what I'm feeling, and then that person can tell you, okay, let's work through those things together instead of, For you know, sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think any type of mental work like that is, you know, obviously there's a, there's a stigma around stuff like, therapy and even even throw on even it's scary to say you even have a sports psychologist because that somehow implies that you're weak and right. not you know it's it's just like working out a muscle in the gym and you know i certainly wish i had somebody to bounce stuff off of like that when i was you know with the resources and kind of you know the emotional intelligence to, to help me through that so i definitely would advocate for for really any type of um you know exercising your mind you know is you know, as a kid, for sure. I uh, I love Eric Pernard. I've known him forever. And your injury in Geneva, I mean, he's had Stu Bale on him to, for a race in Australia. He had Stu Bale on him for the last main event in Paris one year. Weston Pike's injury, you know, also really bad. I don't know if I've seen Eric Pernard as disappointed or as mad, not, not mad, disappointed and sad as when you hit the wall in Geneva. Because – I think it was like Mitch didn't want you to go, but it was a lot of arm twisting and we'll take care of him. We'll make sure it's good. And then you go and do that. And Eric was on suicide watch. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a tough, that was, that was, yeah, that was a tough one for me for sure. Yeah. But, yep. You know, a lot of bad things in life turn into beautiful things in the future, as they say. So, yeah, I, uh, you know, it's all just experience at the end of the day. Speaking of beautiful things, SMX, like, 
Are you – so we were talking about this on our review pod. It's been a long year. You added three races to it. I love how Feld is like, it's actually only one extra race because there's one less national, and then there's the Monster Cup. And I'm like, yeah, no one cared about the Monster Cup. No one really took it that seriously. So it's not quite the hey, same. No, yeah, we hey, wait wrote, a minute. We all what? rode – yeah, we did like two days of riding before that race. Yeah. But I AC is day. the forever Monster Cup champion now because it's not coming back. Yeah, good point. Never Thank thought you. Of that. Thank you, Kellen. But, okay, so – we were talking about this on our review show. Are the riders more excited for the for the money or for just the chance to keep racing? Like, what's what's driving these guys, and and yourself included, to get up for these three extra races, two motos a night, blah blah blah. Well, uh, I mean, I think I I like my job a lot. I like riding dirt bikes. Mm-hmm. I love competing. Yep. Um. And I just take a lot of pride in just like doing my job. So this is, you know, these races are a part of my job. And so I'm motivated to do them and I'm motivated to do my best. I, I don't think I really look at it from, I can't say like, I'm really, you know, excited to potentially, and this is going to sound terrible, but I'm not overly excited to make, you know, the money. Like it's, Mm -hmm. it's not something that's at the forefront of my mind. And I think obviously a lot of the, really top guys that have a bunch of money in the bank. I don't think they're really thinking about that either. Um, I think more so I I'm just excited and kind of motivated for it because it's new and different. Yeah. And anytime you slap the word playoffs on something as a fan of mainstream sports, <laughs> like just kind of, kind of cool to be a part of. And um, I, I think I'm just stoked to have something different. Like it's not, you know, you're not going to a supercross race. You're not going to a motocross race. You're somehow going to both. Yeah, so, but Adam, there's, I think there's just the the unknown is kind of exciting. Sure, I get that, but Adam, it can't be playoffs. No one's eliminated. <laughs> like no one, everyone keeps racing. I don't know. There, isn't there isn't there like a last chance qualifier or something that? Well, yeah, but so, there, which would imply that there are some people eliminated. No, he got you there. Stop he it. just got you right no, there. No, <laughs> that is not. When when Wygant is yelling about playoffs every fucking five minutes. Playoffs? Playoffs. When Wygant's yelling about fucking playoffs, <laughs> he's he's indicating the top riders, and this is the playoffs. And it's not, because Adam Cien Cirillo is not eliminated after Charlotte or Chicago. He's going to be there at all three. He's going to get points at all three. There's no elimination. It's ridiculous. <laughs> It's ridiculous. Like I get what they're talking. Now you're just being. Now you're just being cynical, Steve. Well, I yes, that, that I am. I am very cynical. Absolutely. So you are right about no, that. I feel you. But I'm like actually, people you know, would surprise. I think some. I have some cynical bones in my body too. So I always. Yeah, I just <laughs> I like feel you. stop it, why again? I keep yelling at him. Like first of all, <laughs> are you getting paid a dollar every time you say playoffs? Because fuck me, you say playoffs a hundred times a broadcast. Two. It's in the production meetings, man. Oh, I know. Uh, two. Uh, they kept talking all year long about this LCQ. The top 30 are getting in. The top 30 are getting in. And they got to make it. And who's going to make it? And what's going to make it? And who needs points? And oh, my God. And and then they're just fucking taken because of injuries. Like Kay Clayson got in today. He's 38th in points. <laughs> but they need guys. They need guys. No way. Yeah, because they need riders. Because guys are hurt or not racing or whatever. Like Benny Bloss. <laughs> you know, he's beta. He's not racing. So, like... All this fucking shit about the fucking they cutoff. We need bodies, dude. <laughs> yeah, we just need bodies. So, like, all this stuff about the, you know, in the, in the 250 class, J Moss not going, oh Enzo's not God. going, you know, Thrasher. uh, Thrasher's not going. So, like, you know, we, we hyped up this fucking cutoff, but it's like, ah, fuck it. Everyone's in. You know, what's interesting is I, I talked I talk to Weege about this today. People, yeah, I was going right. to say, I th- we think that, so Eli is starting this championship in ninth, I think it is. Yeah. And Jet is starting the 250 championship in 10th. Yeah. We think they get, like, their preset points, which means that they're not going to race at all, and they might end up in a position to, like, make money based on where they yeah, finish in the championship. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's The whole thing is just... Like, look, I got, I'm cynical. AC nailed it. He's right. I'm cynical. But... <laughs> Like, just give me a break on all of this. <laughs> no, I, I understand what you're saying, but I will say, I, I will tell you what they're playing on is people. People just generally want to believe in something entertaining, so they're, they're not <laughs> going. They're not like you and I, where they need logic to back that up. It's like well, 
just tell me it's the playoffs, man. And people are like, yeah, I'm down. Like, hey. I'm into that. People don't do the digging. We don't care. Adam, this... I just watched it. Have you ever seen the movie The Big Short? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just watched right. that the other day for like the 20th time. Right. It's a perfect example. It's just like we really don't give a shit. Okay, Adam. Well, Santa's coming in December. All right? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Santa will be there. Okay? Um, no, listen. And also, I want to ask you, uh, how does this stuff get paid out? Like there's two 20-minute motos. Are they paid off like a, like a triple crown or a heat race? They're not paid like a main. <laughs> How are we doing this? So I feel like we're getting into some dangerous territory for you right now, Steve. How's your blood pressure? Why? No, what, what do you mean? I'm fine. <laughs> I'm just wondering. Like, like nobody seems to know what the hell's going on. So I'm wondering. I don't know, man. I literally have no idea. I just see this <laughs> graphic posted on social media like you, man, and they tell me to show up on a certain day. Okay. Most of the time, most of the time, if you want to be honest, I go to the airport. I have the I have the my boarding pass on my phone. I don't even know where I'm going. <laughs> I, just, I just I just go. I just go and land wherever. What's the per diem situation for these SMX races? Damn it! What's Cowie giving you? No, I don't know. I just all right. Yeah, I, I, I really have no clue. Okay, I, I <laughs> because everyone's contracts were done. Like a lot, not everyone's, but a lot of contracts were done before SMX, and then so I'm just wondering how they're I'm, deciding all this. You know, yeah. How is have we heard anything? Is is Webb going to be able to race? He's racing. Yeah, yeah he's he's, in. he'll be on a Yamaha, on a Star Yamaha Sick. at Charlotte. Yeah, so he'll be there. Sick. Yeah. So the number two. He was good last time we raced Charlotte. Oh yeah, 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 yeah MSGP. Yeah. Hurlings. Yeah, the, that was dope. Uh, speaking of hurlings, I was going to, when we divided, when we talked about your podcast, I meant to bring this up. Who do you want to get as guests? Like who, who's your, who's your guest list? What are you doing? Where are we at? Oh, man. I haven't really had much time to think this year. I feel like, I mean, I think naturally I, um, you know, Ricky Fowler would be cool to get on. I think it's a, that's probably the biggest name that I think I could, I could, I could swing yeah. at some point. Yeah. Um, Ricardo, I think I could probably get him on at some point as well. Ooh, that yeah, that he likes. I don't know. Ricardo, I guess yeah. I need to go through my contact list. Okay. See what names pop out, but I mean, I, how... I really don't know. I, I really this this whole deal this whole deal is just me. I just show up and I start talking. I don't write down <laughs> talking points. I don't. We don't talk before. It's just mm. I show up in a hotel room and there's a camera and mics and I'm just like, yeah, let's do it. No, you should write some stuff down. <laughs> Yeah, but right now, like right now for me, obviously it's it's just not high on the priority list. Like sometimes I'm doing these the Friday before the race, so it's more so if if it takes up just like just like with the vlog stuff now, I I don't have to deal with any of that kind of thing, you know. So as as long as it doesn't take up enough space for me, like it doesn't take up enough time, then um, you know I can I can justify it to myself because how, I, I know I'm all in. Okay, how far down did you get with rejections before you had to get Blair on? <laughs> he was the first guy I had. First guy I had in mind. He's what? first guy I had in mind. That, that was a good one. You didn't listen to it? No. That's right. No, I, I didn't. That's tough. I, I mean, that's I, very tough. Have you listened to any of mine? Yeah, absolutely. I listened to the first two. How I, did I lose you? No, you were good. I gave you some notes after the first one, remember? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I gave you some notes. Uh, no, like I said, I don't listen to Moto Podcast. Yeah, uh, uh, Stu, I get it. Stu, it's uh, not really a Moto Podcast. It's not true. Uh, it was not full Moto Podcast. Uh, Stu, I'm way behind on Stu. I probably, uh, I don't want to say how many times <laughs> I listen to Stu. I like it. Stu's good. Yeah. But I just, yeah. Well, especially because we all have like our rotations of podcasts. And yeah, we cram another. Yeah, one I mean, there. I listen to hockey podcasts yeah. and and, and yep, uh, yep. comedy interviews and 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 um, baseball podcasts. Listen, man, it's yeah. fine. You yeah. don't need to look. You're good. You're, you're, you're no excuses necessary. I wanted to ask you, AC, as now that you've stepped into doing these podcasts and as a sort of host of it, you have like this responsibility of asking questions of the guests that you bring on. Um, you're a fan of all sorts of sports, and so you see media and all other sports and how it's handled there. Um, now that you're seeing it from kind of like, I guess, our side a little bit, like what do you think of how the media in this sport is handled? Like do oh you boy. think there's, there, there, there's stuff that we miss oh, a lot of that we should boy. be better at or things like that, I guess? I don't, don't want to hear his answer. I do want to hear his answer. I don't. I'm gonna, I don't want to hear this. <laughs> Oof. Oof. Oh, man. Oof. The list um, is too long. Uh, no, well, it's not – you know, I think 
I really do. I'll, I'll be genuine here. I really do think we do. I think you guys do a good job. Like for for the landscape of the sport and and just the culture and how everything is, I feel like we are progressing well. I think because it's such a small sport, a lot of the time you guys are afraid to piss us off. And, you know, there's just been times like when you know, like well, we've all known Chase is going to KTM for like over a year now, right? Like that stuff doesn't, like nobody's going to ask Chase that in the press conference after, you know, Houston Supercross or something, you know, even though they know yeah, they're not going to ask. Well, but do, do because, you, are you critical of that? Because I don't agree with – we shouldn't ask. We shouldn't put them on the spot because our sport's I don't weird. Know. Well, I mean, if we're – I just think if we're trying to make – like, yeah, maybe ethically. I, I, ethically, I don't agree with – you know, obviously I don't agree with that. But it just kind of the – and I can't really say – I don't know. It's tough because – mainstream i guess if the bar is mainstream sports journalism i mean it's it's not exactly something great to shoot for like we're just in you know it's a bunch of you turn on espn in the morning it's, it's just who can talk the loudest right. a bunch of hot, yeah yeah it's just a bunch of hot takes about nothing like there's a few guys like jj reddick or jalen rose that actually have some um you know some good takes but for the most part it's just a bunch of shit yeah I so agree. i don't know i think i would like I would just like, I guess I would like there to be a little bit more separation there where we could, I don't know, I think you guys can be a little bit more critical of us sometimes. Well, and, and that noted, would be, noted. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that. I'm just being honest with you. I mean, it's, I, yeah, yeah, I just but think. Adam, I, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, I, I agree with you, and, and, and I like to think when I started in the media game, I looked around and I saw a bunch of guys that were buddies with the riders that took photos. That's what they did. They took photos and they were all friends with the riders. And I was like, wait, yeah. I, this is stupid. Like, you should be able to tell somebody this guy's underperforming. This guy's, you know, you should be able to say that. And I like to right. think that I brought that into the media, in the Moto Media. Yeah, because for sure. You've added a lot. I, and I, well, just early on, like, I was pretty harsh and I, add, and I brought a different edge to the media early on. But, uh, you know, and I'm still that way to an extent. But yeah, Adam, like myself, like the thing with Jody Weisel is he got away with it a lot, but he didn't go to the races, right? If you go to yeah. the races and yeah. you walk through the pit. I get it. Yeah. The, who wants to have like, and, I, and, and listen, I've got the thickest skin out there because like, you know, I've had this with so many riders and managers yeah. over the year, but it's not fun to have people hate you at the races or not talk to you. Well, yeah. And that's what I'm saying. That's why I, I, yeah started what I was saying with, I really think that we've done you, that you guys have done a good job for like what the sport is. Yeah. You know, I guess I, this is just, this is not really, you know, this is just me living in a dream world, like yeah. thinking like how exactly I'd want it to be. Right. Like I, I totally understand that. And you know, we all have a lot of respect for each other in the industry and you know, you don't want to, yeah. It's you know, just, you don't you don't need to be fighting those babies. You know, it wouldn't be good for anybody if you're just blowing people out just to blow dude, them out. It's, you know, it's I just tough. Yeah. I, I just I just um there's just like some information like just like free agency stuff and yeah. like if we could be a little bit more transparent about that without people getting so bothered well, by it or it you know, like I, that kind of stuff. And maybe. I would ask and I would ask this of the riders and teams. I would love for me to say, hey, Adam, uh, uh, how'd your Ironman go? And you'd be like, well, you know, I, I'm still battling my uh, my arms a little bit, but uh, we made some gains out there. I felt really it's well. It's arm, man. Arm, Look, hold battling on. my arm. Oh, okay, wait, arm, wait, dude. wait, wait. Like, I'm battling my arm. But you know what? Honestly, I didn't think my tires were good today. Like, I thought, <laughs> like, no, no, I, I would like you to say, like, you know what? We missed the mark on our bike today. You guys, and I don't mean you specifically, Adam, the racers, like in MotoGP, they say it, right? In NASCAR, yeah. hey, we didn't have the power today out there uh, on the car. They, these, these athletes say it, and you guys, because of repercussions, not because you're scared to, but because this is the, the quote-unquote. No, I feel like a lot of people do, but it's, the, it's, the more, it's like the very established guys that are getting 2.5, like no matter what they say, basically. Those are the guys that are critical. Yeah, but even Chase, even Chase, we know his feelings on his bike at times, and Chase will be like, "Yeah, just you know, fighting the bike a little bit." Yeah. Well, okay, but I want it, Chase. I want it like, 
what did you try yeah, during I testing and wh- why didn't you? So I, I think that sometimes, um, you know, here's a perfect example too, Adam. I just talked to Jose Butron, who's a good dude, by the way. He's awesome. I talked to him at, in Spuds Creek. And he t- I said, hey, man, you're almost out of this SMX thing. Like, you want to go? He's like, oh, yeah, I need, uh, I need 10 points. I'm going to go. There's no whoops. I'm looking forward to it. I'm really going to push hard, blah, blah, blah. So I reported that after Bud's Creek, right? Weech, yeah. Weech talks to him Friday of Iron Man. He's like, we're not going. We're never going to go. We were never going to go. Lorenzo is getting his shoulder fixed, and the team will be back next summer or whatever. And I'm just like, <laughs> like <laughs> I talked to Boutron. He told me he was going, and we just like, I just talked to him on Friday, and he's not going. And it's like sometimes like our our unprofessionalism in our sport, and I don't mean to hold Boutron to the flames here. He's, no, 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 I get it. It's just you unfortunately, know, it's just a yeah. Joke and like we we in the media were just like, oh my god, you know what I mean? Like what 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 can you do? Like and again, it's just things like that. So I I I do like the fact that like. I can talk to you. Like I can't text LeBron James if I cover the Lakers. Yeah. Do you know totally. what I mean? I can't text uh, uh Well, it's it's know. it's a small sport and it's it's honestly probably always going to be obviously more of a niche sport like it is. Yeah. And the industry will probably always be this way. I think we just have to evolve as and I think it naturally will as yeah. generations filter yeah. through. You know, I think it'll evolve I in mean, a dude, you know, a healthier, more balanced way as everything does. What blows me away is like F one Kellen, you're more of a fan than I am. But yeah. in F1, when a driver signs with a new team for the next year, I mean, he talks about it all year long. Yeah, but the, like, yeah. like, like it's not a problem. I think the <laughs> difference, though, is is, and it's like always the elephant in the room is unions. Though they have a drivers' Grand Prix association. There's yeah. a Formula One association. Like, right. there's ways to subvert like contract talks and stuff like that because it's cleared. As like, hey, no, we should put this out there because yeah. it's better for the greater good. It is better, yeah. So, but the, the, how are you going to do that here? Because then they'd be like, you breach contract, and you were not yeah. in a union. No, no. The, the number one thing that people, I not, maybe not the number one thing, but Adam, my listeners and my readers, they love silly season gossip. They fucking love it. And oh yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, so it's I great. And right, I'm in it. Right, right. And you're in it. <laughs> um, so like I, why not just keep talking about it? You know, like I, I, and, I'm, and honestly, I couldn't agree more. I've been talking about Chase the KTM for a year, just not with Chase, but on the show, because I don't care. It doesn't matter. I know it's happening, and we've known it's happening. So I Everybody just talk has, about it, yeah. right? So I just talk about it, but I don't want to put Chase in a weird spot. No, no totally, I understand that. But, that's that's just that's just ethical. But, like. but I will say this: I think part of why what I, I just got, I just kind of thought of the answer to my question, is. You can't buy an F1 car. You can't buy a NASCAR. But you can buy a Kawasaki, and you can buy a Honda. And these manufacturers are racing. Why? To drive sales. How do they drive sales? By Adam Adam C. Cirillo do well on a Cowie. So if he starts talking about another competing brand that sells motorcycles alongside Cowie, then that's why they get all butthurt. Yeah, that but makes it, sense. I think, in yeah, Formula yeah, One, though, I, they, I, they're trying to sell Mercedes. They're yeah, trying to but, sell Ferraris. Like, I know, but not the same. It's not the same, but right. they are I still think a lot of. I think a lot of what we do for the brand, too, is marketing. You know, I think that's overlooked. Yeah. Like, yep, as yep. much as it is about – much, as, much as, as much as it is about selling motorcycles, I think it's more – um, it's kind of like a brand reputation, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, you're way. right. Yeah, for sure. And then, you know, Adam, the, the, the Kawasaki looks at it like if you came out and told me, man, we're just down on power. Our electronics package isn't as good. Uh, it's all could be true. But then marketing is going to go, well, now the customer is going to go, well, I don't want to yeah. buy a Cowie, um, even though it has nothing to do with it. Adam yeah, even though you could put them on a you could put on a 125 and they wouldn't be able to touch that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, even though Adam Cincerello's bike is about as far as from a production Cali yeah. 450 as you can get, they look like it. They act, you know, all of that. Um, people go like, well, I don't want to buy Cali. Adam yeah. Cincerello says it's no good. I mean, look what it's so, got Dylan this year. Nick, he said a lot of things he didn't like about the bike and is not going back there. Do you think least. that's it, though? Do you think that's it? I mean, I feel like it's yeah. part of it. I feel yeah. like it, he being f- as frustrated as he's been mm-hmm. has created like this atmosphere of animosity a little bit. Right. You know what I mean? Like, well, I, I got a question for you guys. How how far out do you think we are on a riders' union? Ah, oh, 40 years. <laughs> More than that. Yeah, we'll be. I'll be dead. 
I'll be dead. <laughs> yeah, me um, too, probably. It, it's been tried. Not even a union. Yeah, How about an association? Don't use the word union because yeah. that's, yeah, that's a, that's I, a big I thing. Yeah, I agree 100%. Right. It's got to have some more language. And it, it's got to start – it's got to start around safety, like how kind of Trey was trying to do that, yeah. with kind of be the buffer between the riders mm-hmm. and the yep. um, the track builders. It, it has to start with a with a base in safety more so than yeah. those types of contract things and um, and all that. But yeah, it's a podcast for a different time, I guess. Do you want to take some phone calls from listeners? Yeah, sure. All right, let's do this. Uh, Lucio is on two. Uh, go ahead, Lucio. What's your question for AC? What's going on, guys? My question is, AC, coming into the new basketball season, where do you see the West? And just give me your top three. Who's finishing where in the top three in the West in the NBA this year? I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I have been really, like, you know, the last couple of years I've had a fair amount of time on my hands, and this year not so much. So I'm not as versed on – um, on the talent pool in the NBA and like what's uh, I, I do I love Clay Thompson I, I'm not a big Warriors guy but I love Clay Thompson so I hope the Warriors have like one last decent push in them I think they're probably done so that'd be great um, it's going to be really hard to beat Denver um, yeah, Phoenix, Lakers. Phoenix, I'm not sure yeah. about. I'm not sure about the Lakers anymore. I think they're a little bit too old. But Phoenix, uh, I'm just bummed out because LeBron raised ticket prices so much. I can't even go sit in the. I can't uh, even go sit in the nosebleeds, man. Thank, Damn. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve, for naming the the the, the one elephant in the room. Thank you. Yeah. No. Listen, the, it's the Suns, man. They got Durant. They got uh, what's his nuts? Yeah, but um, I don't know how much okay. Durant wants it, man. I don't know how much he wants it. Okay. Like I don't think he's got that dog anymore. <laughs> but, I would but love to be you. wrong. I would love my, to be wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My next question is, and I'll, I'm going to take it off air, but I'll let uh, you, Kellen, and Steve uh, talk about it. But I've been watching since 08, 07, 08, and Cowie dominated for a long time. Suzuki had its run. It looked like the Austrian brand had its run. Yamaha had its run. And now Honda – took everything. Where do you see this Beta, Triumph, Ducati brand? Will they ever have a run like these Japanese and Austrian manufacturers did? Thank you. Thanks, Thanks AC. Appreciate Good night. Uh, I, I just mean, want to hear the motocross stuff. Yeah, I think, right? I don't know. It's too, some early, point. too early to tell. Yeah, yeah, too early to tell. We don't really know the scope of we don't really know the scope of how into it they are. Yeah. You know, like how, how yeah. deep they are in this and like yeah. And listen, I love Beta. I just had we just had uh, Carlin Gardner, the manager, on last week on the show. But you can see by hiring Benny Bloss and Colt Nichols, no offense to them, they're not going balls deep in year one or year two. They're just not. <laughs> like you can see that. Like what? What are you laughing at? Uh, no, oh. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> oh, like balls deep? <laughs> yeah, I guess I, maybe that's maybe that's it's the way. Yeah, is that unprofessional? Funny. I don't know. But no, like, no. I can't figure out why nobody wants to sponsor my show. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, you know, if, if, if Beta was, you know, where – if Beta wants to be put on the level of Honda and Cowie and et cetera. Well, they're just trying to feel it out. I know. Let, give them some Come time. on. I, I know, but I'm just a caller asked. And I'm like, well, this is their, their, med- their short-term goal, you can see, is not going balls deep. <laughs> So. Yeah, I think we need. I think we need to reassess in like three, four years, and we'll yeah. have a decent idea. Listen, li- little red dog is triumph. So that, that's that's all I need to hear to know how serious they are. Dope. Yeah. Dope. Uh, Kenny's on three. Kenny, what's your question for Adam Cincirillo? Yeah, I have a couple questions for um, for one for Steve and one for Adam. First one being going back to the press conferences, like how we're talking about. Um, it seems like most of the main media guys are not in the press conferences. What needs to change so that we can get the better questions, the better insight, you know, because, you know, the speed sport people, the local news people, they don't really know what's going on with the sport, and it yeah. seems to be a, a weakness for, for the press conferences. Yeah, Kenny, there are lots of talks about this between uh, Feld and and MX Sports and the media, the main media guys like myself, Michael Lindsay, Swap Moto, Kellen, you know, Weege, all these guys. We've had a few conversations about this, and I don't really know. Like, I don't go to them because I can just watch them, 
right? Like so. I, I will say this. Okay. I, I will say that sometimes, actually, the media that has no idea what's going on end up accidentally asking hard hitting questions that I find refreshing. There you go. Mm. Yeah. So there is that, uh, Kenny. But we're just yeah. I mean, we can't be at two places at once, and sometimes we want to go be talking. To, sometimes the story is in the pits, you know. And we and we but we saw this with the Lawrence brothers this year where they kind of didn't want to do interviews outside the press conference. So the media was sort of forced if they want to hear Jet and Hunter's recaps to, to sit in the press conference or, or ask some questions because that's the only time you're going to ask some questions. Yeah. So they were trying to change the game a little bit. I don't know if it worked or not by not doing the separate interviews. I mean, Adam, how many times have you told the exact same story to myself, Kellen, Michael Lindsay, you know, and uh, Michael Antonovich, right? This, uh, you know, like, yeah, yeah. But, but I don't mind. You no, I know. Cool. No, I know. I get it. Like, that's what – when I hear that from OEMs, I'm like – I understand the writers saying the same thing. Here's the smallest violin to play for you. Because, <laughs> like, sorry. Like, what are we talking? Yeah. We're talking 20 minutes? 20 minutes for four interviews? Yeah. So, sorry. I, I, you know. I, I understand what they're doing in principle. You know, it's just the more things – what's the saying? The more things, um, the more things you say no to, you know, the more time you have for the – I don't know, something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kenny, what else for Adam? Uh, yeah, so kind of going back to the you know the media could be a little bit harder on the guys, things like that. What about the riders? You know, it always seems buddy buddy. You know, Chase just got the better of me tonight. Eli got the better of me. Jets just untouchable. There never seems to be any kind of antagonist, any kind of drama as far as like, yeah, I'm. You know, it seems like this year somebody should come out and just straight up say. I want to beat Jet. I think I'm better than him. Things like that. There's just no, you know, other sports you see the kind of drama between the players, things like that. You don't see that. I mean, Coop did the finger gun this year. You know, so that's kind of – Cooper Webb's kind of the exception, it seems like. But why don't you see that? Is the sport just too small? You see the same 20 guys every week, and if you did that, it would just be an all-out brawl? Or, or why is that kind of the case? Yeah, I mean, there, you don't want to make life hard on yourself. You know, the only thing you're going to accomplish by going up on the podium and saying, like, yeah, I'm coming for Jet to ask next weekend is you're just <laughs> going to make the guy, guy try harder, you know, like make, him, make it Sounds easier to, to get up in the morning, you know. Um, I think we've seen, you know, I think Webb's kind of used it to his advantage sometimes. You've seen him get the better of other guys by playing some head games, We you know. J Law and 08 had his bang on the doghouse thing, stuff like that. But for the most part, yeah, it's just a, it's a small sport, and you're going to be racing around the guy the whole year. And there's just there's really just no reason to to piss the guy off because your ego is just saying, "Look at me, look at me." You know, you just got to be smarter than that, really. And I think re- what it comes down like everybody really hates each other in the 250 class. Mm-hmm. If I'm if I'm being honest, yep. And you get to the 450 level, and you've been living that your whole life. Like, the guy next to you is 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 going to take the food off your plate, basically. You know, we're all vying for, like, three spots that, um, you know, pay you enough dollars that feels like it justifies your lifetime commitment to it, right? So that's what it – that's kind of where the animosity comes from in, you know, amateur ranks and then – in the 250 class, and then you get to a factory level 450 guy, somebody that's established, been around, made money, and you kind of look around and you realize, like, yeah, I, I wanna, I really wanna beat you, like, fuck you a little bit, but at the same time, it's like we've all kind of made it a lot further than we probably should have, you know, like this is pretty awesome, yeah. and I think a lot of respect, uh, there's a lot of respect there. Um, and I think that's probably one of the reasons why there's not so much, you know, I, I, obviously everybody's yelling at Barsha every weekend, but everybody else, uh, there's <laughs> yeah. not so much, not but, so much drama. But Barsha loves it. So he's fine with it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it just doesn't happen. Yeah. Thanks, Kenny. Well, yeah. thanks guys. I appreciate it. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Barsha just rubbing his hands together. What? What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. That's great racing. That was just great racing. <laughs> super hard. Super hard racing, man. This year? <laughs> Yeah, this year. Uh, Rental.com <laughs> bringing you Adam Cien Cirillo. Next call, the two-stroke guy, Matt Burkeen. What's up, oh. Burkeen? What's up, buddy? Oh, how's it going, boys? I didn't know you were going to put me on with AC. I thought I was going to be my own shit show. Uh, no, yeah, we can put you on with AC. Yeah, why not? AC's a man of the people. What up? Yeah. 
Hey, AC's a good guy, man. He just let me use a clip from his vlog for the tube. How's it going, AC? Yeah, Appreciate that's you. That's nice. That's nice. <laughs> Oh, I got you, man. I, I like the two-stroke thing you're doing. Um, oh, I appreciate sick. it, dude. I like the thing you're doing. I'm a fan. <laughs> what up, Burkeen? What else? Oh, not a lot. I was honestly just calling to see if uh, if I'm now um, the most pulp cursed rider in history. I was just curious. Dude, you might be in the running. We need to do a little story on the pulp Mix helmet sticker <laughs> slash pulp curse. His crash was filthy. This weekend, you know, I went to I went to dinner with three guys this this year, and I've recapped it uh, at Oakland. Went out with Phil; he broke his wrist. Uh, went out with A Ray, and before Tampa, he broke his hand. Uh, went out with Benny before uh, I don't know, and then Benny weeded himself and put himself out for the year. Uh, but Burkeen, AC, so I had Burkeen on my pod about halfway through the year, and I made a point a couple of times on the Privateer pod saying, "Dude." You're on a two-stroke. You're not even riding the LCQs. You're getting right into the motos. Like, you're awesome. You're doing a great job because it's you're on a two-stroke. Like, fuck. Like, national yeah. track. <laughs> and then since that pod, AC, the dude hasn't made one set of motos. Uh, no, no. no to be fair, I made, I made Red Bud, but then I had a bike problem, and then we've been DNQ life ever since. It's been tough. <laughs> Was that pod before Red Bud? Yeah, the pod was right before Red Bud. So okay. ever since we've done the pod, it ain't been one good thing. Dude, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Well, we got to reverse it. Yeah. yeah, damn right. Unfortunately, we didn't quite make it into SMX. And uh, <laughs> I think they were actually waiting to announce the MXON team uh, just to wait and see if I made it in on Saturday. So I guess they can go Costa ahead and get Rico, that Costa maybe. Yeah, Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Yeah, there oh we go. God. <laughs> some, Costa Rica. Some um, Rico. Some I, Rico. Gee, I thought just pretend that didn't happen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> good God. Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, Burkeen, like the way they're going for SMX, stay by the phone, man, because they're just going down and down and down. So, you know. Yeah, I don't think I don't think zero points quite <laughs> makes the cut. But I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, I, what I, that's what I was going to say is that he might have a chance. No, no. I don't know with the uh, with the dang pulp curse. I'm thinking I might just need to stay on the couch for a predetermined amount of time. I don't I think, think I can so. do any right anymore. Yeah, I think you're right. Actually, oh. Burkina, I had an idea for a, a pay per view. You and the Flying Taco, like arena cross race. Oh, I'm into it. Okay, Adam. That'd be great, Adam. Do you know who this Flying Taco guy is? No, I don't. He's from North Carolina. He is an arena cross. He probably makes half the arena cross mains, Burkina, if that. And he brings he brings the heat. It's not even like the kicker series that I think he should be known for. Although he did that was kind of last year, but he's cut his teeth at like Asheville and all those local ones that you've seen my Instagram reels of. He'll go out there and get in fights and take people out and just yeah. He, he brings the action, man. It's yeah, great. he's Phil's buddy, and which makes a lot of sense. Uh, <laughs> he's Phil's buddy, and uh, he's a he's a he's a legend of arena cross. So yeah, you and you and the Flying Taco Burkeen. I'm into it. Let's do it. Okay. I'll, I'll make it happen. Sorry about the curse. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> no, it's all good. Hey, I didn't mean to interrupt you guys. No, you're good. Great man and uh, good show. I just wanted to I wanted to see if anybody had been cursed worse than me. I've been getting so many comments about it lately. I yeah. just have to know. We got we to gotta work this out. I, yeah. Like I said, the, the, the actual injured riders from having dinner with me on Fridays may top you. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, my goodness. goodness. Yeah. Good. Adam, we've had dinner before, but I think it's been okay. I don't think nothing's happened as far as I know. No, let's just stop talking about this stuff, Okay, man. all right. Good. <laughs> I'm all right. out. Thanks, Burkeen. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you. Also, uh, AC, last week on the show, uh, Alex Ray announced that he's quitting and then said that maybe the happiest guy might be you because, uh, you know, he lined up next to you with a flat tire. He uh, had to use your goggles for a moto. Man, he's insecure. I'm always like stoked on him. Okay. I I told him he was awesome for leaving the gate with the front flat. <laughs> like that's the, that's the most core stuff I've ever seen. Okay. You know, I'm a I'm a big A Ray fan. He he's always thinking that I think he's a hack because he borrowed some goggles and left the gate with the well, front yeah, flat. He's but just... really, I'm the <laughs> hero. He's just worried about you. Think he's like. You know, a little bit of a loose program. <laughs> no, dude. Run it. Okay. Whatever works. All right. Uh, anything else for AC? Uh, we didn't even ask about Iron Man, but whatever. Yeah, good ah, job at Iron Man. Good, uh, yeah, good I mean, I got six. Come on. Hey, I, did, I do think the second half of the outdoors was better for you. Oh, 100%. Okay. I mean, if you yeah. would have – if obviously results-wise, like, 
first couple of races, I think I got a sixth and a fifth, and I pretty much ended that way. But my riding was night and day different. Yeah. And, and also, my hand got my one hand, by the way, not arms. But mm-hmm. we don't need to be starting that. Yeah. It, it's actually it's actually gotten better. So yeah. I, yeah, I've got a lot of hope. So good. That's nice. Yeah, it's good. Uh, yeah, I think the second half went better for you. You were closer to the front and more in the fight. You know, so yeah, that's absolutely. Good. Anything else, Kellen? How's Betts? He doesn't talk to us that much anymore. Fuck. Betts is busy, man. I know. He's agent life now. He ignores our text. Yeah, it's brutal. Yeah, no and, way. And then I and I don't know, Kellen, if you made the cut for his private Instagram or not. I guess it's not. Riveting. No. So he has, you know, an Instagram for friends and family. Mm. And yeah, it's I didn't even I didn't even know about this. Oh, oh, oh. He's cut you out oh. too. Fuck my yeah, ass. That's terrible. <laughs> All right, never mind then. I'll move on. Come on, Steve. But everyone is just at a five star hotel, at a five star resort, eating sushi. Like the guy's soft. He's just <laughs> he's soft. He's just gone like big time. He's living, dude. Yeah, he's, he's living. He's just let he's the, left let us the behind. Man live. Yeah, he's left us behind. You know. I actually need to text him back. He's awesome. Yeah, he is great. But I feel like he's just yeah he's uh he's hit the big time and he's he's yeah. moving on. Good Kellen, for him. So guys for like him. you, guys like you and I, Kellen, we're we're done. Yeah, we're toast. Yep. And he's a, he's establishing a pivot foot. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right, Adam, we kept you for fifty three minutes. That was um, longer than I thought. So. Yeah, totally. This my bedtime is uh, nine o'clock, so okay. still got time. All right. Well, we'll. Uh, what are you doing? What are you doing on the off weekend? You got any plans? Just hanging with your chick, or like, what's anything? Oh uh, no, my my lady is a D one athlete, man. She's back in school in Massachusetts, so oh. I. I just bought this new house in the be or mm-hmm. uh, in the beginning of summer, and so I'm we're about to start renovating this thing. And she's at school doing her thing, and I'm just here. Just luckily, I have an interior designer because I I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> but I don't know. I'll probably do something. I've been working on the garage a little bit. Mm-hmm. Maybe play some golf. Yeah. I really have a pool. I enjoy that. That's it. Got an 80 inch flat screen. I watch stuff on that all the time. 80, huh? Oh, nice. Yeah, no, 85. <laughs> nice, nice. Good job on that one. Is it? Is it one yeah, of those? Yeah. Is it one of those uh, uh, OLEDs? It's like curved. Oh, is that is that what that yeah, is? Yeah, I think that. Yeah, it's no, living. that's not it. But that's that's a good one. Yeah, those curved ones. Are yeah, good. no, it's sick. Well, you're rich, so it's fine for you. <laughs> um, anyway. All right, Renthal.com. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Adam. Really appreciate. It. We will see you in Charlotte, buddy. All right, man. Thanks, okay. guys. See you. See you, Adam. Later. Bye. Adam seems real, everybody. Good guy. Didn't even ask him about racing. No. <laughs> I mean. I'm mean, a little bit. Yeah. I mean, he. I I just feel like it's good to ask him about uh, more, I don't know, like, I guess the word is advanced topics. Advanced topics. Like, I don't know <laughs> if that's the right word or not, but, like, I feel like he is really thoughtful with the way that he, he yeah. thinks of certain aspects of the sport. So I feel yeah. like you can kind of pick his brain on that stuff a little I bit agree. more, I guess. I agree. Absolutely. So. Uh, so thank you to Renthal for bringing us uh, Adam C. Cirillo. Uh, Race Tech rant of the night. Pulp 23 is the code to save with Race Tech. Uh, love the guys at Race Tech. The American made gold valve, of course, way back in the day. Uh, still doing big things for those guys. Uh, the gold valves provide a plush feel with drastically improved bottoming resistance, increased traction. Uh, all Race Tech products 100% guaranteed and made in the USA. And also they have uh, motors as well. Building a reliable world-class engine requires a combination of state-of-the-art equipment and experienced, knowledgeable technicians. Race Tech provides quality precision in- engine services using the best equipment and processes in the industry. If you use Race Tech for motors or suspension, tell them you listen to Pulp. They'll give you a Pulp discount. Thank you to Race Tech. Race Tech ran of the night. It's an old one, but a goodie. Bringing it back. What the fuck is wrong with Europe? Like, I know the UK isn't in Europe, but it doesn't matter whether it's Europe or the UK. Like, what is wrong with you guys? I understand. The roads are smaller, the cars are smaller, the hotels are sometimes smaller. I get that. But there's plenty of room on each side of the beds in these hotels. And they just push the two beds together. When I roll over, I don't want to see Chris Kiefer in my face. Like, <laughs> separate the fucking beds. Why are you doing this? Tyler Bowers was just, and I were just talking about it on the same thing. Like, some of the hotels I've been in that are two beds. They're too small. I've been in some beds where my OGO bag has to stand up and block the door out because the room's that small. <laughs> There's no place for an OGO bag. 
Like, that's how small some of these are. So then the beds are pushed together. I guess I get that. Still fucking weird, but I get it because the room's small. But I've stayed in, lately, I've been staying over in Europe in big rooms that have four feet on each side of the bed, and the beds are still pushed together. Why? (laughs) Who wants to do that? Who wants to sleep with your buddy that close? Hey, man, you beaten off? (laughs) Nobody does. (laughs) Nobody does. Like it, it's not. It's not cool. It's not. You know. What about anal bleaching? And you don't push them apart. You yourself? can't. You, they're, they're. Oh, they're bolted they're together? together. I guess. Yeah, you can't oh. push them. And the nice stands are on each side on the outside. Why wouldn't you? And there's room. Yeah. Stop it, Europe. Is, is the room a double room? Like you book it as yes, a, two okay. beds. Yeah, you book it two beds. You have to make sure of that in Europe. Huh. I, I do that. will never understand that. On this show years ago, when this rant first came up, we called a Radisson in Amsterdam and asked the front desk lady. She didn't know, but she giggled, I think. <laughs> uh, why Why is – why? At the, my only question is when you have the room, why? I, yeah, I don't yeah. know. I mean, to me, I've only Marks, traveled – have you ever in- seen this in Europe? I have not. No. I know Talon didn't go to Europe anytime soon. I've no. only traveled to Europe with my wife, so I, I feel yeah. like I can't comment on this because right. we always get like a obviously. I, I've been traveling whatever, for twenty so. years to Europe. It's this way, and like I said, some of the rooms are small, and you there's no room, and you just roll over, and there's your buddy's face hmm. right there. Uh, but there's plenty of room in these hotels, room on each side, and I don't fucking get it, and I never will get it. It makes no sense. Number two. <laughs> The showers. Why do they refuse in Europe to put fucking shower doors on the bathrooms? There's a shower, there's a glass door or a glass partition that covers half the bathtub. You did half the job. You just got to put, just put a track there. Just, just one more half. You go in now. You're showering. Water's everywhere. <laughs> it's all over the fucking bathroom floor because there's no fucking door on the shower. It's a half of the door. <laughs> it makes no sense. Like, just put the door with the track and you just pull it across. Hmm. What's the problem? I, I might be wrong, but I think it's because bats are more common, right? Like, they take, they take a bath, not a shower there. More often than not. I mean, wouldn't you, wouldn't you, is it 70, 30 bath people? I don't know. Right. I'm just suggesting that might be there's a reason just, why. There's, there's no reason why. <laughs> okay. There's no reason. The, in the, the UK, do they have that like pull string thing too? Do you know what I'm talking about? No. So in Italy last year, it confused, or two years ago, it confused us. In the showers, they have like a pull string yeah. from the ceiling. And uh, I didn't know what it was. But apparently some of them, not all of them, are like emergency pull strings. So if you slip and fall in the shower, it'll... Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I've never seen that. But uh, it's really... It's disturbing that time after time after time, these hotels are doing half the door and there's fucking water everywhere. (laughs) Like, okay, so when you shower, without getting into too much graphic detail, you set the shower head... To spray, I don't know, like, if you put it too close to the front, then you're, like, up against the taps and everything else, right? Like, you kind of push the shower head back a little bit. Yeah. I do. So then you shower under the water, and then you grab the soap, and And then you walk out of the water. And you walk out of the water, and you soap up. That's getting water everywhere. (laughs) Then you step back in, and there's water going everywhere. It's just, it's so dumb. I don't understand what is going on in Europe? Why don't they just make complete shower doors? It's never, it's always like this. Yeah, I don't know. I wonder if Europeans called into the show right now if they'd be dumbfounded why we have shower doors that close. You know what I mean? To not get water all over the fucking No, I know, bathroom. but I'm saying, yeah. we know that. But yeah. like, w- would they be like, oh, that's so stupid. Why do you do that? Wes, you have an opinion about these sh- uh, hotels? Wes. Hey, hey, how you doing? Good. 
Do you have an opinion about these yeah. hotels? So, uh, well, uh, to an extent, it's not so much uh, foreign nations showers, but I travel for work a lot, and I happened to be in a shower, uh, hotel one time, and I, I I went to take my first shower in this hotel. I was going to be here for a couple of weeks, so I ran the room about a week, and dude, I like, I just buzzed up in the room like it's going to be normal, and they, I was already naked and with water flowing, and there wasn't no shower curtain. I was like, man, what the hell? So, I went and told the people. They were like, hey, uh, Ain't nothing we can do about it. So uh, the next day, I come back, and they had a little shower curtain up. I said, okay, cool. It'll be cool now. So I'm in there fucking all the gal lads up. But I hear this weird noise, and the shower curtain falls the fuck down. I'm like, god damn. I'm like, I'm in there fucking bubbles all over me, trying to put the shower curtain back up. And I'm like, man, this is fucking weird. Like, so like, I hear what you're saying. It's kind of, it throws you off when you all traveling and stuff and you're trying to just take a bath, bath, bath and you know and fucking throws you off and you're trying to take a bath and it's great. can't do it because things is not like you used to it's weird ain't it it's weird Wes we're in a weird world buddy and we have to Bro, stay strong you know we gotta stay strong it's, it's and make these guys weird. change their change their mind yeah we need like we gotta have like a union I guess yeah, let's get a union. Me and Wes, we're gonna start it. We're gonna start hotel shower union committee. I'm with it, dude. Like, and you know what else I'll do? Hey, Wes, you know what else we'll do? Our num that that'll be our number one on the agenda. Our number two agenda will be every single hotel has to have the same fucking faucet on it to go which hot and cold. So it's not a fucking oh guessing God. game. Every single hotel, like, every single hotel you're in, you're like, needs well, to be standardized. Yeah. It, 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 you you walk in a hotel, you're like, I'm just going to play with my life and hope that turning it to the right gets cold <laughs> and not scalding fucking hot water. You're so fucking right because I know, Wes. 75% here is not 75% there. And it is ridiculous. We Dude, need, and you're just going back and forth, bro. back and forth. And you don't know which one's hot. You don't know which one's cold. It's fucking, yeah, Wes. What the fuck? It's, it's absurd. I hate it. Me too, Wes. All right, you thanks, buddy. Get this right, man. We're, I'll Thank call you, you about our meeting. All right, we'll get this. We'll get this figured out. West, this is riveting. All I can All right. see online about it okay. is it is that Europeans more commonly take a bath and they don't use curtains because they're dirty and they would rub against your body if you're taking a bath. That's with fine. Curtains. Just use shower doors. Or yeah, I don't yeah. know where the doors uh, are there. What's up, John? Hey. So I lived in Germany for three and a half years. Like if I still went back and visited my wife's parents. The room we sleep in would have two single beds pushed together. Yeah. And you each have your own single duvet or duna, whatever you guys call it, over there in the States. So um, it's just how they do it. I think even the parents, you know, the beds just are like that over there. That they yeah, but that's, that's for a single bed. They, yeah, yeah, but that's for like a husband, wife, or whatever, right? Like. Yeah. But they just assume that it's probably a double room or something like I don't know, but it's just how they kind of do it. And you always have your own doona, even as a couple, like which I think is ridiculous. So, yeah, yeah you have your own blankets while you're it's, sleeping right next to each other, even as a couple. Yeah, it's just fucked, dude. I don't want, if I'm sleeping with Kellen, I don't want <laughs> Kellen six inches away from me. <laughs> I don't want to breathe Kellen's <laughs> air. Like, I don't want to, <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't want to hear that. Like, I don't want to hear Kellen's fucking, you know, <laughs> yeah. shit going on you in the middle of the night. Order an extra room. Yeah. yeah, it's fucked. It's Thanks. Just, I don't know, mate. Yeah. It's, just, yeah, it's weird. It kind yeah. of rolls over there. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. No worries. Man. See ya. That's my race tech round of the night, everybody. Good stuff. Pulp 23. <laughs> Get your shit straight, Europe. Marks, can you clip the very beginning of that when he says, what the hell is wrong with yes. Europe? Or yes, whatever. we will be making Perfect. drops That'd be that. great. Yeah, it's it's just stupid. It's just <laughs> dumb. Uh, all right, Kellen. Uh, Motocross the Nations. I think it's time for us to have this, uh, yeah. have this discussion. Team USA. Uh, I heard from people there was a team on Friday, and then there was a, no team on Saturday, and then maybe a team on Sunday. Like, yeah, it, it seems like it's not going well, right? Do you hear the same things I hear? Pretty much, yeah. Um, I feel like I heard like 11 different names thrown around this weekend of who could be on the team and yep. what combination that might be. And, yep. and then we hear, oh, Deegan is out, and then I see Pelletier having a very long conversation with Coker on Friday, and I'm like, well, that's weird. Oh, maybe Webb, and then yeah. like it just is changing. It seemed like every hour, and <laughs> I didn't think 
Pelletier looked like he was having too much fun this weekend when I, I saw him walking around. I don't think so either. I think I think we see RJ and AP on four fifties. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think that's kind of. I think AP is a lock. Yeah. And then I think RJ is on there too. Maybe uh, I don't know. And then I don't know for two fifties. I heard the next last thing I heard was maybe Mitch Payton's going to get a call. So Hammerker, uh, I guess I don't know. Um, but do you know? I thought that like Mitch. You know, he used to help a lot with the team, and then like yeah, kind of got phased out a little yeah, bit. And he, yeah. I, I thought he had like some, you know, sour grapes with that a little. I bit. I think he did, but I think as far as having a rider selected, he would support them. Okay, you know, like he used to go even when there was no pro circuit riders. Right, he would just go. You know, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're at the point where we have a lot of riders: Deegan, Sexton, turning it down. Sexton for obvious reasons. I understand that Deegan yeah. not so obvious. I've said many times, Kellen, on this show. Uh, look, Deegan's not going to go, I don't believe. And the whole American thing that I talked about a few weeks ago, my DMs, when I put out there on Twitter that I don't think Deegan's going, my DMs filled up with people saying, oh, you got to get after him for the American thing and all this. And I'm not going to. Mm -hmm. I don't, I've don't. i never criticized riders for turning this race down. I understand it. Eli Tomek told us on this show it cost him 10 grand. Uh, maybe that was a private conversation. Anyways, <laughs> uh, 10 grand it cost him you know, to fly people over. Um, yeah, so like, I'm not going to... You lose. It's already thirty-one races. It's you know you have your downtime is very precious before you ramp it up for for boot camp. We got these SMX races that are serious stuff. The guys got to keep practicing for. I'm and Bradshaw turned it down. Stanton turned it down. McGrath turned it down. Mm -hmm. Plenty of greats have turned the motocross the nations down. So it's not like it's a new thing either. Yeah. So I'm not going to come down on anyone for saying I don't want to go or I don't feel ready to go. You have a different opinion. Oh, I, not that I come down on them, but it bums me out uh, because to me, the motocross of nations is such a massive thing to have earned in your career. And I remember hearing Zach talk about this where like if he's selected for the motocross of nations, it's because he did something good. Like it's not yeah. because he rode terrible all year and then they're like, ah, I guess we'll yeah. give Zach the motocross. No, it's because he had a damn good year. Like you earn the right mm -hmm. to race for the USA. And like I said, I just feel like we've kind of lost that a little bit and I get why and I get why these guys are tired and this season of all is definitely a little bit longer and you know for Deegan being a rookie having this long of a season being in the title fight and the extra pressure of that as well like totally get it I'm not saying I dislike him for selecting not to but I just wish that we could get back to the somehow semblance of time where this event seemed to matter a lot more for these guys where it seemed to be something that was really actually quite the honor to be able to race for the USA because they, you know, they would go there that weekend. They would go to France. And even if it's not a team that wins, they'd be bombarded by so many people that'd be mm -hmm. so excited to have them there. And I feel like the teams and all that could do a much better job of merchandising and, you know, making videos of the event beforehand to, uh, you know, sell to sponsors and stuff like that to make money off of it. And to, instead of saying, whoa, is me, it's extra money. It's going to cost too much. Like come up with solutions instead of complain. So that's where I stand on it because I feel like you get to this point of the season and everyone's really tired and I get it, but there's something so much greater than I feel like a lot of people give credit for on the line with going to this race and winning it for your country. See, talking to AC, talking about me, cynical, um, look, it's, it, it is a country race. Okay. But in a sense, like it's so much easier for teams to go to France that are based over there. Right. Yeah. And it's only in the USA every three or four years. Right. So even more than that, why should the team USA guys pay out of their pocket to go? Why? I mean, because everybody else, why should the Australian guys have to pay for it out of their pocket? But, well, Australia is a different question because they're further away. But, right. I mean, they I don't have know, to I come don't farther. Know, I don't know if they do or not. I don't know how much money the Federation raises. I don't know how that works. So maybe they're all covered. I don't know. The Canadian guys have it mostly covered uh, through fundraising, things like that. But the USA guys do not, partly because USA takes a shit ton of people. Yeah, there's and so much ship, personnel. Yeah, and, and they ship two different bikes and, and all that and, stuff. You know, again, but, like, why, but why should it cost them money? Does it have to necessarily? It does, absolutely. Why okay, but it? I'm saying through fundraising, through merchandise, through sponsored videos, through working with Monster Energy, had this huge event earlier this year where they said Star and Rinaldi and MotoGP are all one team now. 
We are Monster Energy Yamaha. Mm -hmm. And you're saying now that the Motocross of Nations is happening, you can't invite Hayden Deegan or Cooper Webb into the Rinaldi camp for that one weekend? I don't think the teams would want to do that. Yeah, I don't think they want. So then they're not one whole team. They're just lying. Well, okay, that's what I'm saying. You know, well, like, yeah. I mean, that, that you know as well as I do, Kellen. That's just all marketing. I, I know. So, but like, you know, when I went with Timmy in '03, it cost Yamaha USA thirty grand to go. Yeah, I know it costs a lot of money. Yeah, I get that. Like, like, and like, I flip it around. There's fifty thousand people at these races, camping, watching. Maybe 50s high, 30, 40, I don't know. They're camping. There's sponsorships everywhere. There is one company that's making I know millions and off that, this but, race. And they should be paying them. Thank you. Yes. So why does the teams have to struggle to get there and fundraise to get there when one person in the name of draping yourself in the flag makes all the money? Like – What's wrong with the system? What's wrong? Yeah, with, what's wrong with that? Like that part, I you agree can with. flip it around to the Olympics, and I would tell you, well, that's different. The Olympics are actually amateur athletes; they're not professionals. So I would, I would flip it around to be like, they're amateur athletes. They don't make money. They're not really supposed to make money. They all do on the side. Or Michael Phelps and these guys, you know, they're millionaires, mm -hmm. but ninety percent of them don't make any money because they're amateurs and going to compete for your country is really the only thing that they have. The Olympics. Yeah. The motocross guys have, you know, world titles over there, national championships over here. They're making millions of dollars. It's more of a business. Why do they need to go for free or and spend money? It, the teams and the riders. Like, I, again, I'm, I, so I would never come down on anybody for not going, a team or a rider. Not when in front is printing money off this race. Nobody else is making money. Mm. It's just costing them money. To what? To go over there and have a bike break and then you, you're out of contention and like whatever? Like, dude, it's just, yeah. Uh, again, it, I'm not, like I said, I don't come down on the teams or the riders for not going either. And I agree with you that in front should pay up more than what they offer, but I think it should be fair. I don't think that, yes, the USA is an attractive commodity for them. That doesn't make it right that they get way more money than the like Japan to come over or something sure like does. that. Sure it does. How is that a fair competition then? Well, for example, if you form a band with Travis Marks and you're down the road and you you're charging a hundred dollars for ticket, and then I can go see the Foo Fighters for a hundred dollars tickets, I'm gonna go with Foo Fighters. They're bigger stars. They're more important than you and Travis's Marks's band. Is it, it, you're missing it, out. But that's not a competition. He's not in the battle well, of I'm the bands. Saying, no, but I'm saying it's not a competition. But the USA are the st are, are rock stars. They're they I, are yeah. they are the the you know the number one not the number one attraction, but they are a huge attraction for that race. They should get more money than Team Japan. Okay, but I would only say that if somehow, some way, they become part of a like the marketing side of it, where okay, Team USA are going to pay more money to because they are going to be part of some show that we do or something like that. Yeah, you know they're part, I mean? no, they're just lining up. That's the part of the show. If the if the USA doesn't show up in Motocross of Nations, the winning team will always have an asterisk there. But the competition side of it should remain a competition. It shouldn't become the show. Sure, I, I get that, yeah. So I, that, that's I, what I, I'm saying. Yeah. You can't make it unfair. You can't pay them more. It doesn't, whether you pay them or not, doesn't affect the competition. Sure it does. No, it doesn't. If you pay the U.S. fifty grand to come, mm -hmm. and you pay Japan ten yeah. to come, they're going to have less resources. They're going to have less personnel. They're going to have less. They would have that chance anyways. of having riders. That, that, that does not mean anything when the gate drops. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. No, because Jeremy Coker's there, and and, and the Japan team manager isn't there. That's going to make a difference on the competition on the track. What happens if they need more parts? Well, they all have enough parts. I mean, they're going to bring enough. They parts. do. Yeah, they're going to bring enough parts. I assume when you go to race motocross the nations, whether it's janky team Canada or team USA, you bring spare parts. Okay. But you, know? you can bring less of them if you are paid less. You uh, know? I'm thinking more just flights for riders and yeah, mechanics. Sure. That's what I'm thinking. It, I, I agree. Know? Like yeah, stuff like that. Thinking is, of parts. Well, parts. I'm just saying, I feel like to, in the fairness of competition, it shouldn't be just pay the superstars only. Like you, you pay, all of them a fair sum to Maybe come. Maybe you pay them on the distance traveled. <laughs> <laughs> so 
You okay, know? I guess, yeah. If you're in France, then if you're a UK team or a Europe team, you don't get really much. <laughs> but if you're Japan, because Kellen apparently wants fucking Japan there, uh, uh, if you're Japan, Australia, America, Canada, you get more money. Okay, yeah, sure. I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm all for whatever idea it is to get all of like, these guys interested in lining up. I, I am but, with you there. But I still respect the fairness level of the competition side of it. Yeah, I think you're I think you're taking it too far on that. But <laughs> like you hate the ping pong balls and I agree that it's not the fairest way to decide this thing either. But that doesn't make it so that you should only give the top guys first billing. Because That's another thing. Well then that, it screws that, people over like if, if you know, let's say South Africa at one point was a powerhouse nation of the motocross of nations. And lately, they haven't been great. But there's a chance that, you know, Langston and Rattray come rolling out of that country again at some point. And if they go to the line with a pre-established 18th gate pick because of all the prior year's history. No, that's ping pong balls. No, I'm saying, but you want to change it so that it's based off of, like, last year or whatever. Well, how else are you going to base it? If you think ping pong balls are better? My idea would be to do... Something like the ping pong balls, but in groups. So you put the, the well, well. Now we're in a different to topic. Okay. So yeah. are we? Are we about, no, just just go back I to guess, where we I were. I can start yelling about ping pong balls. Because, <laughs> I know. Because what a fucking joke that is. Hey, uh, we're gonna we're gonna have a bake sale. We're gonna uh, we're gonna se we're gonna sell our wives off for sex work. We're gonna have a bake sale. We're gonna sell the kidneys of our children to get the motor across the nations because we're a small country. But God damn it, we wanna have our best riders there. And sorry about whoring out our wives. Sorry about selling the kidneys of our children. <laughs> sorry about the bake sale. But we got here. Whew. Got a three best riders. Let's go. Uh, we've got to get through Saturday qualifying, but we can do this. Oh, look, a monster chick pulled 38 uh, <laughs> from the outside gate. Well, sorry about the fucking kidneys and whoring out the wives. Like, how <laughs> stupid is that? How dumb is that? Again, doesn't matter for Belgium, America, France. Doesn't matter. But the country's on the border, on the edge. The fact that they drop ping pong balls is just the ultimate shitting on you. Like, thanks for coming. Yeah. Let's shit on your face. But then, so you think it's it's fair that before they even come, you know, like I say, a country like South Africa or Brazil or one of those other borderline countries that you're talking about already has a pre-established disadvantage? What's the disadvantage? If from the previous year you put USA in gate one on qualifying yeah. and Brazil, who did not qualify in the year before, before they even send How a team, about, is going to be outside gates? Okay. Here's another idea. How about practice times, Kellen? I mean, I could, I could agree with that. now you earn yeah. your way into practice sure. times. All right. Calm down. We'll okay. do practice times. <laughs> so if you show up, you, you, know, you qualify and you get, it, you get your gate pick based for on Saturday qualifiers based on your practice times. Okay. So if the little South Africans show up and they're gnarly, <laughs> they can get in. All right? Okay. But, yeah, I just – I don't – it's – the system is broken when year after year, when the race is not in America, we seem to be struggling to put together a team. Some of it for results, some of it for contract reasons, some of it for costs, some of it for apathy, Right? There's different reasons why. But outside of the American MXDNs, politics, too, throw politics in that because the Cowie thing and Roger and all that. We can't seem to figure. You guys, we're good, Canada. You guys can't seem to pick a team in a straightforward process. Something's broken. But what, I, I don't know. I feel like this is a very specific American problem, as you say. That's what Why, I mean, when no, it comes over to the U.S., are we not hearing like, uh, well, Fever doesn't want to go across the pond for two weeks, so I think he's going to stay back, and so they definitely have to pick Muscan off the couch. Well, we don't like, know. That could be happening. We don't know. Like, that doesn't seems, seem to happen. Well, I don't know. I don't <laughs> have the pulse on every single team's you know, stuff. That's but, what I'm saying, though. Like, yeah. It seems to be a very American problem. And I think part of the root of that, as you have alluded to, is they bring a lot of people. And if they could figure out how to do it cheaper and make money, yep. it solves a lot of problems. Yep. Motocross the Nations, catch the fever. Yeah. Uh, 8 o'clock hour, 9 o'clock hour, brought to you by EVS Sports. You ever use anything from EVS? Yeah, I had a neck brace from them for quite a long time. What about when you mismatch your boots and helmet and gear? Mm -hmm. like, yep. Is that, how's that going? Oh, yeah, definitely great. Soul great. Rider. Yeah. EVS-sports.com, Pulp30 is the code to say with those guys. They have new Slayco line of, uh, of protective gear. Yeah. Does that mean I can uh, 
throw upside down whips and stuff in their yeah, stuff. Yeah, I think you can. EVS Sports, the original protective gear company, has been protecting champions and riders for over 30 years and doesn't plan to stop anytime soon. Pulp 30 is the code to save. Chiz, Axel, RJ Hampshire. God, you know RJ wears EVS. You know he's <laughs> he needs it. It's got to be really good protective gear if mm -hmm. RJ wears it. Pa uh, plastered in red, white, and blue. EVS Sports, we are protection. EVS-sports.com. Pulp 30 is the code to save. MTX Braking. Thank you, MTX Braking. They're looking for shops. If you're a motorcycle dealer and you uh, have dirt bikes there, then you probably have customers with e-bikes. If you have e-bikes there, you need brake pads. MTXbraking.com. Pulp MX is the code to save. Inspired by motocross and power sports, they, bought, bought, they brought better braking tech into brake pads for mountain and road bikes. Make your mountain bikes better, even better. More power, better modulation while remaining dead silent. Red Compound. That's what you got to do. Red Compound at mtxbreaking.com. Thank you to those guys. Our buddies at uh, Michelin as well. FMIP. Good Legend. guy. Legend. Legend. Always has snarky comebacks on all of my tweets. Mine too. <laughs> I don't always like it. I didn't have a, a chair in the media tent this weekend, and he says, well, that's only because DC likes upstanding employees. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, where the fuck does he come up with this stuff? Honestly, I'm I like Robbie better than Randy. His buddy Robbie. Oh yeah, yeah. He's better at it or what? No, he's just a better guy. <laughs> okay, just, I just like Robbie better. Michelinman.com forward slash motorcycle to learn more about the complete offering of Michelin tires, mountain bike tires, dirt bike tires. I believe they make the tires for the space shuttle. Oh, so Marks, if your space shuttle needs something, mine does need something. I need need, need some tires uh, among other things. I think after my piece, going to be in studio soon. Oh, as well. Good I would, times. I would love that. You uh, know how many times when he's in studio, though, he's going to ask about Life Swap? Yeah. Over under 17. Listen, Life Swap's going to happen. Oh. Just calm down, everybody. Updates? Calm down. Updates? It's happening. Okay. It's happening. Don't worry about <laughs> it. <laughs> Starcross 6 tire range. Please check it out. Uh, I saw Starcross 6s this weekend. On some uh, Vet MXDN bikes. Yeah? Yeah. I made my, uh, made my uh, heart... Uh, Cockle, the cockle of my heart. Interesting. How do you? How, what's the saying for that? I don't it know. Cockle. The, it warms the, right the cockle of my heart. Is this a phrase you picked up in the UK? No, that's that's bollocks and mega. It's mega man, mega. You're like, what's mega? <laughs> I found out that apparently there's a phrase in the UK they use called middle for diddle, which means like bullseye on a dartboard mm. or something like that. Okay. Someone used it in golf, and I'm like, that doesn't sound like a real thing. No, yeah. So, yeah, Michelin, please check them out. A Mountain Bike Tires, too. There used to be a guy that did a wrap-up show. I don't know his name, but uh, Michelin Motorcycle Mount Mountain Bike Tires sponsored that show. I forget the guy's name. But they got great mountain bike tires. Uh, E-Wild style, style, e Wild series, if you have a mountain bike. Uh, honestly, Jet lag from England is starting to hit. You sound like me trying to read uh, expert so, questions. <laughs> Motorsport.com tweeted Talon. Let's do it. No, that's my mom. It's the Motorsport.com tweet that Talon segment. No. All right, Ke Kellen, where are you going? Where'd Kellen go? Man, man's no, needed a twisted They team. can get you that. I got the, it. the minions can do it. I ran. All We're right. fine. He don't need no mans. Motorsport.com. Uh, go through the banner to help us out. I'd appreciate it. By the way, my affiliate money from the Motorsport banner wasn't great last month, people. So pick it up. You think Marks is free? You think Was Talon that the one that you had the code wrong? No. Oh, no. Okay. No, this is just clicking on the banner to go to Motorsport and place an order. So we're going to go out of business, people, if you guys don't use that banner more often. Like, I'll just go. shut this whole shit down. Strong arm them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Motorsport.com, OEM and aftermarket parts, dedicated team of gearheads there to help you out. Motorsport launched a gear company too, Carson Brown, running it. Nice. Uh, our our guy um, Hansel, going to the yeah, to the he ride is. You're right. Yeah. yeah, Hansel. Oh, Hansel's gonna love that. Oh, he's in his element. Oh, Gold Creek Lodge and some Motorsport.com guys. He's he's gonna absolutely love it. Uh, so thank you to the guys at Motorsport. These are questions submitted to at Pop MX Show uh, on Twitter and. Um, yeah, Talon over there picks the best ones. Let's do this, Talon. Uh, from Sugar Shane seventy nine, future headline: Sexton is sexy in SMX win or Jetson smashes SMX competition. That's a good one. I mean, I just go Jetson. I got to go one or the other. That's the rules of future headlines. So I'll go Jetson. Yeah, he's gonna be tough to beat. Two twenty minute motos, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think he got it right now. Are these tracks going to be lame because super minis and amateurs are all over them and shit? 
I heard not really like I didn't okay. that they're not going to change much. What I hope is that for the outdoor sections, mm-hmm. they like actually till them. They get ruts, they get like breaking bumps and stuff right. so that it's not just like Las Vegas highway stuff that we saw at the Monster Cup. Mm-hmm. But yeah. who knows? We'll yep. see. All right. Uh, from Smorsky 281 has there ever been a non-championship level rider who's made more of an impact than Phil? The guy is completely loved by the fans and industry, and it'll be a very sad day when he retires. Is this the guy from England that I met? Cause <laughs> I met some super fans there. Um, I'm coming just for you, Phil. Is this what does it say? Uh, non-championship non- level rider. Championship level rider. Yeah. Yeah, like I mean, I don't know. What's your definition of Nick Way? Non-championship level rider. He was close in, yeah. in 125s, wasn't he? Yeah, for sure. So th- Okay. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Everything Phil has, uh, I deserve the credit for because I'm, I am I feel like I've just exposed him to the world. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. So he's great. I, I, you can get 10% of his 10% cut he gets that, from the Lawrence brothers. Up. Yeah, he, uh, he's great. And, uh, yeah, I think he's going to race one more year and then call it a day. All right. From Atwood, 1994, who gets a title first, Forkner, McAdoo, or Hamaker? Oh, my God. Hamaker. <sighs> Ham sandwich? Ham sandwich. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Could Forkner just hold it together? I feel like of the three, I would say Forkner has the most potential to because <laughs> he's a he's a, like a consistent proven winner. I like the maker of ham. Hamaker's really good, yeah. but I, I want to see him healthy like yeah. a year before I say, ah, oh, he can walk into a title. That's a great question, though. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. And they all ride for the same team. So <laughs> Mitch Payton, yeah. Uh, from Connor Kearns, do Vial's results this summer further verify your reasoning for the Nationals being the superior series? Uh, no, I, I don't think. I mean, look, uh, again, I, I've said it over. Kellen hates this because he loves the GPs, but – um, outside of Everett's, Caroli, and Hurlings, and maybe Geyser. The best guys come here. Um, I don't think so, though, Kellen. I don't think – because Vial could be a title winner. Like, I, I, not this year, obviously, but yeah. t- Vial's shown something. Oh, yeah. Like, you, I, can't, you can't go off, oh, hey, Tom Vial raced 11 nationals. He sucks. No, I mean, like the, like the thing that's uh, – I was talking to – I forget who about this, but the thing that sucks is I feel like because Deegan did what he did this year – the bar has been raised exponentially for any other rookie. And Vial's not necessarily a rookie, but he scored the six most points in the 250 class this year. Yeah. And people are like, terrible. He sucked this year. And it's like, are no. you serious? Yeah. No, he won, he won motos. Race. He yeah. won an overall. Yeah. He was almost on the podium at Supercross. Like, he did pretty darn good. Yeah, so. I agree. Uh, from Checkers448 for Kellen, what was the biggest difference calling a real live race at Loretta's versus virtual racing? I think probably the biggest difference is the virtual stuff. I can just pick and choose who, you know, what storylines I want to follow or watch basically because I produce the show. So I click to the cameras and the riders that I want to watch. Whereas Loretta is you just, you just have a screen or you just look out the tower to, to be able to talk about the race. Um, but once you get down to it, at the core of it's pretty much the exact same thing. You just call pretty much the top five guys and, and what they're doing. From a speeds 328. Steve, after a perfect season as a rookie, is the 18 considered genera- jet orational yet? Yes, yeah, so we we covered this uh, with Daniel. Uh, I'm I'm tired of getting this fucking social stuff. I'm tired of getting the comments. Yeah, yeah, he's really good. Don't read the social comments. You know that. Come on. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> he's generational. He is. When you go perfect season and 20 years old. Yeah. 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 From JDC 95, Kellen. What are your expectations for KT Racing's MXGP game coming in 24? And what does this mean for the licensing with Milestone? Yeah, I mean, my expectations are that it will most likely be a little rough to start, as we've seen with a lot of these new games coming out. And I think the – I haven't got official confirmation, but I think the answer is that Milestone's out. I don't think they're coming back for the Supercross oh. games. Oh, really? Either. Oh, so a new so company's taking it over. A new company's already taking over MXGP. Oh, and, and so do they play any better or no? What's it? The, I, I mean, have no oh, idea nobody, because they haven't okay. produced a game oh, for they've Moto never had a game. Is okay. Well, they, be... they have, but not for Moto. Okay. So I don't know. Like it's Right. Is it going to be console or PC? No, I think the plan is, is console and, and PC. And then for sure. so why is Milestone out? Do we know? I don't. Like, because uh, if it's super profitable, they'd still be in it. I don't know that it's profitable is yeah. part of the problem. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, from Jimmy G. Kellen, for the kids listening, briefly describe your journey to becoming a real moto journalist. I would ask Steve, but Coy Gibbs once said he wasn't a real journalist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I mean, for me, I, like, I, I went to college with the intention of becoming a journalist, and my eyes were always on moto. Um, so I graduated with a bachelor's degree in communication studies uh, with an emphasis on journalism classes that I took and just started chipping away at it had my own website at one point where I wrote articles, started working for Verb, uh, did some freelance writing. And uh, yeah, honestly, at one point I thought I was out of the sport and was set to move on to kind of a different career venue, but I uh, got pulled back in. At some point, Kellen says he was in press boxes with me. Nobody knows that. Nobody really believes Nobody. that. Nobody. Wow. I showed you photos of me in the same press box as I you. Never, I don't remember that. Yeah. You showed me photos of that? Yeah. Eh, Photoshop. Oh I don't know. Before I knew Kellen, apparently he was in the press box with Meej and I. And was I holding court? <laughs> I don't actually really remember no, much of what you guys happen. are talking about. Yeah, because it doesn't oh, happen. Oh, shut up. Exactly. I got, the first time I ever stepped foot in a press box at a Supercross race, I got kicked out immediately. So Really? Yeah. By who, Danny? Yeah. Did you not have a pass? No. Do you want to know the story? Yeah. So was, I was working for Verb, yep. which you say I, don't, I didn't do. And the first person that they had me on assignment working with at Verm was Brodocross. And so mm. me and Brodocross step into the press box at A1 in 2013. And like, I don't really know much about his history. I know what he writes about at yeah. that time. I step in and Denny says, no, out, points at him, you too. Really? <laughs> and just ejects That's both it. of us out of the press box. Just like that. So I watched A1 2013, my first like big time in the media in the left field top bleachers with Brodo Cross and his laptop just doing this. <laughs> wow. That's funny. Uh, Ranham 84, another future headlines. Mandarin Mathis, massive miss, or Mandarin Mathis might need some work. Well, there was no positive to that. It was both two negatives. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Mandarin, it's not Mandarin Mathis. That's not me. It's the Mandarin. <laughs> and I thought it was great. The reviews are out, I think. We'll have to see. The reviews are fucked. <laughs> okay? The reviews are fucked. That the was... Mandarin was fucked. That was... <laughs> Marks liked it. Marks liked it. Marks? Listen, as far as entertainment goes, high value. Thank you, Marks. Do you, do you want me to read the tweets with Dark Side during the Mandarin comment? <laughs> what? We're going to take Dark's opinion on it? Oh, no. This was, this was Marks' opinion with Dark Side in the chain. What did I say? Uh... Let me see. Like on Slack or like what? No, oh, it was, tw it was a tweet chain, right? Oh, we can't tell them about our secret group. Uh oh. Don't 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 read them. You guys got a Chris Betts secret don't, Instagram don't, account? Don't read them. Listen, Mandarin. We don't know if the Mandarin will be back. We don't know what he's doing. We don't know what cave he's in. We don't know when he's going to send us his insights. Dark side said, "This is the worst thing you guys have ever done." And Mark said, "I like telling Steve things are good, so he'll do them in public." <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah wow oh, okay. sorry marks okay steve walking down the vegas strip this is the mandarin <laughs> i don't know what you're talking about i'm not the Mandarin. <laughs> he's in a cave oh uh, the lion's den i don't know where he is uh, but he's got some hot takes he does it was great radio great youtube great radio bros and i don't know what the fuck you people are talking about people that didn't like it uh, Charlie Worley, what's Kenny doing for next year? What are the odds he stays at Suzuki? Uh, hi. Yeah, I think he stays with him. Uh, RM Weldon 126, will Shimoda stay in Fox gear when he moves to Honda? He is staying in Fox gear. Yeah, just found that out today. Apparently it was old news. I asked the group text, and I got, you know, like my fucking group texts are full of like insiders, and I got shamed for not knowing that. And I'm like, yeah, I don't really care. Yeah. Like, I saw that tweet. So I wanted to ask, but Joe Shimoda's gear choice is not something that I care <laughs> much about or you know know much about. I, but I was shamed for not knowing it. Apparently, it was the biggest news. Yeah, I think I heard it uh, a week or two ago, and then uh, I was perusing Vital one day, and Michael Lindsay t was saying about it somewhere on right. one of the threads. So. Yeah, sorry everybody. Yeah. Oh, Steve. Let's talk back from London. I told um, you to start the show earlier. I can't do that. Why not? Marks and Talon 
Damn. I didn't get off till four, yeah. so no, I barely right. made it as right. it is. All right. From dark. 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 In your personal opinion, what's the best result we see a Triumph Rider in twenty four? Savachi fifth to the DMX. Season in a moto or, or overall? Let's go overall. Yeah, I could get on board with that. Okay. From random moto account, if you were to go to any race of any timeline and get in the booth with anyone, what race and who would you do it with? 92 Coliseum, Bradshaw Stanton, where Bradshaw just melts and Stanton wins the title. And I would like to do it with uh, Dave Despain and then, no, I'd like to do it with Larry Myers and then we can take turns yelling out commie about JMB. <laughs> Be fantastic. Oh, what about you, Kellen? Um, probably Vegas seventeen, and I guess like with like Weege and maybe like RV, someone who would like just be really right critical, I guess. Yeah, someone who wear a Honda hat. Yeah, okay. someone who wear a Honda hat. From Steyer twenty three for you, Kellen. What are the best ways to grow your platform if you're writing or making content that is moto related? <sighs> um, I mean, for me, it was really chipping away at it and networking. So I don't know that I'm really the best person to answer it. I would just say, you well, know, go to the press box in 013 and hang <laughs> out. Yeah. yeah. I would say just, you know, try to find ways to put your articles in front of eyes in certain ways, maybe you go to a forum board like a vital and say like, Hey guys, what do you think of this piece? Oh, that would that go over well. Well, <laughs> you know, not necessarily vital, I guess, but like there's like Facebook groups that are like fans yeah, yeah. of motocross and supercross right. and stuff like that. And go to them. How about this? How about this? Have a unique idea. That too. Have, yeah. don't just write a race report or jet Lawrence won, Jackson got second. Like make a list. People love lists. Greatest riders named Chase. Chase Sexton, <laughs> yeah. Chase Reed, Chase Stallo. Chase I don't, Bell. I don't know. Just make a – like bring something unique to the game. Like I wrote a column once in the very beginning of my moto journalism, why Ross Peterson was better than Ricky Carmichael. <laughs> and like I, it was just stupid. Yeah, but yeah, it, was, yeah. it was funny and some serious points in there. Think Like be unique. Think yeah. of unique ideas to bring to the sport. But, um, you know, specifically to the question, like how do you get that in front of eyeballs – like you just have to kind oh. of like feel it around into different areas and see what works. I feel like yeah, you can't. just be unique. But if you're unique, you know, you could be riding to nothing. Ah, it'll find a home. Well, how? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Though. Who knows? Nobody Social knows. Social media and post it on forum boards and stuff. The Mandarin. Like that. Maybe the, oh, Mandarin the Mandarin will bring will it. Get it out. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck you, Marks. <laughs> LL Cool James, four twenty five. What is more impressive, Deegan's absolute huck over the finish line or AP hucking a dildo 50-plus yards <laughs> off the podium? That's great. <laughs> uh, the photos of that are amazing. Yeah. Just like <laughs> reaching back Fantastic. to throw and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I still think the Deegan huck is probably more huck, impressive. Yeah. Uh, from For the Love of Opies, <laughs> with, the, with the Deegan's pushing the we're American better, better card so much. But a titty. Hopefully, one will right. whip up a titty. Whip up. Yeah. All right. Sorry. With the Deegans pushing the American card so much, wouldn't you think they would race MXON even if it's too much for Hayden? Right. True but Americans no fling rubber hammered dongs back into the crowd. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you would think. I was surprised when I heard he was out. I was very I was surprised. A surprised and, too. and, uh, oh, yeah. yeah, I was very surprised. I yeah. think I was surprised, though, more so not because. You know, I think Deegan probably deserves a time off after this year, but more so that like they're very, you know, about their brand in a sense and don't want to do stuff that would negatively impact that. And I was like, man, that's probably not going to go over too well, which so far, I mean, people have, have definitely come in hot. Well, I think what will happen is when the time comes, you'll see the team take the, yeah. take the bullet. I think so. They'll, right. they'll, they'll come out. Yeah. And say we're not letting Brian go, or, or we're uh, not we're protecting him. our asset for a Supercross. We don't want to pay. I, I don't know. Bri Brian 
and the team will work together to make the message come out so that the, the Deegans don't look bad here. Yeah, I predict. I and, don't know. And I, I, just, I just predict that. Even so, I mean, he's got fans that will you know defend probably any move he does. So uh, listen again, I, people are waiting for me to jump all over this. No, I don't. Yeah. I not you. I mean, like fans, I'm, yeah, that. yeah. I, and I'm just like I get it. I get it, man. But I was surprised. Me too. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Big yeah. boobs. From Doug Barber eighty eight. Will we be announcing the bike raffle tonight? Marks? No, we will not because the season is not over. So <laughs> it will happen after SMX. You have to be in all three in the championship league. Obviously, this is talking about Pulp Mix Fantasy to be included in that. And national numbers, uh, SMX does count towards national numbers as well. So we get that question a lot. Mm-hmm. So that should. SM- national numbers in Pulp Mix Fantasy. In Pulp Mix yes. Fantasy. I have a yes. question. Oh. Yes. Um, the second round is double points. The final mm-hmm. round is triple points. No. Yeah, no. So, so no, like you still only get 25 mm-hmm. times two. Right. In, in Pulp Mix Fantasy, yeah, we're not, we're not multiplying it. points. Okay. It'll be pretty straightforward. Um, mm-hmm. I'm about 80% sure that something will go wrong with scoring at the first <laughs> round because it's a new format. Uh, so just throwing that out there now. And we are so. uh, giving away an intense Taser e-bike as well. Yes, uh, full list of prizes, same amount of prizes. Mm-hmm. Most of them are the same. Uh, intense taser instead of a YZ450. But check out the prize page on the site for the full list. I mean, it's a pretty solid list still. So if you paid before the year for all three, uh, you're eligible for all of those. And it's, it's pretty solid. So That's yeah, three races too. Like yeah, it's, it's going to be down. sweet. Right. From Smoke BZ, what surprised you the most this season? Uh, Chase's last minute Supercross title win or Jet's perfect outdoor season? Fuck, those are pretty good because the the guy leading the points who just had to ride around tore his Achilles and couldn't race. And then the 20 year old rookie won every moto. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, for me, it was Tomac. I wasn't there that night. I went to a wedding and then I had to put my. Uh, daughter to sleep so then i just caught the main events i sat on this couch in this airbnb completely still for like 40 minutes like <laughs> that didn't just happen yeah. like i'm gonna wake up any second yeah. and nope the main event will be over and eli will have won or yeah. whatever yeah like i could not believe it i thought it was a bike problem right away initially yeah. i was like a bike oh my god and then but then like, the second i saw the foot off i'm like yeah oh yeah crap yeah damn yeah. I don't know. They're both pretty big surprises for yeah. sure. But I'll go. I'll, I think I'll go Tomac too. From casual MX fan, has there been any more news about Club or Hep changing manufacturers? Hep is not, and I don't know for sure about Club. I don't know. I haven't heard. But Hep is not. Hep will be Suzuki. All right, last one. Uh, this guy called in earlier from Colin. How much do you think Jet made all in with salary bonuses, gear, etc. for the year? Fuck, I think his A-star deal is up, too, and that is going to be a tasty. Uh, he got a million for 450 win. He got 500 for the 250 Supercross win. He probably gets a salary of six or 700. That's 2 million. The, the gear is probably another 800, 2.8, everything else. Let's say what about racing three, bonuses? Yeah, race threes. And then he got $220,000 in race win bonuses for 250, 450 Outdoors and $40,000 in race wins in 250 Supercross. It's $3 million. You say 220 in, in bonuses for Outdoors? 2.2. Oh, I thought you said 220. I did say 220. Okay. 2.2, though? Um, I mean, yeah. it, is it? It's a hundred thousand dollars a race. So then, is it per moto or no, per? It's overall, overall. so you make one point one. Outdoors. I think I did the math on on race over on race wins and championship bonuses. That alone is like two point eight. Yeah, for the year. Yeah. So so I was off. Okay. Add so, everything else yeah, on top I, of that. I'm bad at math. Um, so yeah, two point eight in that, and then you add his seven hundred. That's three million. Uh, you add in his clothing. Yeah. It's $4 million. Do you think he makes more money in his Red Bull deal than, like, gear? Yes. Yeah? I would think so. Yeah. I would think so. Yeah. 
It's four four to five million dollars, I bet, yeah. in this year. Nice, nice, nice if you can get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No! That's horrible. All right, motorsport.com. Tweet at talent segment. Uh awesome to uh to have you guys uh, su- submit those and um, All right, Steve. I'm tired, dude. I know. Man. I went to London. I, I went know. to England. Uh Kellen Brower, Adam C. Cirillo, Zach Osborne, Phil Nicoletti, Jet Lawrence, Hunter Lawrence, Chris Kiefer, Jared Mees. Best interview tonight. I like AC, but I'll go with uh, the Lawrence brothers because it's really cool to hear him on the show again. All right. I'll have to go with them too. Even even making fun of Phil is great. So <laughs> Yeah, they were uh, really good about that. Marks? Yep, same. Talon, I'll go Lawrence you for- brothers. You forgot Kiefer. I said Kiefer. Oh. Yeah, no, the filthy Phil thing with the Lawrence bros was good. Yeah, I would say so too. Um, all right, Marks, give me, uh, Marks, uh, Callan, give me, uh, first thing that pops to your mind. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Motorsport.com. Carson Brown. Fly Racing. JT. Decal Works. Graphics. Race Tech. Uh, Checkers. X Brand Goggles. Uh, RT. Renthal. Parabinos. What are you laughing at? These are, <laughs> these are always the, the same words. Yeah. The people that work in the industry, it's just like you name whoever works there. Well, this one should be easy. Michelin. Oh, Randy Richardson. A Cherbies. Uh, Voland. Firepower batteries. And <laughs> it's the same people. <laughs> uh, Dean Wilson. Maxima USA. Dogger. Renegade Racing Fuels. Um, Will Hunt. Pro Filter. Maxima, right? ORW. Uh, local. OGO Power Sports. Pilo. FMF. Uh, Little D. Guts Racing. Uh, Andy Craig. Atlas. Noof? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Motorcyclemistryjobs.com. Uh, Jason Gerald, I think, right? Is that guy? That's yeah. the guy's name. I met mm-hmm. him last couple weeks or so. Works Connection? Uh, that's a pro-launch start device? Yeah. Yeah. Get Data. Dan Truman. WUSA. Wheels. Weisco Piston. Power. EVS. Neck braces. Good job. Manscaped, Beard Hedger. Oh. Great. These are great. Yeah? I don't know how much. Do you, can you grow a beard? Where are you at on this? No, I'm pretty Takes a while. crap at that. Yeah. Pretty crap. Well, if you can, if you're a beard guy, if you grow a beard, the Beard Hedger Pro Kit from Manscaped, Pulp Amex is the code to save. Uh, love these guys. You, you knew them from their um, uh, Manscaped 4.0 kit. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, absolutely uh, uh, a brilliant thing. The battery lasts forever. It's got a travel lock on it. It's got different settings on it, different guards on it as well for your beard slash facial hair. You can use this down below, but I think you should stick to it up on the beard. I think that's the best idea. And uh, if you get this kit, this Beard Hedger Pro Kit, you get a case, you get a brush, you get beard conditioner, beard balm. These are like the hipster beard guys. They're everywhere <laughs> now, right? This is what they need. Uh, and then, yeah, f- fully from Manscaped. Check it out. Pulp of Mex code is the code to save with those guys. Uh, love it. it. And thanks to those guys for uh, coming on board um, th- with us back again. So use the use the uh, code to save on either the Manscaped uh, Personal Groomer 4.0 or the Beard, Beard Hedger Pro Kit. Pulp of Mex code at Manscaped. Do it. All right, everybody. Uh, thanks for watching and listening. And uh, we're off next week, right, Marks? We're off? We are off, yes. Yeah, okay. So we're off next week. We'll be back after... Charlotte with Paul Parabinos in studios, I believe. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, th- Kellen, thank you, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate you coming up on a yeah. Tuesday. All of that. On so. a Tuesday. What does that mean? You it's do? a song. Got the club going up on a Tuesday. Wow. I like Mike and him. Come on. You, you come, on. You come on. Come Steve, on, Steve. Give it the culture, man. You guys are fucked. Oh, thanks to Five Minutes with Fletch, too. <sighs> yeah. Thanks for that update. That was cool. Fletch, man. Like I said, I learned a lot about the event from him. Fletch. And Lewis, <laughs> two greatest journalists coming from I England. I think Vital's thinking of a trade at the moment, yeah. right? They're like, maybe we just bring Fletch yeah. over instead. Need to ask Lewis what he thinks of five minutes with Fletch. I'm sure he's aware of it. Yeah, I'm sure. Right. Uh, he, he came all the way to the race this weekend just to watch five minutes with Fletch. Yeah, he? unlike other people. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, so thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks for those callers uh, for calling in. Uh, thanks for our guests as well. Really appreciate it. Uh, again, thank you to uh, to all of our sponsors. Use the codes, save some money. Callan Brower, I'm Steve Mathis. Uh, thanks, Marks. Thanks, Talon. Thank you. Thanks, Pookie. Thanks, Roto. Thanks, Swizz. No thanks to Moser. <laughs> I'm Steve Mathis. That's Callan Brower. See you in a couple weeks. I had a-
car, I'd leave, but I don't. There's something I want to get off my chest. And it's about that summer when you went away to community college. I got an offer to do Playgirl magazine. And I did it. I did a full spread for Playgirl magazine. I, I mean spread, man. I pulled my butt apart and stuff, and I was totally nude, and it was weird. I, I mean, you probably didn't hear about it because I went under the name of Mike Concho, but I just wanted you to know that. If you could hear me, if it got into your brain somehow, that I spread my butt cheeks as Mike Concho. Complete me till death 